full program. Are you confident that you can de- defeat David Chris fully? From long form unedited interviews to taking a deep dive into Australian law and government. Sure. Mate, I, I'm so not going to be that's when you reckon the respect for Indigenous Australians. Why ask them? Well, it's certainly heating up outside here in Brisbane and it will be heating up inside Parliament right now. Six News understands talks about removing Palaszczuk have been ongoing. The Health Australia Party has warned they may shut down. Do you stand by that claim you've never lied in public office? That's why you will always see the facts first on Six News. On 6 News, this is Tasmania Decides with Leonardo Puglisi and the 6 News team And you are watching 6 News Live as we bring you coverage of the Tasmanian state election and, of course, the Dunstan by-election in South Australia. Polls have just closed across the island state and we will be bringing you results all night with our great team who you will be seeing on screen in a a few minutes. They'll be here, don't worry. Um, But uh, we will be giving you all the latest details. It is expected to be a very tight contest. No major party really expected to get out of this with a majority. So who will be crucial? The Greens, the Lambie Network, some independents as well. We will, of course, have to wait and see on that results. We'll start trickling in soon-ish. You know, we, we haven't been too experienced with how fast the TEC is compared to the ECQ last weekend. And if you know how slow the ECQ was last weekend, you'd understand why I'm making that point. But we'll be bringing you these results all night but of course as we like to do here on six news there is a lot else going on in the world so for that we'll go to the latest headlines on the hour every hour here's austin pollock leo thank you we'll get back to the state election very soon but to what else is making six news right now and islamic state has claimed responsibility for an attack at a moscow concert hall in russia Russia's Federal Security Service says 40 people were killed and more than 100 injured when four gunmen entered the venue and shot patrons attending inside. A fire then was triggered inside Crocus Hall. Firefighters who attended the scene have evacuated around 100 people from the basement of the building, with efforts then continuing to rescue people from the roof. It's believed the fire was caused by explosives thrown by the gunman. Now, the venue has a capacity for 9,000 people. Russian media is reporting that some people were trapped inside, with 70 ambulance crews attending the scene. Heading over to the UK now, and Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, has announced that she has been diagnosed with cancer. In a public video message released by the royal family, she stated that it had been an incredibly tough couple of months for her and her family. The 42-year-old underwent abdominal surgery in January. Since then, she has been on leave from public duties, where her health has become a subject of much intense online speculation. In her video, she said that her cancer was discovered following her operation earlier this year in a series of post-operative tests. Her medical team then advised her to begin preventative chemotherapy, which she is now in the early stages of. She also said, quote, most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that is appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. We hope that you will understand as a family we need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. The Prince and Princess of Wales and their children are reportedly not taking part in their tradition of attending the Easter service at St George's Chapel this year. Back home now and candidates have been confirmed for the upcoming Cook by-election following the resignation of former Prime Minister Scott Morrison. The Liberals have pre-selected Simon Kennedy while the Greens are running Martine Moore. The Libertarians, Sustainable Australia and Animal Justice Party are also contesting, as is independent Roger Woodward. Labor has chosen not to contest despite their 2022 candidate Simon Earle telling Six News he would put his hand up for pre-selection. Alright, and those are the top stories we are following here on 6 News right now. There's more news on our website, 6newsau.com, and on social media at 6newsau.
For now though, I'm Austin Pollock. Thanks very much for your company. We're now going to return to 6 News Election Headquarters where we find Leo Puglisi standing by as we continue our coverage as Tasmania decides. Stay with us. You're watching Tasmania Decides, Election 2024. You're still with us here on 6 News as we bring you live coverage. You just saw there of the Tasmanian election as the island state decides who will lead them for the next mm, probably four years. They might go early again. Of course, Jeremy Rockliffe leading the Liberals. The incumbent Premier Rebecca White, third time lucky she's hoping hoping she's leading Labor. You've got, of course, another a bunch of these other minor parties running as well. And it's expected to be a tight contest. We want to let you in in the conversation. Let us know in the live chat where you're watching from tonight. Are you in Tasmania? Are you supporting anyone? What do you think the results will be? We'll get to our predictions a little later. Um, if you have any idea of what my predictions are usually like, you should not trust them. And whoever I say is going to win will get absolutely thrashed. Uh, it's also evident in the fact that I tipped Hawthorne today. Don't check the AFL scores. Um, anyway, uh, we want to hear, as I said, from you all night. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from. But, of course, we've spoken to a bunch of people throughout this state campaign, most notably, of course, the Tasmanian opposition leader, Rebecca White. Again, it is her third time lucky. That's what she's hoping. She's led Labor at the 2018 and 2021 elections. She hasn't been leader consecutively throughout all that time to now, but she is hopeful this time. We spoke to her about the campaign and especially the important issue of what will happen in the event of a minority government. And you know this interview was good because the Liberal Party put it in their campaign ads. Take a look. So look, obviously you've run in more than one campaign as the TAS Labor leader. What makes you think it's going to be third time lucky this time around? I have. I was elected first to the parliament in 2010, so I have a lot of experience that I bring to this job. This is a really important election campaign, and I think that experience is going to be really valuable, particularly when you think about some of the challenges that are confronting our state in housing, health and, of course, costs of living. And I know that my team and I can bring our experience to start to address some of these if we're elected. So obviously there are more than a few issues at play here. I want to start first of all with cost of living. That's a nationwide issue. What would you do to address it? What are the policies you're bringing in this campaign? It is a nationwide issue and I know that state governments can't do everything about cost of living but you should do everything you can and that's where my government will be focused on making sure Tasmanians pay a Tasmanian price for power because here in Tasmania we produce all, our, all of our energy locally and yet we're paying a mainland price for our power. We want to protect Tasmanians from spikes we're seeing in coal and gas prices because we are a renewable energy powerhouse and we should be able to provide that price for our customers here in our state. It's also about providing uh, support for families, providing free lunches to our primary school children. If you've got a, a family with uh, two children, this will save on average $4,000 a year off your grocery bill, making sure that families can pay their school fees over the course of the year rather than all up front because that can be a real cost pressure, particularly straight after Christmas, making sure that people can afford accommodation. Housing is a really big challenge in Tasmania. I'm sure it is elsewhere too. But in particular, I think Tasmanians have noticed it because it has more, uh, it's been traditionally quite affordable to live in our state and that's no longer the case. So people are feeling enormous amounts of pressure. We've got a significant number of policies to support people into accommodation as well. There are more than a few parties at play here. We know there's a Jackie Lambie Networks, one that's come out from obviously not contesting last time and they've been in some of the more polls recently. Why should a voter, especially those who might be really disaffected, might have voted with the uh, Liberals last time in, in 2021, why should they go to the ALP and not to the Greens, not to Lambie, not to one of the many independents that are contesting in the five electorates? Yeah, look, that's a really good question because it's certainly a move for change in Tasmania. After 10 years of a Liberal government, I can really feel across the community that people want a change in government. And there are people who are wondering where they vote. Uh, is, is it right to vote for an independent Green other parties or are they going to switch to another major party? I'm asking people to vote for the Labor Party because if you actually want to change the government, voting for a minor party or the Greens could still see the return of the Liberal government. 
they've been very clear that they'll do deals like that. And also some of those minor parties have as well, the Greens and some independents have said they'll support the Liberal Party if they are elected. So if people genuinely want to change the government, I'm asking them to support Labor because we can implement our plan to tackle cost of living, to set Tasmania up for a better future, a real game changer with housing. Um, people can't get that change if they vote for minor parties or independents. Fair enough in terms of the fact that some might, yes, support the Liberal government, but we know based on multiple polls over multiple months, there is a pretty significant vote for some, some of these um, potential cross benches. At times, their combined vote rivaling um, Labor's. So just to be clear, if there is a minority government, what exactly is, are you going into it? Are you committing to any deals? Are you, you know, ruling anything out? What what can you actually say, given, given it seems like a more than likely possibility? That's a really important question. It is a really close election and there is a very high possibility that there will be a minority government after Saturday. I've been really clear with Tasmanians that we're seeking an endorsement to form majority government because that's the clearest way we can deliver on our plan for our state. But I've also been clear that if we are elected in minority, that we won't be compromising on our values or our plan to start tackling cost of living and to start repairing our health system to build more housing. It'll only be a Labor government with a Labor cabinet. Uh, we won't be any, doing any deals with the Greens or minor parties, but we'll respect the fact we live in a democracy and ultimately the parliament will reflect the will of the people. Um, we'd be seeking the support, not just of the broader community this election, but the parliament to implement our plan if we're successful to form government. So just to be clear on that before I move on, um, is that potential confidence and supply, but no Greens or Lambie in cabinet? Is, is that it? Well, that's exactly right. I wouldn't be doing any deals to trade away our policies or to trade away cabinet positions. If people support Labor, they'll be getting a Labor government with a Labor ministry and a Labor plan to start to take urgent action on the cost of living, to start repair our health system, to provide more housing to people. Um, I'm not in the, in the business of doing deals. I think Tasmanians are voting Labor at this election. They deserve the right to know that that is a vote for a Labor government, not for something else. All right. Now, the expanded parliament obviously seems to be something that some believe could benefit some of these crossbenchers. How do you think it will play into it, uh, given, of course, I mean, this is the first time in, in decades that it's at the size of uh, seven seven seats per electorate? Yeah, that's right. We've got a multi-member electorate system. So there are seven members elected from each of our five electorates. And this parliament is expanding by 10 seats. So there is a real opportunity for people to win a seat in Parliament here without challenging an incumbent member. I've got a great team across the state who are working incredibly hard. We've got a clear plan for our state that's about challenging some of the problems that we see, providing solutions around cost of living, health and housing, and of course, focusing on how we grow our economy, creating secure jobs in Tasmania. People at the end of the day across our state will decide on Saturday who they seek to have in the Parliament. I'm asking for their support to form a Labor majority government, um, but also being acute, I'm also acutely aware that there are a lot of people with their name on the ballot paper this election. Now, Jeremy Rockliffe only recently has proposed a ban on MPs defecting. Obviously, we've seen what's happened with uh, Liberals quitting and becoming independents, though Labor is no stranger to defections. Um, do you support that proposal? It's certainly not our policy, and I don't think it's even constitutional, to be honest. Uh, there's real questions about this, and it's really a reflection of some of the dysfunction in the Liberal Party that the Premier is proposing to change the constitution of Tasmania to ensure that he can have stability in the parliament. It's quite a radical step, and it just reminds people why we're having this early election in the first place is because he couldn't manage his own backbench. He had people defect. And, of course, he's now plunged the state into the third election in six years because of that dysfunction. Now, we're seeing the Tasmania Football Club launch. Now, you've oh. obviously been critical of the new stadium, which the AFL <laughs> says is necessary to actually deliver the club. Can Tasmanians, who I'm sure many, many of them have been looking forward to this club for, for decades, can they be assured that it would be safe under a white Labor government? Yes, they can be. And I've been really clear about this. The team will be safe uh, no matter who's elected on the weekend because both major parties support the club. Um, we've long been a strong supporter of Tasmania getting its own team in the AFL, both for men's and a women's side. 
it's very exciting to see us get closer to that and I look forward to seeing it uh, realised when we have our players run out on the ground. The Liberals have been campaigning a fair bit and I've seen it on social media on, I guess they've said that you've been, um, you know, flip-flopping on this. They've saying you're unclear on that. Um, at the very minimum, could the perception that you've been unclear on the stadium and the team hurt your and hurt, hurt Labor's chances? Oh, we've been very clear on this. For two years now, actually, I've been saying that a stadium's not the right priority for the Tasmanian taxpayer. It's not the right priority for our state. We're dealing with significant challenges in health and housing and cost of living. A priority for a Labor government would be to address those matters as some of the fundamental responsibilities of any good government. Um, the Liberal Party can say what they like, but the reality is that they've really divided the state when it comes to this matter. There was previously a very strong unity ticket for us to get a team in the AFL. Their inclusion of the stadium in that agreement has divided not just the political support, but I argue the entire community as to whether or not we uh, really agree in agreement on this. Um, at the end of the day, this is a project that didn't go to Cabinet it hasn't been costed by Treasury. It's incredibly reckless for the Premier to have signed an agreement like this that does require the Tasmanian taxpayer to bear the costs of any overruns to build a stadium. And as we see in recent news reports, even just this week, the cost to build stadiums is continuing to escalate and Tasmania will not be immune from that. And our budget is in real risk. All right, just finally, let's say you are elected. It'll be a, a clean sweep for Labor governments nationwide. What would be the immediate priorities when you were, if, if you were sworn in as, as Premier? Thank you. Well, my immediate priority and immediate priorities for Labor government will be to take action on cost of living. It's by far and away the biggest issue for our state. And we've said that within the first 100 days, we will legislate so Tasmanians pay a Tasmanian price for power. There are also other priorities around supplying more housing to people. There is an urgent need for people to be able to afford their own home. Our Game Changer plan does exactly what it says on the box. It's a game changer. It supports people with zero deposit to enter home ownership for the first time, partnering with the government to do that. These are the kind of initiatives that I've been prioritising, along with the sorts of things that you would expect of any good Labor government, investing in essential services like health and education, education, providing job security across the Tasmanian public service and making sure we invest in the things Tasmania is very good at and very proud of around renewable energy, agriculture and our visitor economy. It's going to be a fascinating race to watch. Really appreciate your time and hope to have you on again very soon. Rebecca White, thank you very much. Thanks so much, Leo. That was Rebecca White there speaking of six years a little earlier in the week. That ad, by the, that, that interview, I should say, that made the Liberal Party. They were putting out press releases about it. I think it was in a TikTok. Ooh, first time for me there. Is, is that proof I'm a Liberal shill now? You know, it's up to you. A um, bit else happening as well um, since we're talking about politics and since results aren't expected uh, for another half an hour or so. Uh, Amelia Hammer. Uh, she's been pre-selected for the Liberal Party in Kuyong in Victoria at the next federal election. Uh, the WA Nationals have announced they'll contest Bateman, Darling Range, Kalamunda and South Perth, some of the metro seats at the next WA state election. Uh, Andrew Constance has won pre-selection for Liberals in Gilmore. Not much happening. Uh, in Tasmania, though, as I say, five electorates. They've gone from five member to seven members. So each of these seats uh, has seven members. And uh, that makes some really interesting results. We love the hair class system here at Six News, don't we? Um, of course, the Greens are hoping to be a major player. We spoke to Rosalie at Woodruff. Rosalie? Yeah. Rosalie Woodruff, excuse me, the Tasmanian Greens leader, to discuss the Greens campaign and how they hope to potentially be a big role in the next parliament, especially if Labor needs them for to form government. Have a watch. I feel very proud and confident of the fact that we've helped shape the narrative of this election. It has been the uh, work that we've done in Parliament and the, the fighting that we've been done doing on behalf of people about the state of the health system, about um, the situation for renters and the crisis in housing in Tasmania and about the natural environment that um, has set the um, the topics for this election. And so what we've had, we've heard from Liberal and Labor politicians, both of them have made announcements on um, public transport, on um, 
as uh, on um, improving the situation for renters and on the health system um, and and um, on on the cost of schooling and these are all things that we've been campaigning on for a long time and I'm confident that the Liberal Party for example would never have introduced uh, an election in uh, at policy and election campaign about regulating short stay accommodation uh, and neither would the Labor Party. And so we've helped to put the issues for people who are struggling to find a home. People are homeless, uh, people who can't pay the rent, people who can't get a hospital bed when they need it. We've put them on the agenda. So I feel like as a party, we feel like we've already made um, big inroads into getting change in the air, in these areas. And we're going to campaign and to be in the next term of parliament in a position to be stronger and to be better able to fight harder to get real change on these on these issues. It's been a while since we've seen seven member electorates. Obviously, it seemed to be your party that was most significantly hurt by the change to five. That's obviously gone now. Um, what would a good result for your party look like in terms of seats? Is it, is it doubling what you've got now? Are you, are you hoping for higher than that? It is uh, widely agreed and has been accepted by members of the Liberal and Labor Party that it was because the Liberal and Labor Parties colluded together 25 years ago uh, that the House of, Rep House of Assembly in Tasmania was reduced by 10 seats. They did it with the intention of knocking off the Greens forever. Um, and and we've remained uh, strong as a party. We've grown uh, at different times. We've grown bigger. We've grown smaller. And what we're doing is we're campaigning really hard at this election to win back the seats of Bass and Lions. Uh, we're working hard to increase our vote in Braddon. And, you know, I think we've got, you know, we're working really hard in Franklin and Clark as well for the seventh seat in both of those electorates. It's entirely possible in this election it, that the that last seat, uh, who it comes down to, is really, um, you know, part of the beauty, I suppose, of the hair clerk system in Tasmania and the ACT. Um, there, there is a lot of room for people to, if we work really hard, to get a second seat in either of those electorates. So that's what we're campaigning for. Yeah, absolutely. That That's going to be really crucial. Now, I know Labor, we were speaking with Rebecca White the other day, um, they have said that voting for independence or a party, including yourself, risks getting the Liberals re-elected and giving them up to 14 years. Um, let's be clear, what, what exactly is your stance on who you would form government with if there is a minority, which seems pretty possible? Well, we've been very, very clear. The last 10 years under a Liberal government has been a mess. Uh, Tasmania is in a much worse place than it was 10 years ago. And so we have people who are living homeless, people who have no hope of dealing with skyrocketing rents, people who can't get uh, an ambulance to arrive in time when they call triple O, they can't get a hospital bed when they need it. And it's a climate emergency and we're still having native forests being logged and burned every single day, releasing greenhouse gas emissions. It's obvious that things need to change. We think this government has been terrible. We've got no interest in supporting this Liberal government. And what will happen uh, is if the Greens find themselves, as we expect, in a in, with increased numbers and in a balance of power, uh, then then it's up to Rebecca White what happens at that point. She has the uh, the ball is in her court. She gets to choose whether she has conversations uh, with the Greens, uh, with other parties, and with independents. And it's really up to Rebecca White and Labor whether um, whether she chooses to try and uh, develop a, um, a minority government arrangement or whether she walks away from the opportunity. We think change is possible. We, we know that Labor has, you know, some good intentions. We know um, that, that Tasmanians who are campaigning on the issues that we are want much more change than Labor will provide for on their own. They won't go hard enough. And so they need to have the Greens there to push them to go further. The situation is that both Liberal and Labor um, politicians in Tasmania have big corporations in their rear and they are influenced by uh, special interests, um, by ideology and especially by big corporations and, and what they want. We've got 
a, a secret state when it comes to revealing uh, what which which com- which organisations which people make donations to Liberal and Labor parties. They don't release that information to Tasmanians in its entirety, and so people don't know who is actually funding the campaigns of the Liberal and Labor parties. So that's why uh, we're in a situation where it's only with the Greens' imbalance of power that we'll be able to get the change that is possible um, because it will require making more money in the budget and getting some extra money into into the system and, and stopping the stadium being built, for example. Would a football club be safe if, if you're on the balance of power? Would the Tassie Football Club be safe? Yes, it will, because I'm really excited to be a foundation member along with over 100,000 other Tasmanians. That is an incredible number of people in Tasmania who are committed to our team. They're committed to AFL and AFLW teams being played in Tasmania. That is a huge strength of people that we have with us who um, who want the team and the team will happen. The team is here. So we already have the team. Uh, we don't believe that the AFL uh, can can stand up to the might of Tasmanians who want a team. But the problem is that we've had a, la- a Liberal Party who has signed us up to a dud deal. Obviously, they're saying that the stadium can't be taken out of it. Uh, that They signed us up to the bad deal. We've got the AFL who have got the best deal of the century, uh, the poorest state in the, in Australia, having to uh, spend the most money on a stadium and a retractable roof that no other state has had to have. It's a nonsense situation when we have people who don't have a home, uh, when we have uh, the worst ambulance ramping rates in the country, and we have a desperate need for hospital and health infrastructure. So we think that you know, what we're committed to doing in a balance of power is to going to the AFL and say, we, you know, we have AFL in Tasmania and we want it to be where the heart of football should be. It should be in the north at York Park where, you know, Hawthorne has played games uh, for years where there's been AFL finals matches played. That is where the home, uh, that is the stadium for AFL in Tasmania. And we've already made an agreement as a, as a state and as a budget to put $130 million towards upgrading that stadium. It's got the best playing surface in the country. So there is uh, nothing wrong, there's everything right with York Park and there's no need to have another stadium. It's uh, something that we just simply can't afford as a state. So it requires the government to have strength to to stand up to the uh, to the AFL who just want uh, the, the sweetest deal of the century and we can't afford, we can't make that choice when people are, are desperately needing critical services. Is there a specific type of agreement that you would um, prefer if, if you were able to be in that position as potentially the, the largest party, as you obviously are now, the only minor party on the crossbench, um, or is it just you would take what you you could get if you offered any type of role in a minority government or you'd negotiate whatever you could get? We'd negotiate the best outcome to get the, the, the most um, movement and improvements in the policies that we've been fighting for. And we've been very clear we want real action on climate. We want to uh, real action on cost of living, health, housing and protecting the environment. And we want to be have there's a whole there's a whole suite of things that we have you've probably seen you know there's a whole list of things we've got over 200 policies on our website people have asked us which one you know which one are you going to prioritize is it this is it this is it this we we want to sit down and uh, be in a position to to have a conversation to push the next government to go further and that's the, the starting point that we will bring into negotiation. Obviously, um, you have been in government uh, previously with uh, the Labor Party, and we've also been in arrangements with the Liberal Party. And um, we, you know, there's various di- varying different models, but at the moment, you know, I can say that we're more interested in getting policy outcomes than anything else. And um, let's face it, most of the um, position of the the Labor Party and the Greens, there's a lot of alignment 
it's really about saying we, 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 you know, we don't want to have a stadium in Tasmania because we want to put that money into other critical parts of the budget. So that's what we'd be campaigning hard for to get um, the next government to go and play hardball with the AFL and release, you know, what will essentially be a billion dollars into, um, you know, free public transport, free schooling, um, strong rental reforms, which are, are sitting there already. Um, we've already um, written that bill. Uh, in fact, we brought it to Parliament last year, but unfortunately, Labor and Liberal Party voted it down. So we'll be going back with strong uh, rental, rent, rent controls, short stay, regulation, those sorts of things. It's going to be a fascinating I think in answer to your question, Leo, we don't have a specific... We don't have a specific position that we're, we're pushing for. We're pushing to really hard campaigning to be in a position to negotiate. All right, you're back with us live as our coverage of the Tasmanian state election continues. We'll be getting to our election reporter, Maggie Perry, in a moment. I um, just want to get to some breaking news now. And this has just come from Channel 7 down in Tasmania. An exit poll uh, has been released by them with the figures for the Tasmanian state election. I want to get you the details on this now. And For the record, obviously, exit polling is not always the best, but, you know, it's important to look at. So these are the results in Bass. Two Liberals, three Labor, one Greens, one Lambie, no Independents. In Braddon, three Liberals, two Labor, no Greens, one Lambie, one Independent. In Clark, two Liberals, one two Labor, two Greens, no Lambie, one Independent. In Franklin, three Liberals, two Labor, one Greens, no Lambie, one Independent. In Lyons, three Liberals, three Labor, no Greens, one Lambie, one one independent. That is a total of 14 for the Liberals, 12 for Labor, four Greens, three Lambie, two independents. That state, that would be, and I'm quoting uh, Josh Duggan, Channel 7 reporter now, that would be a statewide swing, 10 to 11 percent against the Liberals, 2 to 3 percent for Labor, 1.5 to 2 percent for the Greens, 2.3 percent, 2 to 3 percent for independents, and it is, they didn't contest last time, so that's 5.7 percent for the Lambie network. The key points he's also noting uh, that it'd be a massive swing away from the Liberals in Bass, two potential Greens in Clark and Sand of a second independent um, and a surprise results for, for surprise seats for the ALP in Lines and Bass. Although he does note, as I would agree too, it's a poll and will be meaningless soon. We'll get the first results in maybe about 15 minutes. And to unpack these results all night, we'll have election reporter Maggie Perry, who we want to bring in now. Maggie, always great to chat. Feels like we were just doing this a couple of days ago, weren't we? Anyway, um, you'll be the one making the calls tonight because I should not have that responsibility. I think we've all agreed. Um, what are you expecting tonight? Well, I really can't see any pathway for a Labor majority or anything like that at this point. I think the Liberals might be able to get a majority, but it's pretty unlikely. Overall, I think the crossbench will have a lot of power in deciding who comes into government. Of course, I don't think any crossbenchers will actually be in cabinet. I believe both the Liberals and Labor have crossed that out, uh, especially uh, Labor, who has been very adamant and not doing any coalition deals with the Greens, but they do support confidence and supply. What do you think the Lambie network's going to lean here? Obviously, Jackie Lambie herself is not a candidate, um, but and it, uh, I don't think she has a state leader. Um, but it seems like if the Liberals needed someone, that's who they'd go to. But at the same time, given the stadium, uh, the Macquarie Point Stadium and all that, um, some of the recent language we've seen seems to be directed more to maybe uh, they could work with the with Labor and then maybe a good old-fashioned traffic light coalition with the Greens as well. Yeah, no, I mean, I believe Lambie at the federal election was more open to uh, Anthony Albanese as Prime Minister and Scott Morrison. I think she might lean towards Labor. I'm not exactly sure if it would be popular among her support base for her to add another four years to the Liberal government in Tasmania, making that 14, which is, as Labor has really uh, pushed in, a very long time for them to be in government. Uh, I think it's going to be a bit of a problem with Lambie on who she forms government with, if at all, or even if she gets any seats, considering that her support base seems to be pretty split between the two parties and which major party they prefer. I think she could lose a lot of voters either way, depending on who she works with. Yeah, and I'd suspect it would play into the next federal election as well, even if, 
you know, the topics and the issues and the fact it's not a state election, you know, some supporters would still play into there. Um, what did you make of that exit poll, though? And I'll just repeat the figures again. It would result in, and again, it's just an exit poll, um, 14 Liberals, 2 Labor, 4 Greens, 3 Lambie, 2 Independents. You think that might be right about where we land here? I think that's mostly correct, especially with Crossbench, but I'm not exactly so sure about the Liberals getting that low of a seat count. Two seats in Bass seems very unlikely. They got something like 60% of a vote last election. I can't imagine them falling down to something like 30. That would be pretty huge. There's definitely going to be a swing away from them, but I don't think it would be that big. Well, uh, I'll, I'll just interrupt. Have... So I was just going to say, Josh Duggan, what he's suggesting is it might be like the Peter Gutwin effect, right? Obviously, the former Premier last time, um, who had a, what I think I recall, a pretty decent personal vote. So that that's an interesting factor, but go on. Yeah, but I just can't imagine them losing, what, 30% of a vote. And it's a bit interesting that they have an independent there, I believe, in Bass. Uh, is that right? Uh, no, they don't have an independent in Bass. Oh. They have three Labor, one Green, one Lambie, is what the okay. exit poll says. Yeah, no. Well, even with that Labor seat there, you know, it's a seat that the Liberals hold in Tasmania as we have got it by about 2%, I believe, from Bass. I can't imagine that Labor would do so well against them at a state level. I don't think there's been much of a change in Tasmania since the federal election. Yeah, um, interesting. Again, though, 11% swing against the Liberals statewide would be more than significant, obviously. Um, what do you think for the Greens? Because when this parliament was downsized from seven-member electorates to five-member electorates, it was the Greens that were hurt um, the most here. Um, they've got two seats now. Would a good result for them be just doubling it at least? And again, from what this exit poll suggests, they would get four. Yeah, no, I think four is a pretty uh, average seat result for the Greens here. They're looking at one or two in Clark, one in Franklin, one in Baths, maybe they might be able to pick up another seat somewhere else. So I think four is a pretty average watermark. I imagine they'll get pretty close to that. I can't really see much of a huge result for the Greens tonight. They haven't done amazing in polls, not something like 20%. So I don't think they'll get something they're like They're behind Lambie seats. Network in one poll, yeah. Although that yeah. was the infamous poll where Lambie Network got like 20% or something ridiculous. They're closer to probably more like eight anyway. Um, this suggests 5.7. Um, it, it would be interesting there for them, obviously. And by the way, we can't forget the Legislative Council periodic elections. Are, uh, aren't we all excited for that? They're in May, um, where the Greens are hopeful for their ever up, first ever upper house victory in Taz, which would be interesting to watch, obviously. Um, but, uh, but yeah, in terms of the independents, where do you see some of them picking up? Because we know just going into this, right, um, for independents, Christy Johnson was the only one elected as an independent last time. Um, but since then, there's obviously been John Tucker and Lara Alexander, the former Liberals, uh, both in different seats, both recontesting. Um, and then also David O'Byrne, he became independent Labor. He's, of course, the former state Labor leader. Um, he's now running as an independent and apparently has had some pretty decent union backing. I was reading something, I think I was on either Kevin Bonham's feed or in the Australian or both, which mentioned that there were houses with signs saying vote ALP, but also vote David O'Byrne. Um, so what do you reckon the independent factor will be here? I think it's a very interesting election. They've got pretty competent independents in every single seat. They might be able to, we might even see maybe two independents in Clark, which should be a very interesting result. I think they've got about the same chance everywhere, but especially uh, Chrissy Johnson, who is an incumbent independent. She's the only uh, elected independent in the Tasmanian House right now, uh, upper house, I believe. Uh, I think she'll probably hold on to her seat, maybe David O'Byrne. Uh, the John Tucker, who's sort of running as a national, I believe. I'm not exactly sure about some of the other independent candidates. I don't think they have much of a shot, especially Craig Garland in Braddon, who's a bit eccentric from what I've heard. Former, former local network guy. And of course, the local network's also running in this, formerly the local party. They, uh, well, to quote them, they're backing independents. They're party endorsed candidates, to be clear. I know in Kevin Bonham and I will agree on that. They are a political party and their candidates, not independents. We digress. Um, 
We'll cross back to you shortly, Maggie. Speaking of independents who, well, seems you believe they've got no chance, Jack Davenport is running in the seat of Bass. He's a former Greens member, former Greens candidate. Um, he spoke to Six News about the issues he's campaigning on and whether he does believe he's got a chance. The main issues I'm standing on are around integrity and accountability in Tasmanian politics and in particular in Parliament and with the government, but also around child safety and child protection. Uh, housing and health are also critical matters to people. But I guess if you're asking about what stands out, it's definitely for me is the child protection. That's been the main focus for why I've chosen to stand as an independent. Uh, we had a commission of inquiry complete uh, its work last year and give a final report into child sexual abuse in the state, in particularly in institutions and the government response. And it became clear from that that not only were there significant issues around child safety and child protection in the state, but also about the, the failure of the government and state agencies to undertake its work properly to protect people, most notably children. That has been the main conduit for me. And I've been working a lot with victim survivors and whistleblowers in the state around these issues, looking not just at the work of the commission, but more broadly what we need to do to keep children safe. And so that's really become the, the main focus of my, my attention, my work, knowing, knowing at the same time that for many voters, they're also, as I said, looking at ha things like housing and health. And uh, I haven't really met anyone that's had a good word to say about the stadium in Bass. Uh, so I think that's really where, um, where the focus is for, for me and my campaign. Now, obviously, your former Greens, that's no secret at all. Um, why, just going back to that, why did you choose to to leave the party, especially given I know that you did have a pre-selection attempt? Yeah, it's um, it's definitely a fair question. I wouldn't know, actually, though, it hasn't really come up on the, on the doorstep or when I've spoken to people, but it is a reasonable question to ask. So um, certainly for a long time, I... Um, I was a member of the Greens. I was involved in that in the party. But about 18 months ago, I gave evidence to the Commission of Inquiry. And I remember distinctly, actually, as I gave that evidence, as I was giving the testimony, uh, I became very much aware of myself that this was like the, the, the core issue for me around what I really wanted to, to be an activist around. Like, I care a great deal about climate action and other matters around social justice, etc. But for me, this obviously this became like the manifest um, issue for me, and I became slowly aware of that as I, I was giving this testimony, which went on for about uh, a couple of hours, I think, by recollection. And so, as I started to do more work, uh, trying to advocate for child protection reform and the kind of issues that I, I thought victim survivors and whistleblowers were were wanting to be raised, and I did that in consultation with them. Um, really, that divergence started to grow more and more from. From the party and really when it got to the point of the pre-selection I, I never really held out a great hope that i would uh, actually get pre-selected but uh, you know it was kind of you know there's an election coming and i kind of put my hat in the ring somehow um that result came about and um you know Cecilia russell won and um did that for a democratic election but there was a lot of um uh, encouragement from people for me to stand as independent before I took part, took part in the pre-selection, and then after the pre-selection, that only increased. And it was for me, it was it's either now or never. Do I stand by and leave it to others to raise this issue, or do I take it on myself? And I made that decision, knowing full well it would pretty much sever my ties with the party. So that's what I did. Obviously, the Tasmanian Liberal government's been in power for a decade now, gone to early elections twice in a row at this point. Um, and, and I think they're the ones that a lot of people are setting up to lose here. How, how do you think this is going to play out? Um, obviously, your your one man, your one campaign, how do you think the, the state election is really going to play out, especially given if you're elected and neither major gets a majority, you could be really crucial here? Yeah, and that's certainly a point I've been making to people about the power of independence. I think actually the demand for independence is, is greater than ever now. And there's a real sense, I think, of opportunity from voters because of the increased size of parliament that actually independence could carry a lot more weight here. And therefore, it's opening up an option that was previously not available to them. Um, in terms of what's going to happen on the day, I mean, look, the polling hasn't been 
the crash hot for Tassie. And unfortunately, that's kind of typical um, for the state. It doesn't seem to get the best coverage for polling. It does seem to indicate the Liberals will be the largest party, but without a majority. So, uh, but it, whatever happens, we know that both of the large parties are going to probably need to form some form of coalition or at least some sort of agreement with uh, smaller parties and crossbench. And that's where independence are going to be absolutely crucial. From my own point of view, when I announced I was standing uh, as independent, I made a pledge right from the outset that I will make it a condition of confidence and supply. That is, I won't support any Fiji government that refuses to um, close Ashley this year. I said early, but really I meant this year as, um, as soon as possible, really. So that would be the condition for me. Now, obviously, that would be in a balance of power situation. It would be an unusual circumstance if I was literally the one person holding that sway at that point. But I would definitely be having conversations with independents and smaller parties about putting as much pressure on whichever party was obviously trying to form government or had the most chance of forming government to make that a condition. Um, you know, I, I, I have to stand up for the things that I believe in, ultimately, and what I think is important here and that. That for me is where my where I'm drawing that line in the sand, kind of thing. For other independents, it will depend upon them. But that's yeah, I think that's really what I I intend to bring to Parliament in the, in the first instance around the government. That for me is the condition because children are unsafe in Ashley Youth Detention Centre. I just have to ask this um, because I literally just saw it come up on my feed uh, via Kevin Bonham, and it's a text that Taz Labor has has put out, which says, and I quote. Every independent candidate says they'll give the Liberals 14 years. I'm imagining that's that's not true. You're not saying you'd immediately side with the Liberals there. No, no, I uh, no, that's not, that's not the case. And I think for for the independents, like I've um, I I've either met many of them or I know of them or their reputation, and yeah, that's just not the case. I mean, this kind of um, this is actually the kind of politics politicking that really puts people off the big parties um is this kind of sniping around independence the liberals have done the same in their own time um it's it's really discomforting actually that we have to pull up with this kind of misinformation we want to be talking about issues and policies and things that are going on we want to talk about integrity in parliament uh not this kind of horse trading you know it's it speaks volumes to me really that actually the political parties and i have to say even some of the smaller ones uh, are very focused upon a parliamentary pathway and about who's going to have power in parliament. And for me, one of the biggest problems has been how community has been disenfranchised by that focus. And for sure, you can do some good things through the parliamentary system. It is how we set laws, for example. Um, but at the same time, I feel like community has lost something out and we should be talking about what is going to represent them and their needs rather than trying to bottle all the independence of some sort of homogenous group. That's not how it's going to work. Labour knows that. Liberals know that. And you know what? The voters know that as well. So I don't think it's going to work for Labour. Campaigning, obviously, only a few days left. It was always going to be a shorter campaign anyway, being an earlier election. Not that there weren't hints that there'd be an earlier election. Um, what are you really going to focus on to try to maximise the amount of people you're able to speak to, especially uh, before Saturday where you're going to have pretty much every candidate imaginable out there and, and with their message? Yeah, well, I, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing, which is getting out and trying to talk to people, spreading the message as far as I can. Um, I mean, from my point of view, actually, in Bass, many candidates um, have not really been out there, many parties that I thought might be more active and not been. Um, and so it's um, it's a very strange election because no one, I can't really put my finger on what what the results going to look like or how things are going. And Paul is about the polling, but also because I get the sense that some people are keeping things close to their chest as well um, in some conversations. But uh, all I'm going to do is keep doing what I've been doing, which is reaching out, um, trying to show people that I'm standing. And there's many different ways to do that. The doors, the going door to door is, is one of the most effective ways to have conversations, but it's not particularly time efficient. So you have to find other ways as well, whether that be, um, some of the standard stuff around like leafleting, wobbleboarding, that kind of thing, or trying some media as well. But wh whichever way, it's going to be the same approach. I'm trying to emphasize uh, conversations with people and reaching out. Today, I was out in in the uh, Lonnie Town Centre uh, store having conversations with people. So that's another way that I can do it just as we close in. And the, it's a, 
uh, diminishing returns at this point because so many people pre-poll at this stage. Um, so it's really trying to find all the people that haven't voted and just as, have as many conversations as they can before Saturday. Uh, in terms of my chances, I honestly have got no idea. It's been such a weird election from my point of view, like no time to prepare, really stumbling into the unknown a little bit. Um, uh, but I've managed to have a small campaign of um, of you know volunteers around me to help uh you know get the message out and and we've somehow managed to pull together a really vigorous and intensive campaign i think probably we've we've been doing you know for such for an independent we've probably done the most door knocking and voter outreach certainly i think out of the independents and maybe even more to the other parties so uh, I, I think we've definitely been punching above our weight whether that translates to you know, a, a meaningful vote is anyone's guess. And I'm not really trying to think about that because you can start to nasal, nasal gaze and get distracted. I just want to keep having conversations and do whatever I can, get to the end point and just, you know, hope that it pays off in the end that voters have actually heard that message. Um, but I, I wouldn't be able to tell you or guess. Like, I feel confident we've won the best campaign we could with what we had and the timing and the circumstances uh, and I think we've gone way beyond what other candidates may have done, um, you know, even on a relative scale. Like we can't beat Labour in terms of volunteers, for example. But in terms of what we have, we, I think we've done very well. So I feel positive about that aspect without really knowing which way it's going to go. It's it's a very difficult area to read at this point. You're watching Tasmania Decides, Election 2024. And you're still with us here on 6 News Live as we bring you Tasmania Decides State Election 2024 coverage. I'm Leo Puglisi. With me right now, election reporter Maggie Perry. Um, let's go over our predictions, right? I'll start with, with you because you'll usually be more reliable than me. Um, what do you think is going to happen seat by seat and then obviously statewide? I think we're probably going to see the Liberals get a majority of seats in Bass, Braddon, and maybe Lyons, if they're lucky. Uh, they've got a very strong vote in Braddon and Bass in both North Coast seats, where I believe uh, their Premier and their former Premier uh, were both running last election. In Lyons, it looks like an uh, independent might be able to snatch on to snap a seat and check in Lambie Network could possibly get maybe one to five seats. Greens might be able to even win Clark and get a few seats uh, throughout the more rural part of Tasmania, but their safer seats are down in the south in Franklin and Clark. So you sh you're showing a pretty good result for the Greens in Clark, though. A pretty extraordinary result, actually. I don't really predict that they'll go up that much. It's just rather that vote has been very fractured and at the Senate election in Clark last, uh, two years ago, actually, they were only 3% off taking first place and beating Labour on the primary back when Wilkie wasn't in the running. So I think they have a good chance at maybe even winning it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm pretty similar in terms of my predictions. I reckon um, we'll have a few independent gains. I reckon Lambie Network will be an outstanding player here. You can see it on screen there now. I reckon the Greens... Um, might be a little unlucky in some places, but there again, you can see it. Um, that probably results in a liberal minority. But again, the negotiations will be similar. At the very minimum, um, I think we're all agreeing, though, probably a, a liberal plurality of seats. Um, but, of course, we'll just have to wait and see on that. Um, never never we forget, Maggie, um, the Dunstan by-election is also happening tonight. Polls have just closed for that. Um, that was, of course, the former Premier Stephen Marshall's seat. Uh, he came close to losing it on election night. Um, what do you reckon will happen there? Since from all accounts, and I don't think either of us particularly follow South Australian politics that much, but, you know, Peter Malinowski seems to be being pretty steady at least. I mean, it's held on a razor-thin margin. I think Labor might be able to pick it up, which would, again, be pretty huge, just like how Aston was huge for a Labor government uh, one year ago, actually, it's been. But Dunstan, I don't really mm. know where this could go. I mean, there's not really many South Australian polls. There's not a very good indication of uh, the next election in South Australia, even. It's not a very relevant state, apparently, according to pollsters. So I can't yeah, really tw tell you 20, 2026, I don't think anyone 
particularly cares about it at this point. But um, nevertheless, as you say there, right, very, very thin margin. Yeah, no, I'm not exactly sure if the Liberals will be able to hold on to this. I think right now I'd probably say Labor might gain it, even though we've seen pretty harsh results in Queensland and state violations. They managed to even lose its switch west. They might be able to gain it in South Australia, but it's a completely different area. The government seems to be popular. Not much has happened since the last election, it looks like. So I think Labor might be able to pick it up if the popular incumbent isn't there. Well, meanwhile, Jackie Lambie on Twitter, she says, quote, how scared are they? The Taz Liberals and Taz Labor Party have locked out the media from their election night parties. Media is welcome at the JLN bash. So um, she wants to join the Skype call. Uh, Senator, if you're listening, please join, you know, so it'll take too long. Um, but uh, it will be interesting to see how the Lambie Network does. Um, it seems, Maggie, that at the lowest expectation, they're going to have one seat and that will be their first ever seat um, for an endorsed candidate outside the Senate. So would be a pretty big night for them. Um, but, of course, you know, we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, a couple of minutes before we head to the break now, uh, anything else you're particularly expecting um, out of tonight? You reckon coalition negotiations or minority negotiations might take some time? Oh, I think coalition negotiations might definitely take a while. It's, there's been a lot of scare campaigns by the Liberals, especially on a coalition of chaos between Jackie Lambie, the Greens and Labor. I'm not exactly sure that'll happen. I mean, Labor's been very adamant, of course, on not letting any crossbenchers into the cabinet. They're also very adamant on keeping a lot of power to themselves. So I think coalition negotiations might take a long time if especially Labor gets the lead. If the Liberals get the lead, I can't really tell you. I mean, I'm not exactly sure how Jackie Lambie might respond to the Liberals. There's not really been a point in recent history where she has had to negotiate with the Liberals, so I'm not exactly sure. That'll be an interesting one to watch, absolutely, there. Um, just quickly on the leaders, obviously Jeremy Rockliffe, not the leader at the last election. Um, just to Rebecca White, this is her third time trying to win as the Labor leader. If she doesn't this time, resignation, no coming back? I don't really sure. I'm not really sure if Tasmanian Labor has anyone else. I mean, the party's been in shambles recently. They only just got control back. They've tried out a few different leaders, especially David O'Byrne, who's running as an independent. So... Yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, she definitely, at least in the party room, is popular enough to be continuing to return as leader. But, uh, look, we'll have to wait and see. Um, we'll go to a break in about uh, 30 seconds. But, of course, keep your comments coming in in the live chat. Of course, there's going to be a fascinating race to watch all night. We'll start to get the earliest results in straight after the break. Um, and, of course, we're also going to get results from the... Uh, the uh, Dunstan by-election in South Australia as well. Again, the first results will come in straight after the break and we will deliver them to you right here on Six News. There's going to be a lot to talk about. We'll have our team here for you. But, uh, yeah, stay tuned. You're watching Six News Live as Tasmania and Dunstan decides. You're watching Tasmania Decides, Election 2024. people, even Labor voters, agree that things have got a hell of a lot worse. And the second part of that is who's got the right priorities for Queensland's future. 
Coming up just months away from the state election, we speak with the state opposition leader, David Christofuli, about his plans for the LNP. I want Queenslanders to vote for change, and in order to do that, they have to vote for the LNP. And we ask the questions you want answered. Uh, do, you, do you support the Gabba coming down or upgrades to it? Uh, your approval rating is on par with Stephen Miles. Compared to Anastasia Palaszczuk, why do you think that is? Uncensored. Streaming now on the 6 News YouTube channel and our website, 6newsau.com. From the moment you get up, 6 News has you covered. We'll keep you informed with what's happened overnight, both here at home and overseas, and let you know what to expect right throughout the day. Extraordinary scenes overnight. It's going to be a big day. The news starts here every morning on 6 News. On 6 News, we do politics differently. Welcome to Uncensored. Thanks for having me on your wonderful program. Uh, are you confident that you can de defeat David Chris Foley? From long-form unedited interviews to taking a deep dive into Australian law and government. Sure. Mate, I, I'm so not going to be that's when you're a candidate. Out respect for Indigenous Australians, why ask them? Well, it's certainly heating up outside here in Brisbane and it will be heating up inside Parliament right now. Six News understands talks about removing Palaszczuk have been ongoing. The Health Australia Party has warned they may shut down. Do you stand by that claim you've never lied in public office? Well, that's why you will always see the facts first on Six News. On 6 News, this is Tasmania Decides with Leonardo Puglisi and the 6 News team across Australia. And you are watching 6 News Live's our coverage continues of the Tasmanian state election. There is so much to unpack and we are just about to get the very first results in from the Tasmanian Electoral Commission. I'm Leo Puglisi from 6 News headquarters and we'll be covering this all night for you as well as of course, the Dunstan by-election in South Australia. A lot of those results to come in as well. By the way, just a bit of breaking news that we've learned from that story. We're following it a bit earlier. Two suspects have been apprehended, according to Russian media, in Moscow following the concert hall attack. That was claimed responsibility, ISIS claimed responsibility for that. We know at least dozens killed. It's over 60 now, we believe, and we'll continue to follow that story. And we'll continue to follow that story right now. In fact, in the headlines, as we do every hour, is Austin Pollock. Leo, thank you. We'll get back to the state election very soon, but to what else is making six news right now? And Islamic State has claimed responsibility for an attack at a Moscow concert hall in Russia. Russia's Federal Security Service says 40 people were killed and more than 100 injured when four gunmen entered the venue and shot patrons attending inside. A fire then was triggered inside Crocus Hall. Firefighters who attended the scene have evacuated around 100 people from the basement of the building, with efforts then continuing to rescue people from the roof. It's believed the fire was caused by explosives thrown by the gunman. Now, the venue has a capacity for 9,000 people. Russian media is reporting that some people were trapped inside, with 70 ambulance crews attending the scene. Heading over to the UK now, and Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, has announced that she has been diagnosed with cancer. In a public video message released by the royal family, she stated that it had been an incredibly tough couple of months for her and her family. The 42-year-old underwent abdominal surgery in January. Since then, she has been on leave from public duties, where her health has become a subject of much intense online speculation. In her video, she said that her cancer was discovered following her operation earlier this year in a series of post-operative tests. Her medical team then advised her to begin preventative chemotherapy, which she is now in the early stages of. She also said, quote, Most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that is appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. We hope that you will understand as a family we need some time, space and privacy. 
while I complete my treatment. The Prince and Princess of Wales and their children are reportedly not taking part in their tradition of attending the Easter service at St George's Chapel this year. Back home now and candidates have been confirmed for the upcoming Cook by-election following the resignation of former Prime Minister Scott Morrison. The Liberals have pre-selected Simon Kennedy while the Greens are running Martine Moore. The Libertarians, Sustainable Australia and Animal Justice Party are also contesting as is independent Roger Woodward. Labor has chosen not to contest despite their 2022 candidate Simon Earle telling Six News he would put his hand up for pre-selection. Alright, and those are the top stories we are following here on Six News right now. There's more news on our website, sixnewsau.com, and on social media at Six News AU. For now, though, I'm Austin Pollock. Thanks very much for your company. We're now going to return to Six News Election Headquarters, where we find Leo Puglisi standing by as we continue our coverage as Tasmania decides. Stay with us. You're watching Tasmania Decides, Election 2024. Well, finally, things are getting interesting. We've got some results, don't we, Maggie? Um, I want to start off in... in we won't go in alphabetical order. We'll start off in Braddon. Um, no surprise, Jeremy Rockliffe, the incumbent member and, of course, the incumbent premier. 2.34 uh, of the quota, 29% of the vote. No surprise there. Felix Ellis is next for the Liberals as well. Then in third, Craig Garland, the Independent. He has 8.9%, which is 0 0.7 of a quota. Um, then some other interesting results as well, um, which won't necessarily last, but uh, that's interesting. Um, meanwhile, in Bass... Um, Lambie Network is ahead of the Greens in some areas. They are hoping for two there, maybe. Um, interesting results there. Michael Ferguson, I believe he's the Deputy Premier, is is leading there. Um, and in Lyons, because we, ha we don't have anything for Clark or Franklin at the moment, in Lyons, the Lambie Network at 8%, the Greens at 75 And, uh, you know, the vote's kind of... There goes my pen. Vote's kind of spread out a little. Um... But interesting results there. Also, Maggie, Shooters, Fishers, Farmers um, not doing too badly in these early results, which seems a, a bit surprising. Yeah, but we seem to have about 6% in Bass, 6% in Braddon, 6% in Lions, but got a decent result. It's probably important to mention. These are small, very rural booths that would obviously have very high vote shares for parties like the Shooters Party. So it's probably a bit overestimated. Again, very early results. Uh, we've seen about 1% in Bass, I believe, which would convert to three for the Liberal Party, two for Labor, one for the Greens, and one for Jackie Lambie, uh, which is a bit of an interesting result. I don't think she was expecting to do great in Bass. Uh, in Braddon, with about 0.8% candidate, four for the Liberals, one for Labor, which is a very uh, low percentage for them. One for Jackie Lambie and one for uh, Craig Garland, independent. And in Lions, the seat count would be three for Liberals, two for Labor, one for the Greens, and once again, one for Jackie Lambie. So she seems to be doing okay on these early results, but again, only about 1% counted at the highest. Don't even have any votes in Clark or Franklin. So very early results right now. Oh, Hawthorne just lost. Um, yeah, interesting there. Um, obviously, as you mentioned, rural booths, which would also tend to lean probably more to Lambie as well, which explains why uh, Lambie Network's head at 9.3. The Greens are at 7.7. .7. Get those scores off the screen, Austin. Um, anyway, I think, you know, fingers crossed with the technicality. That's not the crossing. Fingers crossed. Um, with the, uh, the 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 technical issues, but I think we've got Stuart Jeffrey with us now. Stuart, always great to chat. Um, what what do you make of what we're seeing in terms of how this election is going to play out before we then get to some of the results we just brought in? Well, definitely, I think that Stuart is doing this well. Isn't surprising. I didn't. I wasn't 
I was looking to see if they'll win any seats, so there is truly possible uh, to see them win a couple of seats uh, in more rural Tasmania. But the public forces for them and the Lending Network aren't unexpected to me. These are options for more conservative uh, voters who are upset at the Liberal government, especially given this uh, football stadium. These are people who will not benefit from having that stadium, but will pay taxes towards it. So for a lot of these more conservative, um, small government-minded uh, Tasmanians, Shooters and Jackie Lambie offer an alternative that seems more enticing than Animal Justice Party or the Grants or Labor. So and, and I note as well, obviously, Lamb Lambie has had her own vocal um, advocacy against the stadium and with no One Nation, no UAP, uh, no Libertarian Party, seems Lambie could, e even if she isn't herself and the party isn't herself, and the voters are a broad church. The Lambie Network and the Shooters, Fishers, Farmers Party could, I guess, become the default right-wing minor parties just for this election. Although I'm sure that neither party would like us to call them right-wing, but yes, exactly. They are the alternatives for Lambie voters. Yeah, interesting. Um, Maggie, uh, Craig Garland, again, it's mm -hmm. early. It's very early, but um, he's not trending... To Paul, he, of course, by the way, is, um, I believe he was one of the founders of the local network, and then he, he's left that. But um, he's he's certainly not doing too poorly in these early results. 1.4% counted in Braddon. Yeah, he's got 10% here. Uh, I think that's about what he got in Braddon at the federal election, of course. His boundaries are the same on both the federal and state level. That's how Tasmania does it. 10% uh, would probably be enough to get him elected with a quota of 12.5%. He's very close. I think he's doing very good, uh, better than I expected. But again, these are early results. 1.4% counted really isn't much. Probably only one or two boosts. Yeah, again, yeah. and uh, it's, 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 it's ridiculously early. We, we can't stress that enough right but um um you know we'll have to wait and see there um we still don't have any results from clark or franklin by the way so currently this is just bass braddon and lines braddon counting's going up fast we're now 3.3 percent counted in braddon this is nice this is much better than whatever the hell the ecq was doing last week um craig garland is now in second place at 10.6 um did, did we all just underestimate it's Garland Minton? It's probably here? important to mention that uh, that's looking at individual candidates, not the overall party totals. True, of course. So, but yeah, still, if even, we, even, uh, even with the member summary, right, um, currently the Liberals are at 51%, which is four of a quota. Labor's at 17. Um, Garland's again 106 um, but again, if if this holds even remotely within one to two percent, gets a nice preference flow, that should make the quota. Yeah, no, he's only about six percent behind Labor. Actually, I think that's five percent now. He's doing very good. Uh, he's above uh, the Greens and the Jackie Lambie network, who I would imagine have been looking very forward to, especially Braddon, where they're most likely to gain a seat. There. Doing worse than an independent who I don't think anyone really expected to win. Well, um, meanwhile, we say that, but uh, just reloaded the page. The results are now as follows. Lambie's in third. Garland's dropped to fourth overall. They're both at 8.8% .8 exactly. So maybe it could be a Lambie-Garland race for the end here, right? Won't that be fun? Um, nevertheless, that's what we're seeing out of, 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 of Braddon. Um, Stuart, I'm, I'm hoping there's a graphic loaded up, um, but uh, in terms of your predictions, what are you seeing here tonight? Because, again, from what, what I've been speaking to with, with Maggie earlier, the general the vibe of it and the polling seems to suggest a liberal plurality of seats. Of course, that doesn't guarantee a majority in any sense, or even that make minority, but a plurality for the liberals seems to be, I guess, what most people think. What do you think? Yeah, look, definitely, I I am inclined to say that the Liberal Party will will have the plurality of the votes of the seats. They will have the the, the most seats out of any of the parties contending, but they're going to fall short of having majority. Labor Greens 
is going to be a pretty likely coalition uh, there to counter uh, the Liberals. So basically, the Independents and Jackie Lambie have the balance of power in in the Tasmanian lower house. It'll it'll, it'll come down to to who those candidates support. I, as I said, I don't see the shooters winning any seats or AJP. Although I could be wrong, given the early figures we have for shooters. Um, but I think even if it goes to the shooters instead of Jackie Lambie, my, my point still stands in that these are both parties that could lean towards the Liberals. But at the end of the day, it will come down to the independents and to Jackie Lambie to determine which party or coalition, in the case of the uh, Greens and Labour, comes out on top here. Do you think we'd see a formal coalition or is it just more likely a confidence and supply thing? Which, by the way, in that interview with the, uh, with the Liberals have so kindly clipped up um, Rebecca White said, "No, no, no. Greens or Lambie in cabinet, but potential confidence and supply." Yeah, I believe there's actually several Commonwealth knowledge editions talking about confidence and supply agreements, and I definitely would expect seeing that here. It wouldn't. I don't think it's looking at an ACT situation between Labor and the Greens. I expect we're more likely to see, yeah, as as, as you said, supply and confidence more ad hoc arrangement. Uh, but again, that still puts the independence and, and Jackie Lambie in the balance of power. Because considering the, I don't see the Greens doing a supply and confidence agreement uh, with the Liberal parties, for for example. But no, and and the Greens leader Woodruff, of, of, as she told us, she wants a change of government. So I guess that pretty clearly says Labor without saying Labor. But again, that's no surprise. We all know what happened in 1996, which was after Labor rejected forming minority with the Greens. It was form with the Liberals or probably just go back to the polls. That was the one exception that people like to bring up, mainly me. Yeah, exactly. I, I, again, we could see AJP, if they could pick up a seat, uh, shooters could pick up a seat. But at the end of the day, they, even, even then, AJP would support Labour, shooters would support the Liberal Party. Although I suspect that Jackie Lambie, all the shooters, uh, will will probably push for a um, checking up of the cabinet positions in the Liberal Party. Clearly, neither side, neither of those parties are impressed with the uh, Liberal government so far, which of course is why they're gaining Liberal supporters. So, or former Liberal supporters, I should say, people who are supporting the, the the Liberals because especially from regional communities, you look at the, the same situation in, in Queensland, for example, we do see these stronger rural communities, but One Nation did really well in Queensland at one point. Let's not forget that. They held the balance of power at one point. These communities are more likely to vote conservative, but again, there is that outrage at uh, government spending. Again, the main thing is the football stadium, and, and as I said earlier, these are voters who are paying the taxes for it, but don't reap the benefits. And of course, um, we note the uh, the local network, which claims their candidates to be independents. They're not. Um, they are they are polling at zero percent, but that is because these uh, the electorates they're running in have not have any have not had any results come in. So uh, that is why the local network currently has uh, nothing. Um, we will keep following these results. Um, Franklin, here we go. We just got something for Franklin at the moment. This is, of course, where David O'Byrne is running, um, the former state Labor leader. I'll repeat these results for you now. Um, in a uh, summary, Labor's at 13.9, the Liberals at 30.3, the Greens at 25%, David O'Byrne at 5.9, the Lambie Network, 46 Um And in terms of individual members, um, uh, Rosalie Woodruff, 17.8. Uh, Dean Winter, Labor, 13.1. Erica Betts, here we go. Here's the name we all men- remember. Erica Betts, 10.5% in in uh, in Franklin at the moment. And then the results kind of go off there. Um, we know that is 0.2% counted. So to be clear, um, uh, Erica Betts currently has 16 exact votes. Um, what what do you think, Stuart? Erica Betts, obviously, Hair Clark makes things, and Robson Rotation makes things much more unique. You reckon he's got a chance of, of getting back in? Um, and, of course, m- might I add that some within Labor are talking about or at least talking to the public about, oh, could he become leader, you know, and all that. But what, what do you think of him? 
look, I definitely don't see him becoming uh, le- leader. In, in my opinion, at least, he's had his time to shine. Uh, definitely contented of getting in, but I don't see him taking a leadership role, especially if it comes down to relying on the shooters or Jackie Lambie to form government. I don't think either of those parties are going to support having Eric Betts as the Liberal Party leader and thus the Premier. So if it comes down, unless the Liberals win a majority in their own right, I don't see Eric Betts being... Premier or Deputy Premier or in any high-ranking position. He could definitely get a cabinet spot, definitely, but I don't see him being in a position of power if the Liberals need to try and negotiate with independents, shooters, or Jackie Lambie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know Maggie is going to be doing most of the calling tonight, but I will make this one solitary call. Make one call. No one needs to stress. Um, Six News projects Jeremy Rockliffe is re-elected in Braddon. Uh, That is no surprise. He's polling well above quota. Um, There should be some other Liberals elected as well. But Jeremy Rockliffe, the incumbent Premier, will not be one of those Premiers or Prime Ministers defeated at the election. Jeremy Rockliffe re-elected in Braddon. Six News making that projection. Our first projection of the night at uh, just about 20 past seven in Tasmania. Uh, Maggie, I uh, I think, fair to say that's a non-controversial call there. Uh, premiers definitely get a very huge amount of a vote. I think Peter Goodwin got 48% in a seat just on a personal vote, not even for his party. Uh, he will definitely be reelected. Uh, we've got 3% counted. I think that's definitely enough to say. Yeah, Braddon County, nice and fast. I like this. Uh, Bass is also reasonally fast, almost at uh, 3.8% there. And I think based on the projections, the ABC has just projected, and I think we can probably also safely repeat it, Michael Ferguson, the Deputy Premier, re-elected there. He's polling at about 1.5% uh, 1.5 of a quota. Um, he should be re-elected there. Um, no surprise. Um, Liberals are at about 39.7%. In Bass, that's a twenty point. Uh, that's a twenty percent swing away from them, as well. Um, and we mentioned before the Gutwin effect. Peter Gutwin, of course, former premier, former member for Bass. So it'll be interesting to see how that continues to to roll out here. Um, what do you make, Stuart, of of Lambie, of the Lambie network itself? Right, this would obviously we expect them to win at least one seat. Right, would be their first time outside of the Senate. Um, do you think they have the, I guess, ability to hold themselves together? Because they don't have a state leader. Like, Lambie would still largely be calling the shots. Look, we could we could call this a One Nation situation. Uh, I am more inclined to view it as a Green situation. Now, we know that Jackie Lambie Network can secure a senator from Tasmania every federal election, which means a half-Senate election, or if it does a double solution, then they'd probably gain three or four in Tasmania, definitely three. So they are federally, they're in the same spot as, as, as the Greens are, being guaranteed a senator every, every election federally. So I wouldn't expect them to fall apart. I, we would probably see, whichever, whichever candidate, I suspect, has the strongest vote, would likely become leader at a state level, because they do obviously need some sort of leader, uh, especially if they're negotiating um, with either, either either major party. They're definitely going to need a leader in, in terms of that. If we're going to see a dip, even if we see a more formal agreement, uh, there's definitely going to need to be a, a leader in that sense. But even in a more ad hoc situation, there's still going to need to be a lead negotiator. Jackie Lambie Network, Jackie Lambie herself, can't keep control of state affairs and also federal affairs. So we're looking, I'd, I'd say looking, yeah, uh, for lack of a better word, we're looking at a, a one nation sort of situation here. I wouldn't call it a UAP situation, uh, but definitely a closer to, to one nation. Pauline Hanson, of course, having the, her na- own name on, uh, on on the party's name, of course, still having it sort of, you know, federal control and overall party control, but delegating uh, power as well to, to state leaders, although, the situation in um, New South Wales isn't exactly good for One Nation right now, with Mark, Mark Latham uh, basically walking out on them. So, Craig Kelly will say. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, <laughs> the UAP is going through its own problems right now. When aren't they? Um, but I definitely would see more hope for, for Jackie Lambie Network in maintaining control. The good thing for Jackie Lambie Network is it's still the same state. Uh, Pulling the hands in One Nation, they've got uh, 
politicians in multiple states, well, fe- fe- like federally and in several different states, whereas for Jackie Olympian Network, they only focus on having one state. So it does mean you do have a bit more of a centralized control process. So Jackie Olympian could actually contain, re- retain more control because it is still, it's, and again, it's still within the one state. They're not looking at spreading into Victoria or, or anywhere else. They're not going to expand just yet. Although I believe they did uh, so. running in, in a bunch of states in the double dissolution, which was weird, the, the whole double dissolution of 2016 was weird um but uh but yeah i'll get back to you in a moment Stuart. just a bit of breaking news as well now on the other story we're continuing to follow um out of russia of course the uh moscow concert hall shooting we've just learned um reports are now coming in that the death toll has risen to 93 there um with reports that some suspects are now in custody we will continue to follow that throughout the evening uh for you at home as well that is a, a big story and we'll continue to follow that throughout the evening and the rest of the weekend as well Interesting reaction coming in as I look at the uh, the total uh, vote right now. Labor's at only 21.9%. The Liberals are at 44.8%. Um, this from a Labor source right now speaking to Six News, and I quote, This is an absolute disgrace. What the fuck has happened? Intervention is desperately needed. So that's from one Labor source um, in the past couple of minutes. So I don't know if some already throwing in the towel here, um, but uh, yeah, 22% of the vote Labor is at right now statewide. Uh, meanwhile, Maggie, I believe we can now call uh, Rebecca White's seat as well. Mute. Yes, uh, Rebecca White has been re-elected in her seat of Lyons. Federally, even though it's held just by 1% for Labor, she seems to have definitely been re-elected. Once again, these party leaders get a very strong vote. She has about 20% of a vote for herself and only 26% for Labor overall. So she's got a very strong vote. Uh, I mean, this party leader effect, even the Greens are leading in Franklin with their candidate, Rosalie Woodruff, who is the party leader. So. That good does that graphic on here look. Um, but interesting results uh, there as well. Um, so no surprise, Rebecca White, um, Rosalie Woodruff and uh, Jeremy Rockliffe re-elected, the three respective party leaders. Um, again, it's weird. We talk about the Lambie Network. There is no Lambie leader in Tasmania. It's really confusing and will probably be confusing if they get more than one seat uh, in Parliament, which I suspect they will. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're at this stage. Two seats we can call safely for the Liberals. We can call one for Labor and everything else. It's just too close to call, isn't it? Also, way too early to call Dunstan for those of you playing at home and uh, and remembering that the Dunstan by-election is on as well. Um, Stuart, um, let's see what else. Uh, another call made, by the way, in the ABC. Guy Barnett uh, re-elected for the Liberal Party in lines. That gets them to three seats uh, for what it's worth. Three for the Liberals one for Labor statewide, as what the ABC is calling now. So we're making some, and I'm making some pretty non-controversial calls at the moment. Um, it's when we get into the fifth, sixth, seventh seats that it's going to be uh, really interesting as well. So that is what you're seeing. Those are the seat totals there. Three Liberals, one Labor. We can't call anything for anyone else at the moment. What the hell? Um, sorry, I'm just, ABC's put it at, Mm. All right, well, look, I'll repeat this just because it's coming from the ABC. This isn't our call yet. This isn't our call. Um, Labor is at six seats. The Liberals are at nine statewide is what the ABC is projecting. But they're not naming who's re-elected. But it looks like, based on quota, nine Liberal, six Labor. And then we don't know for others at the moment yet. Um, so that's where we'll leave it there in terms of those numbers. Look, we'll be giving, giving you some more results as we wait. It's kind of slowed down a little now. Um, but we did speak on 6 News to Rebecca White, of course, the state Labor leader. This is the third time in a row contesting the state election. She tried in 2018. She tried in 2021. She hasn't been a leader consecutively, but uh, she's hoping it's third time lucky. We spoke to her a little earlier, especially to discuss what could happen in the event, which I think it'll happen. I think everyone on this show thinks it'll happen. What will happen if there is a hung parliament? So, look, obviously, you've run in more than one campaign as the TAS Labor leader. What makes you think it's going to be third time lucky this time around? 
I have. I was elected first to the parliament in 2010, so I have a lot of experience that I bring to this job. This is a really important election campaign and I think that experience is going to be really valuable, particularly when you think about some of the challenges that are confronting our state in housing, health and, of course, costs of living. And I know that my team and I can bring our experience to start to address some of these if we're elected. So obviously there are more than a few issues at play here. I want to start, first of all, with cost of living. That's a nationwide issue. What would you do to address it? What are the policies you're bringing in this campaign? It is a nationwide issue, and I know that state governments can't do everything about cost of living, but you should do everything you can. And that's where my government will be focused on, making sure Tasmanians pay a Tasmanian price for power, because here in Tasmania, we produce all, our, all of our energy locally, and yet we're paying a mainland price for our power. We want to protect Tasmanians from spikes we're seeing in coal and gas prices, because we are a renewable energy powerhouse, and we should be able to provide that price for our customers here in our state. It's also about providing uh, support for families, providing free lunches to our primary school children. If you've got a, a family with uh, two children, this will save on average $4,000 a year off your grocery bill, making sure that families can pay their school fees over the course of the year rather than all up front because that can be a real cost pressure, particularly straight after Christmas, making sure that people can afford accommodation. Housing is a really big challenge in Tasmania. I'm sure it is elsewhere too. But in particular, I think Tasmanians have noticed it because it has more, uh, it's been traditionally quite affordable to live in our state and that's no longer the case. So people are feeling enormous amounts of pressure. We've got a significant number of policies to support people into accommodation as well. There are more than a few parties at play here. We know the, the Jackie Lambie Network's one that's come out from obviously not contesting last time and they've been in some of the more polls recently. Why should a voter, especially those who might be really disaffected, might have voted with the uh, Liberals last time in, in 2021, why should they go to the ALP and not to the Greens, not to Lambie, not to one of the many independents that are contesting in the five electorates? Yeah, look, that's a really good question because it's certainly a move for change in Tasmania. After 10 years of a Liberal government, I can really feel across the community that people want to change in government. And there are people who are wondering where they vote. Uh, is, is it right to vote for an independent Green other parties or are they going to switch to another major party? I'm asking people to vote for the Labor Party because if you actually want to change the government, voting for a minor party or the Greens could still see the return of the Liberal government. They've been very clear that they'll do deals like that and also some of those minor parties have as well. The Greens and some independents have said they'll support the Liberal Party if they are elected. So if people genuinely want to change the government, I'm asking them to support Labor because we can implement our plan to tackle cost of living, to set Tasmania up for a better future, a real game changer with housing. Um, people can't get that change if they vote for minor parties or independents. Fair enough in terms of the fact that some might, yes, support the Liberal government, but we know based on multiple polls over multiple months, there is a pretty significant vote for some, some of these um, potential crossbenchers. At times, their combined vote rivaling um, Labor's. So just to be clear, if there is a minority government, what exactly is, are you going into it? Are you committing to any deals? Are you, you know, ruling anything out? What, what can you actually say, given, given it seems like a more than likely possibility? That's a really important question. It is a really close election and there is a very high possibility that there will be a minority government after Saturday. I've been really clear with Tasmanians that we're seeking an endorsement to form majority government because that's the clearest way we can deliver on our plan for our state. But I've also been clear that if we are elected in minority, that we won't be compromising on our values or our plan to start tackling cost of living and to start repairing our health system to build more housing. It'll only be a Labor government with a Labor cabinet. Uh, we won't be any, doing any deals with the Greens or minor parties, but we'll respect the fact we live in a democracy and ultimately the parliament will reflect the will of the people. Um, we'd be seeking the support, not just of the broader community this election, but the parliament to implement our plan if we're successful to form government. So just to be clear on that before I move on, um, is that potential confidence and supply, but no Greens or Lambie in Cabinet? Is, is that it? Well, that's exactly right. I wouldn't be doing any deals to trade away our policies or to trade away Cabinet positions. If people support Labor, they'll be getting a Labor government with a Labor ministry and a Labor plan to start to take urgent action on the cost of living, to start repair our health system, to provide more housing to people. Um, I'm not in the 
and in the business of doing deals, I think Tasmania's voting Labor at this election, they deserve the right to know that that is a vote for a Labor government, not for something else. All right. Now, the expanded parliament obviously seems to be something that some believe could benefit some of these crossbenchers. How do you think will play into it, uh, given, of course, I mean, this is the first time in, in decades that it's at the size of uh, seven seven seats per electorate? Yeah, that's right. We've got a multi-member electorate system. So there are seven members elected from each of our five electorates. And this parliament is expanding by 10 seats. So there is a real opportunity for people to win a seat in parliament here without challenging an incumbent member. I've got a great team across the state who are working incredibly hard. We've got a clear plan for our state that's about challenging some of the problems that we see, providing solutions around cost of living, health and housing, of course, focusing on how we grow our economy, creating secure jobs in Tasmania. People at the end of the day across our state will decide on Saturday who they seek to have in the parliament. I'm asking for their support to form a Labor majority government, um, but also being acute, I'm also acutely aware that there are a lot of people with their name on the ballot paper this election. Now, Jeremy Rockliffe only recently has proposed a ban on MPs defecting. Obviously, we've seen what's happened with uh, Liberals quitting and becoming independents, though Labor is no stranger to defections. Um, do you support that proposal? It's certainly not our policy, and I don't think it's even constitutional, to be honest. Uh, there's real questions about this, and it's really a reflection of some of the dysfunction in the Liberal Party that the Premier is proposing to change the constitution of Tasmania to to ensure that he can have stability in the parliament. It's quite a radical step and it just reminds people why we're having this early election in the first place is because he couldn't manage his own backbench. He had people defect and, of course, he's now plunged the state into the third election in six years because of that dysfunction. Now, we're seeing the Tasmania Football Club launch. Now, you've obviously been critical of the new stadium, which the AFL says is necessary to actually deliver the club. Can Tasmanians, who I'm sure many, many of them have been looking forward to this club for, for decades, can they be assured that it would be safe under a white Labor government? Yes, they can be. And I've been really clear about this. The team will be safe uh, no matter who's elected on the weekend because both major parties support the club. Um, we've long been a strong supporter of Tasmania getting its own team in the AFL, both for a men's and a women's side. It's very exciting to see us get closer to that and I look forward to seeing it uh, realised when we have our players run out on the ground. The Liberals have been campaigning a fair bit and I've seen it on social media on, I guess they've said that you've been um, you know, flip-flopping on this, they've saying you're unclear on that. Um, at the very minimum, could the perception that you've been unclear on the stadium and the team hurt your and hurt, hurt Labor's chances? Oh, we've been very clear on this. For two years now, actually, I've been saying that a stadium's not the right priority for the Tasmanian taxpayer. It's not the right priority for our state. We're dealing with significant challenges in health and housing and cost of living. A priority for a Labor government would be to address those matters as some of the fundamental responsibilities of any good government. Um, the Liberal Party can say what they like, but the reality is that they've really divided the state when it comes to this matter. There was previously a very strong unity ticket for us to get a team in the AFL. Their inclusion of the stadium in that agreement has divided not just the political support, but I argue the entire community as to whether or not we uh, really agree in agreement on this. Um, at the end of the day, this is a project that didn't go to Cabinet it hasn't been costed by Treasury. It's incredibly reckless for the Premier to have signed an agreement like this that does require the Tasmanian taxpayer to bear the costs of any overruns to build a stadium. And as we see in recent news reports, even just this week, the cost to build stadiums is continuing to escalate and Tasmania will not be immune from that. And our budget is in real risk. All right, just finally, let's say you are elected. It'll be a, a clean sweep for Labor governments nationwide. What would be the immediate priorities when you were, if, if you were sworn in as, as Premier? Uh, thank you. Well, my immediate priority and immediate priorities for Labor government will be to take action on cost of living. It's by far and away the biggest issue for our state. And we've said that within the first 100 days, we will legislate so Tasmanians pay a Tasmanian price for power. There are also other priorities around supplying more housing to people. There is an urgent need for people to be able to afford their own home. Our Game Changer plan 
does exactly what it says on the box. It's a game changer. It supports people with zero deposit to enter home ownership for the first time, partnering with the government to do that. These are the kind of initiatives that I've been prioritising, along with the sorts of things that you would expect of any good Labor government, investing in essential services like health and education, providing job security across the Tasmanian public service and making sure we invest in the things Tasmania is very good at and very proud of around renewable energy, agriculture and our visitor economy. It's going to be a fascinating race to watch. Really appreciate your time and hope to have you on again very soon. Rebecca White, thank you very much. Thanks very much, Leo. Rebecca White there, Tasmanian Labor leader. You're still with us live here on 6 News as we continue our coverage of the Tasmanian state election. And those are the results you are seeing on screen now. 8.3% is what the Lambie Network has, which, of course, is interesting. Um, the Liberal Party has a swing against them of 9%. This is statewide again. Um, Labor's got a swing against them of 3.3%. The Greens, 07 Independents are up 26 and then others, which is Shooters, Fishers, Animal Justice and the local network, they're up 2.1. Um, in terms of the seats counts, um, in terms of MPs that we can absolutely call, uh, three Liberals, one Labor, uh, no for anyone else, but uh, we can also say confidently that um, uh, there will probably be, and I'm going off ABC figures as well, at least nine Liberals at the moment, at least six uh, Labor, which, of course, is interesting um, to see. Uh, Maggie, what do you make of the results we're seeing right now? We know, of course, um, of the MPs elected, Guy Barnett, uh, the Rebecca White, Jeremy Rockliffe and Michael Ferguson are all in. Yes, well, with party totals, I think we can uh, definitely say, especially in Bradham, where about 9% is counted, that's the most throughout the state, uh, that there will be about, we've called about eight Liberal Party candidates, not exactly sure who, uh, about five for Labor and one for the Greens so far. Probably a very interesting result is in Franklin, the Greens are actually winning the popular vote by about 6% above Liberal and Labor, which is a bit of a jaw-dropping result. I don't think anyone expected them to do nearly that well, but again, it's only 1% count in Franklin, so there's really not much to say for now. Well, you made a similar call to that and be um, outstanding if it ended up being accurate. Um, you're right, though, it is. The Greens are doing really well in there, and that might affect who gets in in terms of the crossbench, more Greens instead of independents. Yeah, that would definitely uh, assist Labor with independents, not exactly all going towards the Liberals, but a lot of the more notable ones uh, seem to be leading towards the Liberals. So that would definitely uh, help Labor if they wanted to try and form a government. Uh, check the Labor network, I'm not exactly sure, but I think she's polling about what we expected, two or three seats uh, is what we can say for now. Yeah, Thanks. absolutely. L Lamby Network's going to be the real one to watch here. Um, they did contest 2018, they didn't contest the last one in 2021. Uh, by the way, if anyone's interested in the Dunstan results, we don't have anything yet. So, you know, sorry about that. Um, again, though, I think we can probably project it as well in terms of seats, and I reckon we can update this in accordance with ABC figures. Um, at least 10 Liberals, at least 8 Labor, at least 1 Greens are pretty safe to call at the moment. The exact MPs, mostly yet to be determined, but I think that's what we can safely call for you at the moment 10 liberals eight labor and one green stewart how do you make uh, what do you make of how it's playing out right now look i think it's going as well as we all expected the liberals are on track to win the most seats but we are seeing performance a good performance by the greens and labor the abc have called their first green seat of course so that tracks with what we were expecting to see uh, currently using the abc figures it sits at 10 to 9 uh, 10 Liberal and then 9 to the Labour of the Greens. I'm inclined to have that lower. I don't think the ABC's probably called it a, a, a few there too early. Um, looking at the figures I am seeing, uh, in every electorate that the that shooters have run in, they're beating uh, Animal Justice. So it looks like there's definitely a strong performance there for the shooters. Uh, with That's without preferences, of course. Uh, but it is looking that way that we could see 
potentially I'm not, I'm not seeing any seats where uh, shooters can overtake um jackie lambie but they are having strong performance i would like to just quickly draw uh your attention if i could to the seat of bass where the jackie lambie network is currently ahead of the greens at 0.91 of, of the quota so we're sitting at 11.4 percent of all votes in bass i think that's the and yeah that's with about six percent counted yes but it even putting that aside it is still a yeah, it's it's early figures, but it, it it does point to the fact that we can see Jackie Jackie Lemmy Network tonight having a strong competition with the Greens to pick up some of these seats, and as a fir- as its first time running in this at this level, uh, it it definitely is looking good for the Jackie Lemmy Network, uh, it, it beating the Greens in some states, in some states, in some electorates, in some electorate the Greens are ahead. You've got shooters ahead of the Animal Justice Party in every electorate that they're running in. So figures are playing it as we expected right now. No major upset yet. The yeah, keyword they're probably being yet. When, when, when everyone calls the first Lambie seat, that's when things will actually get uh, get interesting here. Um, of course, we remind everyone at home, 25 seats last election, 35 now. We love to see it. Um but, um, hey, nice. I mean, look, maybe it's just because the hair clerk counting and all that takes longer. But in terms of primary votes, 10% already in Brad and 8% in Lyons, 6% in Bass, much nicer than the ECQ. Sorry, ECQ, but, you know, it was really bad last week. Um, You're not wrong. Mm, yeah. Um, it's a Queenslander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everyone here is a Queenslander because, well, not me. Anyway, anyway, enough about Queensland. I never want to hear about them again. Um Interesting again following these results. Um, and one thing I should note um, in terms of candidates, because you got a preference at least one to seven, right? Shooters and some of these other minor parties aren't running seven. So where their number one voters will go will be crucial. Whereas um, the uh, ALP, Greens, and Liberals are definitely all running seven candidates in each electorate, from what I, I understand off the top of my head. Um, so that'll be interesting. Some Lambie um, seats, I think, yeah. If Some, if not all, aren't seven as well. So that'll be interesting uh, to see there. Uh, how, how do you think a Lambie voter might preference all over the place, Stuart? Can, can we actually make a call on, on where that link? Because, I mean, Lambie herself... You know, a decade ago as a PUP senator, PUP senator, you know, definitely more on the right. But the party seems to be just populist big tent at the moment. Yeah, I, again, I want to go back to make the One Nation comparison. One Nation, of course, is generally seen as being more right wing. But there is also the Labour One Nation pipeline, where a lot of One Nation voters, a minority, but still uh, a strong minority, will vote Labour over Liberals. So we could see the same thing here with Jackie Lambie Network. Of course, yes, Jackie Lambie herself is probably more right wing. But again, we could be seeing the One Nation effect here where you have some Labour voters going over to Jackie Lambie Network. And of course, the problem for them is that they are relying on... On, on different tactics so to the Liberals and to the Labour. They've got to appear with different tactics because, of course, they're not running all seven, whereas Liberal and Labour are. So they have, they will control. Jackie Lemon Network has to try and put themselves out there as being real alternative. Otherwise, people are just going to vote for the seven on the Liberal ticket or seven on the Labour ticket or seven on the Greens ticket. So seeing strong performance here from Jackie Lemon Network when they aren't running seven in every seat... Uh, is 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 showing some success there for the party. We don't have again. We don't have anything called yet for Jackie Lambie. We've only got one called for the Greens. Or at least the ABC is one called for the Greens. But again, seeing some strong performance there, and I expect that there will be drawing from both Liberal and Labor votes in this one. Not so much the Greens, but definitely the, the Jackie, Jackie Lambie network will see some preferences. Absolutely, to I just know in Bradden as Labor. well because um, I was talking with Maggie about it earlier. Um, Craig Garland, he is, if we just look at me, uh, each candidate individually, he is third, 8.3%, which is uh, 0.66 of a quota. Um, in terms of the total vote, though, Liberals have 48%, Labor, 90, uh, and there goes my pen, um, Labor about 20%, um, the Lambie Network at 10 and uh, he's at 8 So he's, he's still an outside chance. Their Greens are probably less likely than any other place. Um, to get uh, to get in there, I know. If we called, uh, it seems we've called a second green seat. Have we? Mm, we have. Um, I guess we could call a second green seat. Um, 
but uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll be interesting to see how Garland goes there. Um, in terms of uh, MPs, though, the only one we can call um, in 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 Braddon is Jeremy Rockcliffe. He will be comfortably re-elected. He's at uh, more than double a quota. So uh, yeah, we well, have the green seat that we sense. called, by the way. Here we go. Have, haven't we, Maggie? Maggie, tell us more, please. Um, so I am very sure that the Greens will be winning at least one seat in Clark and one seat in Franklin. They were just leading in Franklin. Uh, I think they're only a few percent behind uh, winning by popular vote and both of our seats, which is very interesting. But I can definitely say uh, one seat in both of our seat uh, electorates now. I believe Rosalie Rudriff and in Clark, the Green candidate would be Vicar Bailey. There we go. Um... We'll call two seats for the Greens. We're one ahead of uh, of the ABC there. Uh, Although these are also both incumbents as well. Uh, so we should yeah, point exactly. that out that this it's, isn't it's no any game. If they yeah. lost these seats, it'd be a bigger problem for them. I think what we were speaking about earlier, and I'll get your thoughts on it now while we're at it, Stuart, is that probably just, just doubling their seats would probably just be a good result for the Greens here, or at least the bare minimum of what they need to do. Exactly, they have to be competitive with Labor, um, and 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 we it's too it's too early to call that, of course. But if for for the Greens to be viable, they need to be able to get a, a, a higher swing than Labor does here. And obviously, a swing just doesn't mean you win more seats. Of course, uh, you could have swings in all the wrong places. So not only do we need to see a swing, but we need to see a swing in the right electorates. And that's going to be the challenge for for the Greens here again, competing with Jackie Lambie Network. But they've got to prove that they can compete with Jackie Lambie and they can do outperform Jackie Lambie. And of course, they can close in on Labor to be seen as being viable. Of course, what we have in the ACT is you have uh, the Greens picking up seats from that that would be held both by Labor and by the Liberals. And I expect we we, we should be seeing the same thing here if the Greens want to be prove that they're still viable we want to see this if the greens vote starts stagnating that's going to set off uh warning bells if the if the green vote does not increase does not increase much especially given the situation we have with the government with so many uh mps leaving the liberal party if the greens can't perform well can't gain lots of seats then we are seeing a few pro- a few problems there for the greens because it shows a swing towards independence rather than from parties probably just want to get some breaking news as well. We do have the first results out of the Dunstan by-election. Uh, Labor is leading too early to call, too early to call, but we can say ALP ahead 51.4% to 48.6% after preferences. The, Liberal have 30, the Liberals have 34.8% of the primary vote. Labor's got 306 The Greens have 277 that's a 14% swing. Animal Justice, 48 Australian Family Party, 2.1%. Um, and that is with 3% counted. One out of 12 centres reporting a primary, none reporting preferences. That is an ABC estimate. Um, but too early to call. Labor looks a bit ahead um, in Dunstan so far. So that's what we can say there. Um, more results for the Greens, Stuart? Uh, yes, looking at the figures for Lions right now, they, uh, they have hit the quota. That is a seat they do not. That's a, that's a, that's an electorate they don't currently have any seats in, and they have hit the quota. So that's yeah. definitely we won't, we won't call it setting... for them, but but definitely no. that is where they are tracking ahead. And there, by the way, is again the Dunstan result for you. Um, the very early, way too close to call Dunstan result, but the Dunstan result nevertheless. Um, go on about lines. Yeah, I was. I, we, we were just talking, talking two minutes ago about the fact that the Greens need to pick up seats to be viable, and they could. We're not going to call it yet, um, of course. But Tabitha Badger is looking at having the the most votes out of any um, Greens candidates in in the seat of Lions. It is early figures. Looking at the call, we've only got we've only got twelve percent of the vote uh, counted. So again, it is. It still is very early figures there, but it looks like the Greens could meet that prediction of gaining more seats. Whether that means doubling it or more than doubling it remains under uh, remains to be seen. But it is uh, a, a good uh, early point for the Greens in that seat. Yeah, it doesn't look like any complaining from them yet. Um, we can also update the total seats. Can't call the exact members yet, but it looks like the Liberals will have 12, Labor 10, the Greens still there on two. 
Liberals 12, Labor 10, Greens 2. No one else called yet. A reminder, of course, for a majority, they need 18 seats. The total seats is 35. That's up on 25 at the last election, uh, which also basically guarantees uh, both Labor and Liberal will have more seats than the last election. Um, but that's just what happens when it's an expanded parliament. And we love the expanded parliament, don't we, folks? We love Hare Clark here on 6 News. Um, interesting to keep following these results. Braddon is at uh, 12% counted, and I'll just get back Cry Garland's at about uh, 8, 8% at the moment. Um, so we'll have to wait and see there. Um, but it is interesting. Look, we can't call many of these members at the moment. It's just far too early to call the members. Um, what we can safely say, though, um, is that the Liberal, Labor, Greens leaders all are all re-elected, um, which is no surprise at all. Uh, Maggie, that, that kind of thing, being being the party leader, that should usually boost their, their personal vote pretty significantly, especially under this electoral system. Yeah, no, in usual elections in single member electorates, you'll usually see maybe a personal vote of 2% up to 5% if you're a very popular incumbent. But in Hank Clark, it especially matters because the ordering of the candidates is completely random and is also multi member. So that means that party leaders get a huge boost. Peter Goodwin, 48%. Once again, I'm uh, reiterating that uh, number from last election. Mm. Um, you mentioned, I, I just want to get that because that's an interesting little quirk that Tasmania has here, the Robson rotation. So you can't have a set order for these candidates. It is random. Um, that obviously makes it hard for something like a how to vote card. Uh, could that ever work at a federal level? I, I mean, it'd be ideal maybe in terms of stopping the donkey vote. Um, but you also think it could lead to a pretty high um, informal vote or just um, confusion among voters, maybe especially in those areas with um, lower English-speaking populations. I know there was, I saw a tweet, maybe it was from Kevin Bonham, like in Western Sydney, for example, there might be some issues there. Um, so, uh, yeah, w w would, would that kind of thing work? I mean, uh, hey, Clark, uh uh, federal level, I believe that's what we're talking about. Robson rotation, so the the changing okay. of the orders. Yeah, I think that could definitely work, and I think it would be very ideal if we want to get rid of uh, donkey vote bonuses. We've seen that at a few elections where donkey votes might even uh, decide who the winner is, and I don't think that's a, a very fair system in deciding who actually uh, wins these electorates and super close races when it's maybe 10 votes or 20 votes donkey vote uh, really matters. So I think a Robson rotation where candidates are randomised on uh, each ballot would be very ideal. We note, of course, despite the certain conspiracy theories, it is a random order that they do currently get without the Robson rotation. It's not selected. You know, Dan Andrews didn't get one in in Mulgrave in 2022 because of the VEC and all that. It was it was random. It's, it's random. Um, so we'll have to wait and see there. Uh, 10, I think, I think we're calling eight for Labor, not six, but, uh, nevertheless, our team behind the scenes is doing a great job. 10 for the Liberals, two for the Greens, nothing for Lambie or Independence yet. Yet is the word of the day, though, um, which we'll have to wait and see. I did think we called six. Apparently we've called six, not eight. Nevertheless, um... Uh, eight would be the ABC projections. Mm. I'm just being a bit careful with a uh, few of these. No, no, fair. I think um, I think we all saw the ABC computer seven days ago, and we don't want to use them again. Though, for what it's worth, ABC has 10 ALP. Nevertheless, we can safely call six for them, 10 for the Liberals, two for the Greens, and nothing for anyone else. Uh, so wait and see there. 13% counted in Braddon, for what it's worth. Craig Garland's at 8%, um, which is uh, 0.65 of quota. Uh, the Liberals, they're at 50%-ish, with a swing against them of about 10%-ish. I just wanted to mention a very particular result in Braddon, where it looks like Labor might actually only get one seat out of seven, which would be a absolutely horrible result. It was the Liberals' best seat in uh, 2021, and it looks like 
that the independents, uh, Craig Garland, might be able to take a seat on Flavor. Jackie Lambie might be able to get a seat for himself. So Labour one seat would be absolutely disastrous in Braddon. That would be actually down from better result, even with an increase in Parliament. That would not be good at all for them. Um, we note, obviously, that's an early call. Um, not well, No, it's not a call. It's an early look at these results. Um, but you, you clearly see, obviously, Rockliffe's got, like, double the quota, right? So that immediately is, is, an, it'll, is a little benefit for him there. Um, Ellis obviously looks steady. He'll probably be re-elected, I'd say. Um, so, yeah, that would, that would obviously be uh, very, very poor for them. Um, and the Greens, they've got a swing towards them. Probably won't get anything though. This is isn't really an area they were expected to do particularly well in. But uh, nevertheless, Stuart. Um, yeah. Look, it is it is bad news for Labor um, to to perform like that. It's not unexpected. Uh, well, let's say it's not unreasonable to see a, a swing like that. Uh, but the question is, where will those where will those uh, those votes go? Will they go Jackie Lambie or will they go Liberals or will they go Greens? And that's going to be the question: is well, is are they abandoning Labor for the Greens or are they abandoning Labor for a more right wing party? That's the question. So it, it it's not necessarily bad news for for, for, for the left wing parties because it just means that they could be voting Greens instead yeah, of Labor. Absolutely sure. I realise we're going Greens. past the hour here, so uh, in about five seconds, um, let's play the intro and we'll just go with the latest headlines. Or we'll, we'll just play the intro. It's an interview you do not want to miss. Facts first. On 6 News, this is Tasmania Decides with Leonardo Puglisi and the 6 News team across Australia. And you are with us here on 6 News as we continue to bring you live coverage of the Tasmanian state election and the Dunstan by-election in South Australia as well. I'm Leo Puglisi. With me now, election reporter Maggie Perry and GovCheck editor Stuart Jeffrey, who will be covering this all night for you. Don't mind that little quick break we went in. We, we forgot. Um... But uh, we just, we'll get to the seat totals in a moment, though, based on six news predictions. And these are our predictions. I don't think we're going to be relying on a certain <clears throat> other network's computer all night. We have learnt that lesson. Walter Taylor Ward gain, etc., etc. Um, but what we can safely say is uh, 10 for the Liberal Party, 6 for Labor, although they're tracking to probably get a few more than that as we stand, just waiting for some further results in them. Maggie will probably make that call. And 2 for the Greens, too early to call anything for the Lambie Network or anyone else. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely um, the Liberals ahead here. And, of course, I might mention in Dunstan... Hmm. I, I just saw someone make a call for that. We're not. Um, but in Dunstan, Labor is ahead for what it's worth, um, which would be a gain for them if they did eventually pick it up. Too early to call, though. That's the Dunstan by-election, of course. That seat formerly held by the former Premier Stephen Marshall. 45.9% uh, for the Liberals, 544 And, uh, Maggie, I'm sure you and I will probably be making a... Uh, rash call about that pretty soon and i'm sure we will make that call soon labor definitely ahead though um we'll take maybe three minutes to figure out whether we're going to make that call though because there is a lot else happening in the world including some more breaking news following that moscow concert hall attack which was of course isis claim responsibility for that for that for, for the details on that and all the other headlines making news right now as we do on the hour every hour here's austin pollock <laughs> Leo, thank you. We'll get back to the state election very soon, but to what else is making six news right now? And Islamic State has claimed responsibility for an attack at a Moscow concert hall in Russia. Russia's Federal Security Service says 40 people were killed and more than 100 injured when four gunmen entered the venue and shot patrons attending inside. A fire then was triggered inside Crocus Hall. 
firefighters who attended the scene have evacuated around 100 people from the basement of the building, with efforts then continuing to rescue people from the roof. It's believed the fire was caused by explosives thrown by the gunman. Now, the venue has a capacity for 9,000 people. Russian media is reporting that some people were trapped inside, with 70 ambulance crews attending the scene. Heading over to the UK now, and Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, has announced that she has been diagnosed with cancer. In a public video message released by the royal family, she stated that it had been an incredibly tough couple of months for her and her family. The 42-year-old underwent abdominal surgery in January. Since then, she has been on leave from public duties, where her health has become a subject of much intense online speculation. In her video, she said that her cancer was discovered following her operation earlier this year in a series of post-operative tests. Her medical team then advised her to begin preventative chemotherapy, which she is now in the early stages of. She also said, quote, Most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that is appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. We hope that you will understand as a family we need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. The Prince and Princess of Wales and their children are reportedly not taking part in their tradition of attending the Easter service at St George's Chapel this year. Back home now and candidates have been confirmed for the upcoming Cook by-election following the resignation of former Prime Minister Scott Morrison. The Liberals have pre-selected Simon Kennedy while the Greens are running Martine Moore. The Libertarians, Sustainable Australia and Animal Justice Party are also contesting, as is independent Roger Woodward. Labor has chosen not to contest despite their 2022 candidate Simon Earle telling Six News he would put his hand up for pre-selection. Alright, and those are the top stories we are following here on 6 News right now. There's more news on our website, 6newsau.com, and on social media at 6newsau. For now, though, I'm Austin Pollock. Thanks very much for your company. We're now going to return to 6 News election headquarters, where we find Leo Puglisi standing by as we continue our coverage as Tasmania decides. Stay with us. You're watching Tasmania Decides, Election 2024. And you are watching Six News as Tasmania decides, but of course we can't forget voters in the South Australian state seat of Dunstan are also deciding in their by-election caused by the resignation of former Premier Stephen Marshall. And Six News can now project Labor will win that seat, gaining it from the Liberal Party, and that is another blow for the Liberals following their 2022 state election loss. Again, Labor gains the state seat of Dunstan from the Liberal Party. Chrisita O'Hanlon will become the new MP there. Huge vote for the Greens as well. Liberals leading on primary, but the Labor Greens vote obviously fairly significant there and preferences definitely flowing Labor's way. A two-party preferred of about 54-46 right now in Labor's favour. That is a massive result for Labor there. And obviously, compared to what we saw last weekend in Ipswich West, a nice little gain for Labor there. And I'm sure they'll be feeling very happy with that. We'll continue to update you on those results. What they may be feeling a bit less happy with is the Tasmanian state election. We, of course, have Maggie Perry here as well as Stuart Jeffrey, and we're breaking down those results um, all night for you. Um, again, the state-wide seat count, Six News can project 10 Labor, excuse me, 10 Liberal seats, six Labor, although they're tracking to get some more, two for the Greens, and we can't call anyone else at the moment yet. Um, other networks are calling bit more for others, but again, it's trending in the same direction. Um, Liberals, regardless, though, definitely ahead in terms of a plurality, not near a majority by any stretch, though. The magic number, of course, being 18 out of 35 seats. And you are seeing the statewide count there, a 10% swing away from the Liberal Party, a 2.9% swing away from Labor, 1.6% swing away from the Greens, 7.8% swing towards the Lampy Network. Of course, they are a new party here. Independence up, others also up. Um, that is, of course, statewide. Things will change and things vary by electorate. Um, in the seat of Braddon, which has the most counted right now, 16.3, we can project Jeremy Rockliffe, the incumbent MP, and the incumbent Premier will be re-elected there, and there will be some others, other Liberals joining him. He has uh, got a significant quota there. 
Uh, the Liberals are also at 47.9. That is down about 9%, though. Labor is at 212 That's down about 5 The Greens are at 62 That's up slightly. Craig Garland, the Independent, 75 up 1.4. And the Lambie Network, up 10.4. Um, Stuart, we'll get to you first. What, what are we seeing in terms of, of Braden here? Because... This was a seat I don't think the Greens were particularly focused on on winning here, um, but it looks like in terms of the crossbench element here, it's Lambie and Garland who we need to have a watch. Exactly. Looking at the figures right now, the Greens have had a barely had an increase, less than half, less than half a percentage point um, from their from their figures last time around. Jackie Lambie Network, however, doubled the Greens' score at currently at ten point two percent. Uh, of, of the quota, that's 0.82 of, of the quota. So looking at that, we will, I, I am confident to expect, or calling bet to expect, um, a JLM gain there, which is what we had predicted. Uh, but looking at the, the figures as well, not only do we have Jackie, uh, like a Jackie Limby network win there, we also have a swing uh, ag- against the Liberal Party as well. So the Liberal Party suffered during a swing of about 9%. And a swing against Labor as well of roughly 7%. So massive swings against both major parties there, uh, with a gain for Jackie Lemmy Network probably. Uh, as it comes to the shooters, small increase, not much there, but definitely looking at a, a, a big swing here for Jackie Lemmy Network. And they will pick up at least one seat. I believe the predictions uh, were looking at, we were looking at three or four seats for... Um, for the, the Liberals there, two for Labor and one, and Jack Lemmy Network picking up the final seventh seat. And with the current figures, that is looking possible. Although, uh, we might see the Greens pick up uh, one of Labor's seats. It's unclear yet because of the, the hit, the hit uh, that Labor has suffered. Greens aren't out of the picture yet, but it's not looking good for them. Again, a seat where they weren't expecting to win, but not very good for them. Although, probably the, the big thing for me right now is, is, is looking at Bass. A 20% swing there against the Liberal Party in Bass, which was considered to be a Liberal stronghold. Looking at the, the uh, Again, last someone time. else said it. Peter Gutwin effect. Yeah. The Liberals had almost 60% of the vote last time, 59.95% on first preferences. 38.72% right now. That's a swing of 20% against them, or 21% actually against them. Actually, the Labor has got a minor swing towards them. <laughs> it's 0.4%. In Bass. But, uh, in, in, in Bass, yes. Labor, well, not I'm, much I just realized there. as well the page, and now I'm seeing the down 0.1. Point is... The result is like not moving as at, at much. Um, by the way, we can just note from Maggie Perry as well, who will cross to. Um, we can now say twelve seats for the Liberal Party still stationary. Does it look like Labor might be getting some more soon, though, uh, Maggie? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the seats that haven't been declared are. Uh, they're pretty sure that Labor will win them, but I just don't want to call them yet because they're hovering around the quota and. In some of these seats, the votes are actually fraction enough that even if they got, say, 0.8 quotas, they might still not uh, get one of these seats. So I'm just holding off calling those. But uh, currently, yes, 12 Liberal, 6 Labour, 2 Greens. Uh, the Greens are actually having a pretty good result in uh, Lions, especially, where they've got a pass of quota. It's very rural seat in Tasmania, but I don't think anyone expected them to pick up the seat in. So that's pretty impressive. They're currently looking on track for six seats, which would be a very good night for them. They'd have a lot mm. of power with a not exactly huge uh, Labour caucus in Tasmania. Yeah, for what it's worth, and I want to keep you on this um, as we go through Clark, because the Greens were tracking well ahead there. What it stands is now 29% Labor, 27% Liberals, 20% Greens, and then the two key independents, Christy Johnson, the incumbent, 8.4. That's a swing against her of about 2.5. Sue Hickey up 5.1. Swing against her, excuse me, of about 4.5. Um, but definitely one Green elected there, uh, the incumbent. So that's that's no surprise, and there should be a couple from Labor and Liberals as well. Yes. Uh, right now, it looks like in Clark, it'll be pretty certain uh, two Liberals, two Labor, uh, one Green, and Chrissy Johnson elected. The last seat 
uh, seems to be the, between the second green and Suhiki, which is, she's polling 5% right now. I believe she ran last election. She just very barely missed out to the Liberals. If she was elected, the Liberals would have never had a majority government. Yeah, that'll be interesting to follow. Um, do, do you think the Liberals have a path to majority, though, at this point? I think it's uh, possible. Uh, they might. They have four seats in Brennan, uh, very likely. In Bass, they're just about three. They might be able to get four in Bass and Lions, where they've pretty certainly got three right now. The important thing is that they'll have to get three seats in Franklin and three seats in Clark. Currently in Clark, they've only got about two quotas. They need an extra 12%. But class count hasn't really progressed much, so they might be able to. It's just pretty unlikely. That'll be interesting to follow. Yeah, um, we have to wait and see there. That that, yeah, it's it's early. Um, again though, really solid amount of uh, percentage coming in. We've got about thirteen percent of the statewide votes counted. Twenty uh, percent in lines, um, as well. Where Rebecca White and uh, I think uh, Sky Barnett re-elected there, uh, with no. Particular surprise. Um, do we have any so seats? I know we were looking at the target ones for them, but where Lambie is almost at a we can call stage. We're not calling anything for them yet, but you know where would we if we could? Uh, if they're doing best in Braddon right now. We've got they've got ten point five percent. I'm just going to check Lions. They've got eight point five percent. They're just ahead in Lions and Bass, I think, from last seat. But they seem likely to get uh, at least one seat in Braddon, but not much more than that. I think their camp tonight, based off these numbers, is three seats. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see for them at this stage. That's, um, you know, still, still too early for anything yet. Uh, and we just... Stuart, did you just see that, or is that Mike? Yes. Um, no, that, that that happened to that all the that happened to everyone, and that was, I hope we're still. I don't, I don't know what that was. Um, I'm blaming Austin. Mm. All right. Well, let, let's. Uh, I don't know if you're in a good position to blame someone else for an election party problem. Mm. Yep. Uh, well, we're even now. I, then, I, I think, think we're still. Um, <laughs> please let us know if we're on air, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I'd just like to say uh, I'm just going to update Liberals. They've got 14 seats from what I can see. Looks like uh, nine seats for Labour and two seats for Greens, but they look like he, uh, for the second seat in Clark and in Lyons. I'm told very reliably by uh, someone we can call a Gunzel that uh, we are definitely still on air. So that's nice. Um, for what it's worth, the ABC has, has mentioned, and we're not officially calling anything yet, but this is one to keep your eye on, that, and I, I would, like, personally, not an official call, but personally, I'd probably agree, the Liberals will be the largest party and they will have a plurality. The ABC is leaning towards that call. Uh, Maggie, I think we can probably safely say that as well. Yeah, there's no doubt. All right. Six News can project no government formed yet, but the Liberals will be the largest party in the next parliament in Tasmania. Uh, still, obviously, no call yet. We cannot say minority or majority, but the Liberals will be the largest party. And uh, as I think we all projected here, they will have a plurality. So that's a Liberal plurality projected in Tasmania. I hate using all these maths terms. Jeez. This is probably goes that up. Yeah, yes, Stuart, you and your old results. Um, anyway, 22% counted in Lyons, 11% counted in Bass, 17% counted in Braddon, 7% counted in Clark, bits lower in Clark there. 13.5% counted in Franklin. Erica Betts, oh boy. All right, um, I think we can also uh, project, based on the figures we're seeing at the moment, I think... Um, looking at how he's making quota, and I think the ABC is also um, willing to make that call, that Eric Abetz, the former senator, will be elected in the seat of Franklin. Um, so, you know, he's he's back. 
for, for, for anyone who was wondering what happened to him, Eric Abetz, um, he's run. The Labour Party was talking about his views. They were running a campaign where they said, and I think I, I quote, he even says the N-word was in one of their official campaign ads. Um, Eric Abetz elected in Franklin based on the figures we're seeing from the ABC, and that is the official ABC called Maggie. I'm wondering your thoughts on whether we should just walk back on that call. But, I mean, he he's certainly ahead. He's leading the Liberals um, by over uh, I completely agree. Uh, he seems to have about a third of a party total. He is about on a quota on his own without any preferences. So he's definitely made it. Uh, you know, he lost the Senate seat to Jackie Lambie Network. I wonder if he might lose out his chance at government to them as well if they choose to side with Labour. Ooh, foreshadowing. Aren't we great? Um, there you go. Um, definitely, I mean... You know, I, I think he's he always seemed he was in with a shot, right? And I'm not, like, I'm not sure exactly what his personal vote was, but uh, given this is a Robson rotation hair clark thing, he's clearly got something, doesn't he? Well, uh, I mean, I would say I think he is the most well-known Tasmanian politician, at least on the mainland. I'm not exactly sure on Tasmania. Well, what about what? Lambie? Oh, gosh. I mean, Bob Brown? He's... Uh, yeah. Well, Bob Brown's former now. Bob Brown's former. Right, right. yeah. he, he, look, he's had a, for better or for worse, the man has a profile. Um, and he was in Parliament for that long. He was in government for plenty of that time as well. Um, and uh, he, he, he just missed out last time. But clearly, I mean, you know, he, 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 he's able to come back. He, he, he knows he's doing something right. If he can do this again and again? Yeah, well, I, I mean, he's very well known. His politi political positions are very outlined. I think most Tasmanians will know exactly what he stands on, just about everything. Uh, I just wanted to cross over by avoiding uh, something we should mention with the popular vote for the Greens. The least reported seat right now is Clark, where they've only got 7%. Overall, 15% counted for the state. That is their best seat. I uh, predicted that they would win for popular vote there. So the green vote might be a bit underestimated uh, if you're looking at overall party shares. Just wanted to say that. Right. We'll keep following that. Um, very annoying that the result is that slow there, but um, we'll keep following that. And of course, you mentioned just before I go to Stuart as well, it's those two independents, um, Sue Hickey, the former speaker, and um, <coughs> excuse me, um, the incumbent, Christy Johnson. Um, the seven seat, the additional two seats probably helps them here. Um, but potentially a worry that there isn't a proper preference flow because I imagine there would be some, there would there would be a bit of a crossover between some of their voters. Yeah, between uh, Lambie and the Greens. Uh, just wanted to make sure I cut out for a second. Uh, no, between... Um, Christy Johnson and uh, and Sue Hickey and Clark. Sorry. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, at the last election, uh, neither of their preferences got to be distributed, so we couldn't really see what uh, happened. They were uh, in the last three, and two were elected on the final count. So we couldn't see how preferences flowed, but I'd imagine that they'd flow very strongly if it comes down to one of them being eliminated. Uh, I think we can pretty safely, not entirely a core, but pretty safely say that... Christy Johnson's being re-elected. She is actually down on her vote from last election, which is a bit interesting. But uh, I think... Quotas do change, say, so... Yes. Uh, there's, of course, about 5% for Sue Hickey. I'm sure her preferences will help her get elected. Right, we'll keep following that there. Um, Stuart, what do you make of, of so far how the Lambie Network's performing? Obviously, we can't call a seat yet. Um, that's not necessarily saying they're doing bad. We just have to be very cautious before we call the first ever Lambie state seat. Um, but, but how do you make of, of what they're doing, especially in the absence of, as we spoke about earlier, um, One Nation, the UAP, and a couple of these other parties where at least some of their voters might go in the event of, well, might, might have gone in, in a Senate race or anything like that? Again, like the focus for me is on the seat of Braddon. If they're going to win anywhere, it'll be Braddon. Where they are currently uh, beating Craig Garland, I might add as well. Uh, so 
if they're going to win any state, it'll be Braddon. They could pick up a couple, a couple more here or there. Uh, the, the performance in in Bass is uh, is okay. It's just just below ten percent of the vote right there. So they definitely are looking potentially to be able to pick up seats in 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 Braddon and Bass definitely. Uh, in some of the other seats, that is less clear. For example, they're not going to pick up anything in Franklin, uh, and Lions is up for debate. They're still in the running there. In Franklin, not much of a chance. Bass and Braddon are the key seats for them to be looking at. Of course, they aren't contesting Clark, which we should uh, point out as well. The Jack and Lemmy Network is not competing in Clark. Instead, the local network is. Very different party, not the JLN. Uh, and they currently have 50 votes. So they're basically um, out of the picture. So Clark is now a, a three-horse race. Uh, between the Liberals, Labor, and Tasmania, even the shooters there. Sp- speaking Poorly of, and speaking of last, um, who do we reckon statewide is going to finish last year? I reckon the local network. What about, what about the ungroup candidates? Are we going to count them? Uh, they're counted in the independent vote, aren't they? So, no, we won't count them separately. Well then, uh, yeah, I'd go for for local network definitely. Uh, there are individual candidates, um, Group E, Group G, Group I, Group J, who are all getting more votes, and those are all, those are those are all, all, all single candidates, uh, and and they're getting more votes uh, than local network is. <laughs> and of course, I, we I know, by the way, un- unlike the Senate or something. When we say group, it literally just can be one person here, right? It, yes. It's it's like that. Um, I love hair Clark, but you know that that groups are weird. Um, just just again on those swings there, definitely more against the Liberals, but Labor and the, and the Greens. I mean, you can't say they'd be too happy with that. Labor especially because Labor Labor needed a swing for majority government without a doubt. And I cannot see – if there's any party that will get a majority, it'll be the Liberal Party, and I don't think they'll probably get a majority. Not official call, mind you. Um, but Labor is not getting a majority because the Liberals are going to win a plurality. So um, clearly for Labor, not the best night at the moment. Stuart. Yeah. Look, look, look abs- absolutely, uh, we're not seeing them perform very well in any of the seats that they were expected uh, to make any gains in. There were a few expected gains here and there. Th- those gains are now definitely probably out of the picture. Uh, it'll, it'll be a question of can they even actually keep their number of seats. That'll be a question now. It's not can they gain these, but can they, can they keep their current number? Greens picking up votes in seats where they already are powerful, so that that kind of detracts. Although again, they'll they'll, they'll could get preferences there, but that'll just allow that Labor just to hang on. Jackie Limbo Network is in the picture could gain Liberal or Labor seats, definitely in in, in the running there in in, in Bass and Braddon. Uh, so again, those are those are, those are seats to to look at. I I don't see Labor making any gains here. Looking at the current figures we have right now. Uh, I, I could be wrong, um, but I'm not seeing much of a chance. So I was actually thinking we'd have a, str- a stronger Labor victory uh, or Labor f- labor force than we actually do have right now. Uh, but definitely it, it isn't looking very good for Labor at all, especially given the number of independents that, that from the Liberal Party, the fact that Labor can't pick those seats up is definitely disheartening for Labor keeping in mind that Tasmania is the only state or territory where the where Labor is not in some form of government. ACT, of course, being a coalition, but Labor is the is the stronger uh, performer there. So Tasmania, the only state or territory with Labor, with a Liberal government, is lucky to keep that, that status, or at least a, a, a Liberal, liberal uh, minority government, but still a government nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this, of course, was the 2020... Uh, sorry, this was the, the current results. Sorry, the current composition. Obviously, after a few changes, the crossbench gained in size and the Greens were the only party to actually not change their composition, although they did change their MP at one point. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's that. Um, this was the 2021 election, though. 
Um, so the Liberals clearly uh, doing much, much, much better there. Um, I suppose say 13 or 14 Liberals. Mm. Anyway, um, Maggie, I think we can call a couple more seats for Labor now. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm very sure I'm going to be getting an extra seat in, I think, it was Lyons and Clark. Uh, rare, they're hovering around 25%, which is two quarters. Uh, they're very likely for Bass too, uh, although I won't call that just yet because I'm not exactly sure how much the count has developed yet. Only 12% count. Right, um, we'll, we'll check that out. We'll keep following back there. Um, Still nothing for Lambie Network, which is really annoying because I would love to make their first call right now. Unless they've somehow flopped and have missed out everywhere. No, they won't. No, they've um, been doing uh, pretty uh, about what we expected. Yeah, Br Braddon, as, as Stuart was just saying before, Braddon seems to be where they're heading towards if we want to make that call. But Craig Garland, of course, is making things a bit more difficult. Yeah, Definitely Braddon, maybe Bass. 7%. Uh, Craig Garland's hovering around 7% right now. Uh, it might actually be both Lambie and Craig Garland if Labor doesn't actually manage to get a second seat in Brennan, which they're looking very close to getting. It would be an absolute disaster. They'd need to rethink their entire local program in Brennan. I don't believe it would be chaos. Interesting quote, by the way, um, we've just gotten a senior ACT Labor source speaking to Six News says that the election result in Tasmania is not surprising after the National Executive installed a campaign director whose previous experience was reducing ACT Labor to 10 seats. And I believe they're talking about um, Jared Moore there. So that is what one senior Labor source is talking about. Clearly um, another person not particularly happy with how, how Labor's going at the moment. Um, they're not getting a majority, I can tell you that. Six News can project that because the Liberals are getting a plurality. Labor will not get a majority. We can say that's pretty safely at the moment, can't we, Stuart? Definitely, yeah. It, it, it figures are looking to, we're not going to call it yet if it is looking towards a, a Liberal government of some kind, major, majority or minority, unclear. They are tracking to, to win more seats. Although, interestingly... If you're looking at Clark, a bit of a shake-up there. Oh, no, it's not Clark, it's it's Franklin. There we go. Uh, one of them. Uh, in, in, in Franklin, the sitting uh, members are Nick Street and Dean Young, and they might both get ousted. Uh, Erica Betts sitting at 1,300, and Jackie Petsrumer at, at about around 1,000, whereas uh, Street is looking at about 880, and, and Dean Young at about 600. So we could see a shake-up in, in Franklin even. Which is that, that's uh, the thing with hair, Clark, I, hair Clark and Robson rotation. There's no set ticket. It's random. You've got to rely on some level of personal vote here. We just talked about it with Erica Betts, and it's going to be very important for these incumbents as well. Exactly. On the other hand, uh, looking at preliminary figures again in Franklin, where Labor currently has one seat, which is Dean Winter. They are currently tracking, oh, according to the um, TEC's figures, to be a quarter of 2.02. So we could see uh, a gain there for Labor. It would be probably their only game, the game that they're expected to, to, to get. Uh, but of course, they're just up, uh, up in the air still because, again, you do have the Greens performing there and also Jackie Limby Network. Greens only just trailing behind Labor there as well. Uh, I might actually sitting at 1.93. So where those seats will fall is, is unclear, but Jackie Limby Network is is falling away there, actually, in, in Franklin, currently down to 0 0.38 of the quota. Uh, so not looking very good there for them at all. So it is looking at, uh, at Bass and Braddon, and that means only two seats, and that means that they're going to be in less than a position of power. We don't know how the independents are going to go yet, of course. Craig Garland, as you said, still in there. But we could see a reduced uh, Jackie Lambie Network performance. They were expected to get two, maybe three. They might only get the two. 
uh, not getting anything in, in, in Franklin. Lions, if we just check in again there, Lions at outside chance, sitting at around 8.4%. If I just actually, actually, uh, yeah, though, that's sitting at 8.61%. Uh, it's just gone up slightly. So outside chance, they're the trading behind the greens by about 3%. Uh, so we're looking at potentially Lions, but I'm happy to say the good to call Jackie Limit Network as being out of the picture uh, in, in Franklin based on the current figures we're looking at. They can't even crack 5% there. Uh, looking at where, whereas whereas Greens and Labor are both sitting at twenty five percent ish, and the Liberals at around thirty three percent, Jacobin Minute work they're sitting at only four point seven percent. Not looking good for, for them there. I'm happy to probably say they're out of the picture in Franklin, making a three horse race. So we're looking at Bass, Braddon, and Lyons. So only three seats up for grabs there for Jacobin Minute work, and they might not get Lyons either. All right, um, Maggie, you've got some more calls for us now. Uh, not exactly in Tasmania, but I actually wanted to go to the Dunstan by-elections where I think we might want to retract a call for Dunstan for Labor. Oh, no. Sorry. It looks like the Greens are doing much better than expected. It's Labor's still likely to win it, but the Greens aren't that far off. It would, it would be incredibly funny if the Greens somehow surpassed Labor. Um, look, I think we won't uncall yet, but just keep that one, keep that one in the in the books because it's not about like liberals are done liberals have lost this it's about who wins it at the moment it seems yeah it's one of those races you might have seen it in uh, brisbane or yeah Friday. greens know. queensland 2022 is your best example there and also maybe a bit brisbane city council hmm let's not talk about our calls for that <laughs> walter taylor um apologies to the certain greens people from brisbane who i know are watching too um We'll keep an eye out on Dunstan in a moment. Um, in terms of the – speaking of the Greens, um, where are they tracking in Tasmania right now where they haven't had seats before? Because we've called they've got two incumbents locked in re-elected. Uh, it looks like uh, – let me just check out the uh, count for Bass. I'd like to say free Greens now. That's an official game in Bass where they're at 15% of a vote. That's quite a bit of the point of – um, I think we can definitely say Greens have gained since last election. Uh, just looking at Franklin as well, where they're on track for two seats, they're just below two quarters. Uh, in Clark, it looks like the same story. Actually, they're leading in Clark. They've got the highest popular vote in Clark right now, which is very, very interesting. And for what it's worth, and I would agree with this decision, um, she's only polling 2.2% at the moment. Lara Alexander, independent former Liberal, the ABC, saying she's defeated. Uh, Maggie, do we want to agree with that call or not? Only 2.2%, 0 0.8, 0 0.18 yeah. of the quota. Uh, she's not being re-elected in the slightest. 2.2%. Uh, I never really expected that she had much of a chance here. She is definitely been overshadowed by the myriad of other campaigns with Liberal, Labour, Greens, and Czech and And, and of course, might I also add, she barely had any personal vote on the Liberals' um, line last time. And I was speaking to Kevin Bonham about this the other week. Um, John Tucker is po going poorly at the moment, isn't he, Stuart? We won't make a call there yet, um, but he could be out as well. So these two defectors who pretty much called this election, they're the reason for it. Um, likely out. Alexander, definitely out. Here's one for you, though. Looking at Lions right now, the speaker is at risk. Of losing really? his tell Mark, tell me more, please. Mark Shelton is the is the speaker of, of the of the lower house. He's looking at Liberal Party results in in Lions right now. Uh, Guy Barnett, of course pretty guaranteed to win there. Mark Shelton at about almost 1,600 votes, 1,582. But Jane Howard sitting at over 2,000. So the Speaker might lose his seat. There's a shake-up for you. Well, we know how crucial the Speaker's been in interesting results. So Hickey, etc., etc. in 2021. Um, but there, there you go. So we'll, we'll have to keep following that one. Um, yeah. I just wanted to give... Another call, your life is on Leo. Jackie Lambie Network has gained a seat in Britain. I'm going to say that. There we go. Six News projects that the Jackie Lambie Network will have one seat 
in Braddon, at least one seat at the moment. So that is the very first Jackie Lambie Network seat outside of the Senate. Um, uh, would we be pretty happy with that? And I imagine they'd be pretty happy with how the night's going right now. Yeah, I think they're on track for two four seats. Uh, currently, they've definitely got a uh, Braddon. So that is a very nice result for them. I wasn't even sure that they might even win that seat. So that's better than nothing. Uh, I'm just looking at other areas where Jack and Lambert Network might win. Currently, they've got 5% in Franklin, which I don't think they're going to get a seat there. 9% in Lions, they're a good competitor. In Bass, they have 8%, and of course, Brad and Brad Policy, they have more than 10% of them. Right. All right. We'll follow that there. Um, Craig Garland, by the way, again, he's at 6.6%. That's 0.5 of a quota in Braddon as well. We'll keep following him. So there's 13 seats we project for the Liberal Party, a plurality. Labor will have eight and will not reach a majority. The Tasmanian Greens at two, the Jackie Lambie Network at one, and we can't make any calls for independence or others, although Lara Alexander, Liberal turned independent, is defeated in Bass. Uh, Stuart, what else are we seeing in terms of where the Greens are going, as I just talked about Maggie there, um, because they have wanted to be really crucial in this, but at times, you know, people were thinking maybe they'd get overshadowed by the Lambie Network and some of these independents. Looking at the figures we have right now, um, the uh, in Lions, the Greens aren't too far away from getting a seat, considering 0.94% on the quota. That'll likely be Tabitha Badger uh, picking up a seat there. Uh, it won't go. It won't go to JLN. It'll likely go to the Greens in Franklin, uh, as as we discussed already. Looking at potentially getting two seats there. Although I will note that that seat is entirely carried by Rosalie Woodruff. That's why the percentage is so high. She's sitting at twenty four hundred uh, votes. I believe that is more than any other candidate in Franklin. So we should. I, I want to put. I want to stress that the figure we're seeing in Franklin is artificially inflated for the Greens, although it says one point nine three percent for the quota. It isn't actually that high. It's entirely carried by Rosalie Woodruff. The next highest candidate is Jay Darko, and that's only two hundred and twenty votes. So we need to keep that in mind. Although the quota is very high in Franklin, it's because of Rosalie Woodruff, and that's it. So they will still likely only gain one seat there. I don't want to call it yet, but Jackie Lambie Network, I said earlier that they had a low quota at 0.38. However, they have uh, uh, Chris Hannon there is outperforming uh, Jay Darko. So although we're looking at the quotas, so the quotas look pretty bad for Jackie Lambie in Franklin and pretty good for the Greens in Franklin. That's not 100% true. It's entirely inflated by Rosalie Woodruff. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see there. Again, our count, 13 for the Liberal Party. They will win a plurality no matter what. We're not saying majority, we're saying plurality. Labor, no majority, definitely. There are eight, two for the Greens, one for the Lambie Network. And for those playing along at home, watching other coverage, um, we're calling the same amount as the ABC for the Liberals. They're giving a few more to Labor, same for the Greens. And uh, we have beaten them in terms of the call for the Lambie Network. And I completely trust Maggie Perry on this one. Um, if it was me calling it, we'd have problems. But, you know. The make that information relevant. Uh, we can say that there is still 13 seats for 14 seats for the Liberals. 13. Never 13 seats for the Liberals. There looks to be uh, about eight seats for Labor and five Four seats for the Greens and one seat for Jackie Lambie Network. Very good result for the Greens so far. Yeah, absolutely. They would be pretty happy with how things are tracking at the moment. And they'd also be happy in Dunstan, where, of course, uh, we remind you of the results there, um, which are Labor gain. Um, they have about 32% of the vote, 23%. The Greens have 39%. Liberals have, but on party preferred, it's about a 54-50 to 46 um, two-party preferred count there. So Labor will gain Dunstan, that, of course, formerly held by um, 
uh, uh, excuse me, formerly held by the former Premier, Stephen Marshall. Uh, nevertheless, we'll go back to Tassie now. And again, you're seeing that four for the Greens. We're projecting one for the Lambie Network, eight for Labor, although that should rise soon. 13 for the Greens, no majority for Labor, plurality for the Liberals at this stage. Stuart, what do you make of how things continue to play out? Yeah, look, I think we are seeing gains for the minor parties. The Greens lucky to gain a couple of seats here or there. Uh, Jackie Lambie probably gaining two. David O'Brien in uh, Franklin might be able to retain his seat as well. It's too early to call that. But he and for what, it, of course, for those not, not familiar with him, he, of course, is the former Labor leader, former Labor MP, former independent Labor, who's now running as an independent. From what I've seen, there are people supporting both Labor and, and him in, in his seat, um, which I guess shows his personal vote. Exactly. He's sitting at currently 1,000 votes. Uh, the only is uh, that, that's, that's lower than Dean Winter for Labor, but that's higher than any other Labor candidate we've got in the seat. I am fairly comp comp uh, confident to say that he's... Again, we're not going to call it. That's Maggie's job, not mine. Um, but it is looking good there. So we have some mixed results for independents. I don't see many independent games, though. I see we've got the retention there, but I'm not seeing too many independent gains for any seats. So it looks like to be a party-dominated uh, situation. Of course, upper house is very different, which is mostly independents, but the independents in the lower house are lucky to decrease rather than increase with some of the defectors, so-called defectors, being unlucky to retain their seats. Right, there we go. Um... Maybe if he just joined the Nationals and formed that like we all would have hoped he did for the fun of it. Reform the Tassie Nationals, maybe for the dozenth time. That'll be fun. Too bad, John Tucker. Too slow. Um, Maggie, sorry, you wanted to cut in there. Uh, I just on the topic of the Nationals, I believe, uh, I think the big motivation for forming the Nationals fan, I think in 2019, the National Party in Lions, uh, on a federal level, uh, course he's running at a state level got 16 percent of the vote in lions the nationals uh, in tasmania so i think that was probably a big motivation for him deciding to try and do something with the nationals yeah that's what we saw that was kind of the speculation obviously he hasn't ended up running not even as an end national what a shame um what i will note of course though um uh, is that you have to remember the national senator then was uh, Steve Mahan, who's current uh, Lambie, uh, excuse me, he's a current independent national uh, councillor, um, but he was a defector from Lambie when Lambie had to resign. He was supposed to resign, but he didn't resign, then became an independent to join the nationals. Wasn't that fun? Everyone loves the parliamentary eligibility crisis. That was a good time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, forget the nationals for a moment. Everyone forgets them in Tasmania. Um, which is, by the way, why the Liberals can kind of run anti-coalition lines here. No, it's not kind of why it's exactly why the liberals can run anti-coalition lines and it's probably also why they run them in uh, south australia as well the nationals there are you know virtually a non-presence oh and also in the act i am ranting now um 31 percent counted in braddon 33 percent counted in lines some good counts there thank you tec we love your work um we'll have to wait and see there Clark is the least at 21.4. We can only make one call there, which is a green retain. Um, although, 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 uh, Clark, the, and this is off the figures we're seeing now, uh, the Greens have pulled ahead again of both major parties. Greens, 26.5. Liberals, 25.9. Labor, 25.8. Christy Johnson, by the way, 7.5. Suhiki, 4.5. Oh, and uh, Louise Elliott as well, the uh, controversial former Liberal Hobart uh, councillor. She is at 2% and unlikely to be elected at this point uh, for what it's worth. Um, but uh, this, again, if this kind of thing holds, and this is with 21% counted, Maggie, I mean, Clark, that is a seat where, like, we're talking about that, that, that kind of level is where they could be gaining federally if there was like a no incumbent situation. I mean, 20, even, even if this doesn't hold, they perform really, really well here and not just at this election either. 
Yeah, Clark, uh, if we were to look at the Senate results for 2022 in Clark, 28% for Labor, 25% for the Greens, 22% for Liberals, that would be uh, possibly even a green gain if Andrew, Andrew Wilkie wasn't uh, in the play at the House. Former Green Party for what it's worth. Yeah, that's very important to mention. Uh, it's looking like a very good result for the Greens. We've said this a few times and they've ended up going backwards, but I do want to say this might end up being a very exciting night for Greens. I think, uh, I just want to say that I think it's slightly more likely that Labour forms government here than the Liberals. Yeah. Um... Again, that, that all depends. In terms of a majority, though, like we can safety rule that out for Labor because the Liberals will have that plurality. Um, but just on the way the Greens are tracking, because they won't form with the Liberals. Again, the Greens leader has said they want a change of government, which is saying they want Labor without saying they want Labor. And the fact Lambie herself personally, no, not a candidate, seems to be kind of leaning away because the whole stadium thing. Yeah. You know, the independents, though, will be crucial if there are any. And we haven't actually called any seats for independents yet. Though not impossible to see some uh, elected. But we just kind of have to wait and see at this stage, don't we? Currently, uh, looking at independents, I think we can say John Tucker uh, defeated in Lyons. So it looks like both the Liberals defectors who might have perhaps caused the downfall of the government that's causing this election right now. They have both been defeated. Currently, Chrissy Johnson in Clark and David O'Byrne in Franklin are the most likely to uh, succeed with Gavin Pearce in Brandon slightly behind getting a seat. I forgot about Gavin Pearce, yeah. Um, yeah, so that rules out half of the incumbent independents at this stage. Um, but, uh, Sorry, I got the name wrong. Craig Garland. Pardon? Oh, Sorry, my audio. Craig Garland's not Adam yeah, Craig Garland's going to be the one to watch. He's a former local network guy, for what it's worth. If he just ran for the party again, maybe that'd win. No. Um, in all seriousness, the local network will finish last year. I never asked you, Maggie, who, who do you think will finish last statewide out of the parties? I think, looking now, local network. You've mentioned that they're, of course, party members, not actually. Also, I wanted to mention that the members are pre-selected too, so it's not, definitely not an independent voting process. Uh, Kevin Bonham has ran this down many times with the party. They've even had their own micro-scandal for them editing Wikipedia of their homepage. Yeah, they're not independents. They're a party. That's okay. You don't have to, it's not a slur. Party's not a slur, guys. Come on. Independence for Canberra's a party. David Pocock's in a party. Lambie's not an independent senator. Bob Catter's not an independent. Anyway, I'm I'm again on a rant here. Um, yeah, what else is happening? Come on, something something else got to be happening in these damn results. It's getting boring. Um, uh, I could update you on say if this were the final results, I could tell you what the seat numbers would be. Right. Um, we'll just bring up those seat numbers again. Because um, we're projecting a few more for others than I think the ABC is being a bit cautious. Maybe it's because of their little computer troubles last time. Um, but uh, we'll have to wait and see there. Um, if we can just get those seats up. You can see them on the bottom of the screen, though. 13 for the Liberals. There you go. Eight for Labor. Four for the Greens. One for the Lambie Network. No independents or others yet. Liberals will win a plurality. Labor cannot win a majority. <laughs> Uh, Stuart, what else are we seeing here? Just looking at the figures for Bass, uh, Simon Wood, the incumbent uh, Liberal MP, is looking like he might not retain his seat. Uh, of course, looking at the figures right now, the Liberals are sitting at 36 They're sitting in more than a third of the vote, 36.73%. Uh, but Wood is sitting third on the figures for the Liberal Party. Michael Ferguson will, of course, retain his seat pretty handily, uh, sitting at 2,400 votes. But Rob Fares is sitting at just over 1,000, whereas Simon Wood, 393. So he's at risk. There are a few other Liberal candidates in there as well who are pretty close by. Julie Slyden, 359, and Chris Gattenby, 333. Sarah Quayle, 313, although I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really 
uh, worry about Gatenby or Quail, but Julie Sliden is definitely a, a risk there to Simon Wood. Uh, for that seat, he might not be able to retain his seat, or he could lose it, Julie Sliden. So he's looking at risk in Bath right now. Of all the candidates there, he is... Yeah, of course, the Greens are also sitting, sitting in a pretty good position. They might gain his seat uh, for all we know because uh, Celeste Russell is coming in pretty good at, at 1,060, uh, sorry, at, at 1,100 votes in, in Tasmania, in, for the, for the Tasmanian Greens in, in Bass. Jackie Limby Network still performing well there. Uh, Rebecca Pentland is sitting at 448, likely to gain a seat there as well. So Simon Wood, not great news for him. Uh, sitting with, with such with such a low figure. In fact, shooters have a higher vote than Simon Wood. There's one for you. Michael Friedrich for shooters, the only candidate for shooters running in that seat, 403 votes. That puts him 10 above Simon Wood. So we have a minor party outperforming its incumbent MP there. That'll be one to watch. Absolutely. Shooters fish is very interesting. We didn't see him in polling. Probably not going to win a seat, I'd say. Um, but given they weren't running all seven, so their preferences can't just expire, it will be interesting to see where their preference, and I'd be inclined to say they'd go well towards Lambie and Liberal before they do Labor and Greens. Although, you know, some of them are a wacky bunch. I would love to see, like, the I would love to meet the one shooter's voter who preferences, like, animal justice second or something. Just a really confused person in general. Nevertheless, we're making up voters now. Um What else is happening? Uh, currently, the, if we were to look at the uh, results so far, uh, again, this is not clause, this is who's leading in each seat. We would see 14 Liberals, 10 Labour, 6 Green, 3 Lambie, and 2 Independents. Both Independents being David O'Byrne and Franklin, uh, former Labour, and Christy Johnson in Clark. There we go. Um, David O'Byrne's interesting again. Um, you really wonder where he's going to come into this. Um, and clearly not that unpopular, despite his leadership not ending, his very short time as Labor leader, not ending in the most um, non-scandalous way. Uh, nevertheless, um, in terms of seats calling, uh, we're being, look, we're being more cautious on Labor here. ABC is being a lot more cautious on Greens and Lambie Network. Um, hey, I'm not in the business of retracting calls. I would never do that. But, um, um, yeah, there you can see the seat count. Um, Maggie? Uh, right now, Greens have fallen to third in Clark. They're 6% behind Labour, who is currently leading the seat right now. Uh, looks like in Franklin, I'm just checking their numbers. They've also fallen down about a percentage or so. But they could still overtake Labour in Franklin which, again, would be very disappointing. This is a Labour held seat. If they could overtake Labour here, then it might spell a lot of trouble for them at a federal level for Labour, who has an incumbent MP that I believe the Greens have polled very well in this area uh, in the past. Yeah, um, we'll see how that goes. The The Clark count is going to be um, very, very random. Um, very, very random, but... You know, I, I, it, it'll be fun if, if, if Greens somehow finish even second, um, you know that will that that will be their focus of the night. Um, of course, we'd love to hear your thoughts. So let us know who you think will win out of this. Whether you think the Liberals can get a majority, because we've ruled out Labor getting a majority. Leave your thoughts in the live chat and the comments section right now using the hashtag Six News AU. There's the swings you're seeing there. Statewide, 11.5 percent swing away from the Liberals, 0.6 percent swing away from Labor, two percent swing to the Greens, 6.9 percent. That's they're new, of course, Lambie Network. Independence up two and a half. Others up 0.5. So, uh, yeah. What's the time? Can we go to another break? Oh, actually, we should go to another break. Good timing. Finally noticed. Um, we'll go to a break in about a minute. But, of course, uh, keep your comments coming. And you're seeing those swings there. And we'll repeat those figures that we're calling for you. We can safely say 13 seats for the Liberal Party. Eight, probably more, for Labor. Four for the Greens. That's a, uh, you know, that's more than what the ABC is calling. And we're also calling one for the Jackie Lambie Network in Braddon, which, of course, is their first ever seat uh, at a state level. 
So we'll keep following how that goes. And, of course, Labor as well gaining the seat of Dunstan in South Australia in that state by-election there. Stay with us here on 6 News. We'll be back after the break with the latest headlines and more results from the Tasmanian state election. Stay with us. You're watching Tasmania Decides, Election 2024. interview you do not want to miss. And most people, even Labor voters, agree that things have got a hell of a lot worse. And the second part of that is who's got the right priorities for Queensland's future. Coming up just months away from the state election, we speak with the state opposition leader David Christofoli about his plans for the LNP. I want Queenslanders to vote for change and in order to do that they have to vote for the LNP. And we ask the questions you want answered. Uh, do, you, do you support the Gabba coming down or upgrades to it? Uh, your approval rating is on par with Stephen Miles. Compared to Anastasia Palaszczuk, why do you think that is? Uncensored. Streaming now on the 6 News YouTube channel and our website, 6newsau.com. From the moment you get up, 6 News has you covered. We'll keep you informed with what's happened overnight, both here at home and overseas, and let you know what to expect right throughout the day. Extraordinary scenes overnight. It's going to be a big day. The news starts here every morning on 6 News. On 6 News, we do politics differently. Welcome to Uncensored. Thanks for having me on your wonderful program. Are you confident that you can de defeat David Chris Foley? From long-form unedited interviews to taking a deep dive into Australian law and government. Sure. Mate, I, I'm so not going to be that's when you're a candidate. The respect for Indigenous Australians, why ask them? Well, it's certainly heating up outside here in Brisbane and it will be heating up inside Parliament right now. Six News understands talks about removing Palaszczuk have been ongoing. The Health Australia Party has warned they may shut down. Do you stand by that claim you've never lied in public office? That's why you will always see the facts first on Six News. interview you do not want to Live on 6 News, this is Tasmania Decides with Leonardo Puglisi and the Six News team across Australia. And you are still with us here on Six News as Tasmania decides. We are continuing our coverage of the state election and of course we are projecting that the Liberal Party will win a plurality of seats, though not necessarily a majority. Labor will not win a majority, we can call that. And uh, in terms of some of these other results, well, it's just too early to call a bit, but uh, we can say that the Greens will win probably about four and uh, meanwhile, Lambie Network will, uh, well, they're looking like they should get at least one, and we've called that for Braden. There's obviously a lot else going on in the world right now, including the latest breaking news following the Moscow Concert Hall attack, which ISIS has claimed responsibility for, for the latest on that. And the other story is making news right now on the hour, every hour, as we always do. Here's Austin Pollock. Leo, thank you. We'll get back to the state election very soon, but to what else is making six news right now? And Islamic State has claimed responsibility for an attack at a Moscow concert hall in Russia. Russia's Federal Security Service says 40 people were killed and more than 100 injured when four gunmen entered the venue and shot patrons attending inside. A fire then was triggered inside Crocus Hall. Firefighters who attended the scene have evacuated around 100 people from the basement of the building with efforts then continuing to rescue people from the roof. 
It's believed the fire was caused by explosives thrown by the gunman. Now, the venue has a capacity for 9,000 people. Russian media is reporting that some people were trapped inside, with 70 ambulance crews attending the scene. Heading over to the UK now, and Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, has announced that she has been diagnosed with cancer. In a public video message released by the royal family, she stated that it had been an incredibly tough couple of months for her and her family. The 42-year-old underwent abdominal surgery in January. Since then, she has been on leave from public duties, where her health has become the subject of much intense online speculation. In her video, she said that her cancer was discovered following her operation earlier this year in a series of post-operative tests. Her medical team then advised her to begin preventative chemotherapy, which she is now in the early stages of. She also said, quote, Most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that is appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. We hope that you will understand as a family we need some time, space and privacy. Well, I complete my treatment. The Prince and Princess of Wales and their children are reportedly not taking part in their tradition of attending the Easter service at St George's Chapel this year. Back home now and candidates have been confirmed for the upcoming Cook by-election following the resignation of former Prime Minister Scott Morrison. The Liberals have pre-selected Simon Kennedy while the Greens are running Martine Moore. The Libertarians, Sustainable Australia and Animal Justice Party are also contesting as is independent Roger Woodward. Labor has chosen not to contest despite their 2022 candidate Simon Earle telling Six News he would put his hand up for pre-selection. Alright, and those are the top stories we are following here on Six News right now. There's more news on our website, sixnewsau.com, and on social media at sixnewsau. For now though, I'm Austin Pollock. Thanks very much for your company. We're now going to return to Six News election headquarters, where we find Leo Puglisi standing by as we continue our coverage as Tasmania decides. Stay with us. You're watching Tasmania Decides, Election 2024. have called Dunson as a Labor gain. That, of course, is the South Australian seat vacated by former SA Premier Liberal Stephen Marshall. Uh, meanwhile, in Tasmania, um, we can make some more predictions, and it is a bit better news for Labor. Um, we, we were holding off on this, I guess, Labor, uh, ABC's are around the same call. But, uh, Maggie, what are we seeing now in terms of the seat count statewide? Uh, currently, it looks like Labor has gained two extra seats since uh, we last checked. So that makes a total of Liberals 13, Labor 10, Greens 4, Lambie 1, and that should be about 12 seats that we have declared, which uh, are very likely to go to a lot of the crossbenchers, independents, Jackie and Lambie Network. Right, which will be interesting to see. Um, for Lambie herself, right, she started this party to get herself re-elected to the Senate. She's got a senator... With her now, Tammy Terrell, and now it looks like they're getting into the state parliament. Um, you have to be pretty pleased with that for a party that, again, a lot of these parties for senators, like David Pocock party's not going anywhere, right? This is a pretty significant step. And really, the only parties to do this I can think of in recent memories, Pauline Hanson's One Nation, well, that actually wasn't even set up for her to get into the Senate, mind you. Um, neither was actually the Cutters Australian Party. So this is pretty significant for JLN, the power of name recognition, reminding everyone, again, Jackie Lambie is not on the ballot in any of these seats. Uh, yeah, she, I mean, this Brennan seat, even though they performed very well uh, federally, they've only got 11%. It's a pretty good result, but, I mean, federally, I think they've done better. They managed to even get third place in Lions up to 20% after preferences. So I think this is about what we could expect when Jake and Lambie wasn't on the ballot. Uh, it's probably important to note with the vote share right now that Lambie did not run in the seat of Clark. So it's a bit uh, of a better result than you might expect with this current vote share. 
Yeah, absolutely. Hey, we know. Um, we we. By the way, I don't think the ABC's called anything for Lambie yet. I know some people have commented. Um, I'll trust Maggie's judgment. This isn't my call, so I think. Um, look, it'll depend, but I, I think they're pretty. They're pretty safe here. At least one in Braddon, which is clearly where they've been going the best. I think it's pretty safe to make that call. As I mean, which is why you've made it half an hour ago. Yes. Uh, the vote uh, of 10%, I wouldn't think would be enough for them to get uh, a seat normally. But considering that the vote is so fractured between other candidates, uh, a lot of other candidates, especially more liberal, uh, Greens, maybe even the Shooters and Craig Garland, they're all around 7%. Jackie Lambie's on 10%. She's very definitely going to get the seat. And even if she were to fall behind some of these on primary votes, she would pick that back up on preferences. She's got a very broad array on where she picks up her votes, the Greens to the Shooters to Animal Justice, all those parties. They flow very strongly to her. Right, we'll have to see there. Stuart, what do you make of how the Lambie Network's also performing? Um, obviously, they're pretty good enough for, I think, a second seat, not necessarily in Braddon, maybe somewhere else. That's not an official call yet. Um, but anything is a gain for them at this election, right? So there was there was nothing really that they could have had that was a bad result. Um, so far, it seems to be pretty good. Can I challenge that about two seats? They might get two seats in Braddon. It's not impossible. Not what impossible. I mean, look, that is that is the fantastic thing about it being seven. They're currently and coming sixth and seventh. They're currently coming sixth and seventh. Right. So the good look, pre preferences, though, will, will make things interesting, though. Um, who else is running in, in Braddon? Let me just see in terms of the parties. So Shooter's running, and they've got about 3%. Um, where do you think Garland preferences? Could Garland preferences go to Lambie if he doesn't make quota? Uh, look, yeah, if, if 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 he's in the picture, then you're looking at uh, actually yeah, you're looking yeah right. He probably will get in, which means looking only at one JLN, maybe two, depending on uh, how Labor performs or no, sorry, not how Labor performs, depending on how liberal uh, liberals perform because uh, Jench is sitting at only 1,200 votes, so that he's potentially at risk. Um, the preference flow could yeah, could definitely upset things, but. Tasmanian Greens are looking at potentially no seats in Braddon. Uh, sitting in a, 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 they're, they're sitting at a quota of 0 0.53. And for, for the six, record, by the way, for anyone confused, that, 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 would, that would be the same as, as last time. They're not losing any incumbents in Braddon. Yes. Um, they they're are up 1.5-ish to about 7%, um, but they're fourth place on, uh, on total vote here. Yes, but they're, they're facing the same situation as the Greens are in Franklin. And it's that inflated vote. So Greens candidate Darren Briggs in, in Brighton is sitting at about 1,000 votes. Uh, but the rest of the candidates, they're, they're running seven candidates, of course. You've got one of them at 1,000 votes. The rest of them are about mid-100s. 169 is your highest, and 141 is your lowest there. So six candidates... With less than thirty percent, less than thirty votes difference between one another, so it's 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 very similar to what we're seeing at Franklin. Franklin, of course, I mentioned earlier, with the inflated vote of Rosalie Woodruff, the current uh, MP there, at, now at twenty four hundred votes. The next highest candidate is is Jay Darko at only two hundred and twenty, currently competing with Chris Hannon from JLN, probably for that seat there. Not out of the picture yet for for JLN. Um, so you, we are having this 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 trend for the Greens of having one candidate picking up the vast majority of the votes, uh, and the rest of the candidates coming in with with with, with very low figures. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the case in Franklin and in Braddon. They're the most obvious ones there. Uh, if I swap over to Clark, kind of a similar picture. You got Bailey at twenty three hundred, of course, the incumbent. Helen Burn is sitting at and, and Jade Darko, by the way, I knew I recognised the name. Um, she's one of the uh, one of few transgender uh, politicians in this country right now. Current councillor on uh, Clarence City Council, um, elected at the twenty twenty two local elections. Um, 
So there's a fun fact. There's, a, there's only been a handful of transgender politicians in Australia ever, never won at a state or federal level, only local council. So there's a little fun fact, but um, do go on. I mean, the Greens and transgender issues is something that's topical. So it depends. It's if, not Victoria. If Jay, yeah, if, if, if Jay Darker does get in, then that will definitely become a topical issue. Um, but yes, but, Victoria, uh, but, but, but the, the point is, obviously, by the way, I, you know, it's yes. always, always nice when councillors run for parties, maybe especially so Labor and Liberals, where they don't endorse in Tasmania, so we can maybe find out some more affiliations. I am digressing. Um, but um, just on those quotes there um, that you're I mean, saying... If it, in, um, Jay oh, Darko has the chance of getting in. I think that's Brad, and I'm listening. Yeah, that's Brad. Um, you've seen the quotas there. Um, I am imagining that is not 4.5% liberal vote. Um, nevertheless, uh, uh, you get the picture in terms of um, in terms of where the swings are, are, are going in Brad and right now. Accounting for preferences, we're probably going to see Jay Darko in, in, in contending for the for the final seat, likely going against Chris Hannon. So. We six six and Green seven will be there. the interesting seats, I think. Yes. Um, yeah, the JLN, um, I mentioned there earlier, you go, by the way. I pretty much... There you go, by the way. 5.4% um, for, for the Liberals in uh, in Braddon. Exactly. Um, so, the, yeah. Go yeah, on. look, uh, the, the, the Liberals will get there too. But again, those figures are not looking very good for the Liberals, for the incumbents. Nick Street is now at 2,100, and Dean Young at 1,600, but Erica Betts sitting at 20... Uh, Erica Betts is about to make 3,000. Uh, the only other MP to do that so far is is Rockcliffe himself. So Erica Betts coming in... Uh, no, my mistake. Uh, he's one of three. Uh, Jackie Petsruma is, is, is at 3,100. So there are three uh, three um, candidates there for the, the Liberals there. Um Erica Betts and Jackie Petruma are likely to topple Nick Street and Dean Young. So the Liberals will retain their two seats in Franklin, but very different MPs. Yeah. Thank you, Robson Rotation. Imagine if this was just a Senate ticket. Boring. Um, anyway, this is, this, is much, this is much better. Much, much better. Um... Mm. Go, uh, go on, someone. Um, Maggie, sure. do we have any more results? Any, uh, any more calls? I mean, looking at Clark right now, Labor has gained a bit of a lead over the Liberals. They might be able to win the popular vote here, which would be pretty nice for them if they want to win Clark after Wilkie resigns for the future. Uh, currently, Christy Johnson, incumbent independent, there's a small chance that she might actually lose her seat here. She doesn't have a very strong vote. I think she's gone down since 2021. She's only got 8% of the vote. You need 125 for a quota. Uh, I wonder, potentially, Labor or Liberals might be able to snag a third seat here. Yeah. Things, of course, as we've mentioned all night, will be interesting because the Parliament's expanding two extra seats for each of the five electorates, um, which makes six and seven counts even more critical. Five will also be interesting. It's really the top four that can probably be safely called, although we cannot call the top four in each seat. Um, top three, I think, are being called in some some corners. This is a great count. We're about 40%-ish for each seat. How nice. What a nice change of pace isn't it guys what a fantastic p change of pace keep forgetting by the way because brisbane city council has more people than tasmania but anyway um turns out that when you pay your staff properly they actually can count ballots. they can actually count ballots you know, in a, in fast enough time um Mm. Which we still haven't seen the fallout of yet. That's fallout we're still going to continue in Queensland. Yeah, and this the kind of the issue will have questions to answer before the state election. You can say that. Um, not that we're counting. We're saying the results were wrong, but they were slow, and the, there were problems at the polling places. We digress because we are on Tasmania at the moment, um, and that is what you're seeing in Franklin now. Um, where the Greens are performing pretty strongly there. Lambie Network, not so much. David O'Burn, the Independent, um, at 9.5 there. And he would be very hopeful of a quota. And you wonder, because I saw, I think it was also on Kevin Bonham's feed, but you wonder where there's a crossover between maybe some Labor voters putting O'Burn first and then the seven Labor candidates next, or one of the Labor candidates first and then O'Burn. 
um, second, which will which will matter all the more in in this. Can I get to, can I get to a, do a bit of a dark horse candidate for a second? If you go back to Clark, please. Sue Hickey, eleven hundred votes. Right, the former speaker, of course, the one who tried to get elected in twenty twenty one, who caused that early election effectively. Not impossible that uh, she will gain a seat. Uh, unlikely, and that'd be alongside impossible. for those playing along at home, Christy Johnson, which would be two independents in Clark, which would be pretty significant. But you wonder if it's going to be independents or Clark, who the, independents or Greens, who are the ones who really gain in Clark here. Well, I, th- I think the think the big winner for for Clark is going to be the independents. Now they'll probably only get one seat, but if I can just go through a few independents you got there, of course you got Christy Johnson and Sue Hickey. But you got Ben Logberger, um, 841 as well. So you're sitting in another another uh, independent there, doing fairly well compared to the, another seat that'll be doing definitely very well. Uh, very contentious seat, but we do have three independents there who are performing very very well. Two of them are over one, one's over one thousand, one's over two thousand, and uh, Ben Logberger there. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that name completely, but I'm a Queenslander. It's, yeah, whatever. Um, there's he's, he gets, he's, he's probably going to try to get over a thousand votes within the next half an hour. Uh, so definitely that seat for the uh, major parties, it, it, it's definitely going to you know force them to, to reconsider what's what's happening in in in, in Clark right now, which kind of you know adjust their perspective a bit, uh, given that this is probably the most popular seat in Tasmania to see this many independents doing this well. Uh, does kind of set off uh, warning uh, alarms there for some of the major parties, definitely, especially given because um, Christy Johnson might be the only independent to retain her seat, uh, possibly. And that's unclear, but she might be the only independent to retain her seat. She's sitting at 7.81% of the votes. Uh, so Hickey at 4.21%, and then Ben Logberger at 3.17%. So definitely some independents performing very well there. Preference flows mean they probably won't get in, but nonetheless, it is good to see some strong performing candidates there, especially considering the uh, AJP and Shooters are basically out of the picture. Um, shooters coming in at 1.2... Shooters are looking at uh, 1.29%, AJP at 1.66%. So the uh, independents are beating the two parties there. Right, we'll be interesting to see how that one follows. Have we got anything in terms of how Shooters Fishers are doing? Again, I'm not saying they're going to win a seat, but given they're not running those those seven tickets where their vote would expire, their preferences are going to be absolutely crucial. They are going to the chance in, in Bass. Mm-hmm. Um, I say in. Um, it's It's very, very slight. Um, but they were doing pretty well. They're sitting at 2.59% of the vote there, 2.59, 811 votes. Michael Friedrich, unlikely, but still well performing compared to the AJP's Ian Davis, who's about half of that. Um, if we move over to Braddon, then as well, uh, which we've touched on earlier, they're not doing too well there as well. So they had some early leads on early, early figures, not doing so well now, sitting at 2.92% of the vote uh, there in Braddon. In Clark, at one point two nine percent. If I just check Franklin and Lyons, I don't think they're going to be doing. And for, for what it's, for sorry to special. interrupt, but for what it's worth, and uh, Maggie Perry vindicated because um, the ABC is now saying Greens are possible. Um, Cecily Russell possible as an elected Green in Bass, but I think based on our prediction, we have called Bass as one of the seats they'll win, and Greens are just above the quota state um, uh, seat wide. They're at one point eight percent. Um, Russell is leading there. Um, that is for Bass. Uh, Clark um, the, probably have a win there too. The shooters, are, the shooters are doing the best actually in the seat where they ran the most candidates, which is Lions, where they ran five candidates. Right. And five, five, by the way, again, not a, I know for some confusion, not enough. You've got to mark at least one to seven. So there will be preference flows definitely there. But Yeah, but comp- c- compare that to Bass where it was only one candidate. Um, that that's the I thing. Will, you, can, will, you can run one candidate, and you're not ungrouped, or you can, even if you're an. Uh, yes, as, as we discussed but about, literally maybe preference flow ago. here for shooters sh- 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 is definitely going to be more interesting. They are running more candidates than JLN. They're running JLN's running three. They're running five. Despite the pencils some preference flow there. However, the figures are misleading. So it's, yes, it is five point nine one percent of the vote there. Five point nine one, which is around thirteen hundred votes. Uh, at the current counted rate, which is only sitting at 27%, I think, um, if my figures are 
out of date. I mean, I'll just recheck those again. They might be out of date. Uh, yeah, they are. They are. Shooters down to one. Shooters are down to five point one four percent of the vote there, so they are dropping. Uh, they were doing well on early figures, but they've dropped down. Will, uh, Ray Williams is the only one with a chance there, 588 votes. But again, you're right, exhausting preferences. Uh, we'll point out that, yes, they have five candidates compared to JLN's three, but JLN's three are beating all of them handily, some of them by 500%. Uh, Andrew Jenner sitting at 1,200, and uh, Philip Big for shooters. And actually, no, Wayne True, uh, Turrell, for, I'm going to pronounce this massively, uh, for, for shooters is sitting at, five, at 301. So that's four times uh, for, for Andrew Janus. So definitely shooters out of the picture in just about every seat. Yes, some strong performances, but not doing very well compared to Jackie Lambie. You could compare it to the Libertarian Party, formerly Lib Dems, versus uh, One Nation, if you wanted to. All right, we'll uh, following that. Um, Maggie, we've got some... More information, what can you tell us? Uh, I can say that Liberals will not be able to form a majority. Uh, they have no pathway to 18 seats at the moment. So that means we might have some very grueling government negotiations. So that that that's 100% locks in. We are seeing a minority government tonight. We will not yes. have a majority. Um, there you go. We can <clears throat> let me let me sit up. We're actually doing something important now. Um, as you heard, the, the six news can now project there will be no majority government for either the Liberal Party or the Labor Party. The Liberals will win a plurality of seats, but will not get to a majority. There is no pathway to a Liberal majority in Tasmania right now. So we are going to see, as Maggie just said, there some long, long parliamentary negotiations, maybe, or it could be short and wrapped up. It won't be. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Liberal Party will not win a majority. Hung Parliament is what we are seeing in Tasmania. So uh, we, will, we, will, we, will have to, we will have to wait and see on that. But um, there you go. There you go. No majority for anyone. Um, Stuart, what do you make of that? I don't think you're muted on the call, but I cannot hear you. And I'm guessing... Can you hear me fun. now? It's on my end. Let's go there on. we go. It's on my end. Um, yeah, look, the problem is with hair and uh, hair clock systems is it takes a very, very long time to count. Um, but we love it anyway, just to be clear. But the problem there, with it, there is that Easter's th- it next weekend is Easter. So that's going to that's gonna screw with the vote counting. Yeah, this, this will take some time. We might be waiting more than a fortnight to get final figures. So yes, it's uh, going to be a hung parliament, but we might not know some of these sixth and seventh positions. Uh, again, the one that sticks out to me is, is Lions, where it could be Grant, it could be JLN, we don't know. Um, but then with the, both in with a the shot there. Uh, in fact, actually, actually um, John Tucker there is doing fairly well, uh, sitting at, sitting at 1,100 votes. That's only just behind the JLN candidates. So he's not out, of, not out of the picture there. John Tucker, um, of course, for those playing along at home, one of those former Liberals, the other being uh, Lara Alexander, although we project she had gone. So it'll be it'll be uh, it'll be probably of all the independents that are sitting in with a chance right now. It'll be uh, Christy Johnson and John Tucker, uh, probably the independents that are most likely to to play a significant role uh, as power brokers potentially. Uh, it's not clear whether or not they'll get in, but both have Green, Greens uh, and Lambie as well, right though, now. because we. I think I think it's fair to say we can put Greens in the Labor column right now, based on what they've said. Yeah, Lambie is a bit harder to read, and we're not entirely sure on her seat count yet. And I, I say her, I know it's she's not running it. Anyway, um, so really. If the Liberals lose a few more or don't really have any gains, if Labor gets a few gains, it's just about getting past that 18 mark. Um, and again, it's those going to be it's those independents who will be absolutely critical. You imagine David O'Byrne might lean towards Labor. And again, the upset is going to be in Lions. That's going to be where your where your upset is. John Tucker will probably retain his seat. Probably that's Maggie's job to call it, not mine. Um, so currently there's five seats, of course. There's two Liberal, two Labor, one Independent, uh, which is former Liberal. Uh, looking at the current figures I'm looking at right with me, looking at uh, in front of me right now, it's going to be a very different picture. Uh, Guy Barnett will, of course, retain his seat. No one's surprised by that. Uh, but Mark Shelton will likely lose his seat to Jane Howlett. 
although he'll probably get the third, he'll probably get the final uh, Liberal Party seat because they're sitting at around 3.05 for the quota right now. Uh, for for Labour, Rebecca White, easy win for her. Um, but for the remaining candidate, well, that'll probably be uh, Jen Butler, of course, who's only at, at 1,300, although she's uh, not far ahead of uh, Richard Goss, who's sitting at almost 1,200 votes. Uh, but the issue for Jen Butler there is that her figures are around the same as Andrew Jenner from Jackie Lambie Network, uh, are, are below Tabitha Badger from the Greens there. And when it comes to John Tucker, then she's not too far away. So we could potentially, depending on how things go, we will potentially have either a Liberal or a Labour MP lose their seat there, depending on how things play out. But either party is at risk in, in lines, even with the extra two seats. They will likely, the sixth or seventh seat will probably be between, between Liberal and Labour, and then the eighth candidate will be out of the picture. So Lions is definitely a key one to watch there. Independent retain their seat. JLN might gain a seat. Greens will gain a seat. Um, personal opinion. That's making sure of the call, it, not mine. Um, yeah, so it's definitely going to be a bit of a shake-up uh, in, in Lions. That, that kind of demonstrates the, the general picture we're seeing here. Labour not doing very well. Independents not doing very well, or, or at least the, um, the 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 incumbent independents, two of them not doing very well. Lara Alexander has already conceded. Uh, as about an hour ago, according to the ABC, she has conceded her her, her seat. Great guy. No surprise there. She she had no path to victory anyway, but that confirms it. Yes. The only that so you, we're, we're looking at um, two independents to retain their seats possibly. Craig Garland might gain a seat. He is currently outperforming all the JLN candidates. So he's really shot up. He's outperforming uh, the JLN candidates, although preferences will flow uh, between, the, between, the, between the three uh, JLN candidates, so they will ultimately outperform him probably because um, they're sitting at 0.88 on a quota, whereas he's sitting at 0.49, 6% versus, what's that, 11% uh, there as well. Liberal Party, really, really strong seat for him, sitting at 45%. Uh, on primaries, so they will keep their three. Jeremy Rockliffe, of course, sitting at around uh, 10,495 there. Uh, Roger Jench and, and Felix Ellis likely to retain their seats as well there. I'm pretty sure that's pretty pretty straightforward. So that's going to stay the same for, 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 the, for the three Liberal, two Labour. Uh, but an independent gain there. We've got JLN gains as well, potentially. Greens gains... Uh, so a, a shake up more than we were expecting in, in some regards with so many independents losing, but an independent gaining a seat and also wins for JLN and the Greens that will not be that Labour will not like. This will mean that if they are forced to negotiate with the Greens to form government, they will have less bargaining power because the Greens could potentially pick up one or two of their seats. Labour's not going to like that. JLN might pick up some extra seats, but their JLN is not likely to steal any existing seats but the Greens might take existing Labour seats. So that's not very good news for Labour. That pushes them down in the rankings again and means that the Greens have more bargaining power. Right, yeah, and and that would also mean Labour's got less chance to find a path to an independent. Maggie, you've got some more info for us. I know you've been waiting patiently in the wings there. Muted. We're at the point of a night where the seat count... Uh definitely rises at a very slow rate and unfortunately uh, I think we might have to uncall the Greens second seat in Clark so that's going to make it even slower. Currently in Clark it looks like uh, Labour might be able to take that seat off the Greens or maybe Christy Johnson. Uh, I, as I mentioned, Greens usually start to go backwards after about 25% counted. And oh, I'm getting right Brisbane now. flashbacks all over again. Um, for what it's worth, ABC says Helen stuff. Burnett is possible. Um, I just want to make this clear for everyone at the point. Yeah, we'll take it down to three, but they should gain in bass, we're thinking. Yes, I'm very sure about that. Okay. Take it down to three. It's three to four at this point. It's possible second seat in Clark. Helen Burnett, of course, the other candidate, but their incumbent MP there, um, pretty easily re-elected. Um, with the, I believe at the moment, second highest personal vote and the Greens 
um, making quota with about 1.69% party total in the seat of Clark there. Um, so is it really just going to be the 6th, 7th seat? It's an independent versus green race. Are we thinking, is that how it's shaping up? Uh, yeah, so currently we've got one seat not declared in Braddon, uh, where it's between the last Liberal and Craig Garland. Uh, in pass, the last seat is either between Jackie Lambie and, just going to recheck this one, I think, Labour. Uh, and actually, I can call one of the seats in Lions, the Greens will get a seat. So we're back to four for the Greens. We're back uh, to, okay. Forget yep. about everything we just said. They're back to four. Um, but yep. it's not the same. Uh, for, not that we were counting. Just a number. Uh, that seventh seat in Lions is between Labor and Jackie Lamby Network. Uh, in Franklin, the last two seats are between the Liberals, the Greens, and David O'Byrne, who's a former Labor member. And the last seat in Clark is going to be... The last two seats are between the Greens, Labor, and Christy Johnson, independent. It's probably important to note that the loss of green votes we've been seeing has uh, been a direct correlation with a pretty big rise in uh, Labour vote share right now at the moment. Uh, they've started to uh, enter contention in Lyons and Clark for a third seat. Right, okay, we'll keep following that there. Um, Stuart, what do you make of that? Greens obviously look like they're in a real fight in terms of whether they're going to get in a second seat in Clark, and that's where independence is going to be crucial, with, of course, Christy Johns and, the Su- and Suhigi, the main axe there. I just, I just want to add that uh, Anthony Green has just said that John Tucker might not get enough on, on uh, preferences to uh, to win that seat. So they, that's according to Anthony Green, Himself, the the man, the myth, and the legend, has said that uh, John. He's Tucker no Maggie might, Perry. Yeah, would... <laughs> uh, actually, just wanted to quickly say, I am very certain John Tucker will not be elected. Only three percent of the vote, not enough. I think that's fair. So these yeah. defectors who have caused this, John Tucker, Lara Alexander, both defeated in their respective seats. These former Liberal MPs. Who does that um, leave? Who's left then? Who's uh, left with the independents? Uh, Christy Johnson in Clark is a maybe, and David, David O'Byrne, in the former Labor MP. Uh, Christy Carlson Johnson, of course, was the only one who was actually elected as an independent last time. So, that, were, that, were that half the independents? Uh, I'm trying to get my figures up. From up. the current composition, yes. yes. But it'll double them from the last parliament. Although kind of underrated because again 25 to 35 now so, so be, it's both halved and doubled halved. the amount of independence the independence are halved the greens are doubled. basically the independence are halved and the greens are doubled so from from the current composition yes yes from the last election yeah yeah sort of which means that our <laughs> our suggestion that the independents might be power brokers is 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 less clear. Again, they probably still be, but there's less there's less independent bargaining power. So I mentioned, of course, before that Labor losing seats, Greens gazing, gaining seats means that Labor has less bargaining power in negotiations there. But the Liberals keeping those seats, whereas independents lose seats, means that the Liberals have more bargaining power. Uh, on, on the other hand, though, that the independents know that because there's there's fewer of them, they can also uh, seek high demands. So it could go either way. Either the, the Liberals will be able to win over because they've got uh, more figures. They'll be able to win over the independents. All the independents will make more demands from them because the independents know that all the more precious. And given that we are predicting a, a hung parliament at this point, a liberal minority... Uh, which will stay as it is right now. Those independents are going to become crucial, but the Greens' gains are bad news for the Liberals. Right. There we go. There we go. Um, as you said, Maggie, things are, uh, are slowing down. For what it's worth, um, the ABC's taken off one of their Liberal seats. They've put them at 12. We'll keep them at 13, unless I hear otherwise. Um, and that is our C count at the moment. 13 Liberal, 10 Labor, Four for the Greens, one Jackie Lambie Network. As it stands, the magic number to get a majority is 18 and no party will get a majority. The Liberals will win a plurality and there will be a hung parliament in Tasmania. It's just going on 
Just past uh, 9.35 in Tasmania, we appreciate all of you tuning in. Keep your comments coming in in the live chat right now. Let us know how you think this election will continue to play out. We'd love to hear your input in all of this. Um, CJED, thank you very much. I agree. Traffic Light Coalition could be back here. Um, but, of course, that's dependent on whether they want to agree with each other. Maybe. Labor and the Greens. We will have to wait and see on that. The Liberals, I would argue, I don't know if you agree with me, Stuart, but I reckon the Liberals probably have less options for a minority government if we assume those independents we're thinking are going to get elected are elected. Um, it seems like Labor's in probably a better position here. Lambie, of course, is, I guess, the great unknown, but with the stadium, it's a kind of a, it's, it's, it, the stadium's going to play into this Macquarie point. Egg, exactly. The, the independents who are losing their seats are the independent uh, liberals or liberal aligned at least. So that's definitely bad news. The, the the independents who are doing well aren't independent liberal, or at least by by our definitions. So that does mean that it will come down to the JLN. And unfortunately for the liberals, these independents losing their seats means that there's less of a chance of securing that majority government based on supply and confidence agreements or coalition. JLN, if, if JLN gets three seats, then we're looking at potentially a coalition government between JLN and Liberals. If, JLN's get, if JLN gets less than three seats, then we could see uh, it go the other way. And we, would, could, have the, we could be looking at a, a Greens... Labor independence, although of course, if the if Jalen refuses to support either side, well, then you've got a problem. Then you're going to have another election <laughs> because if if neither side can get a majority, uh, then you've got a problem. And of course, the, the 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 basis for having a premier or a prime minister is that they must be able to secure a majority of support in the lower house to pass spending and appropriation bills, taxation spending bills, which are the uh, which are the lifeblood. In fact, the the original pr uh, prime ministers had the keys to the treasury. Uh, they were the equivalent of 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 of, of high-ranking treasurers um, in in, in oh. modern terms. They were the mm. ones who had access to the money, uh, and who could who could spend it. So the the English uh, and British monarchy would a, would appoint whoever could pass those spending bills, so the government could spend its money. Yeah, which is, you know, Stuart, I'll just interrupt you. Sorry to sure interrupt. I'll just interrupt you. Um, we can make another call now. Maggie, what have you got for us? Uh, from the looks of it, I think we can say that there is a Jackie Lambie Network member elected in Lyons. I cannot say who it is because the vote is split very uh, roughly between each of the three candidates, but there is definitely a Jackie Lambie Network candidate elected, which brings the vote total to three Liberal, two Labour, one Green and one Jackie Lambie Network uh, candidate in the seat of Lyons. And that will, of course, get them to two seats statewide after also winning Braddon. Uh, big call there. Uh, again, the ABC has called nothing for the Lambie Network yet, but I'm sure we're right. Um, so, Maggie, again, even more pleasing for, for Jackie Lambie Network herself. I called her by a party name. For, for Lambie herself, for Senator Lambie, even more pleasing, I reckon. Yeah, I think she uh, could have a very strong position on the crossbench in determining who has the government. She might even be the sole person who decides who forms the government. Of course, her party members who are actually elected will decide that, but she's effectively running the party. She's not in state parliament, however. Whatever. Anyways, uh, it's looking like she has the possibility of a third seat in BATS, where party is at 8%, which is at contention with Labour, who's at about 6% for the last seat there. Uh, otherwise, Jack and Lambie Network cannot gain any other seats, so they've kept it free. Right, absolutely. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Two to three seems to be where they want it to be, and two to three seems to be what they'll get. Um, So that's good for them. Um, Stuart, again, what what do you think there? I think um, it 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 for 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 Jackie Lambie is now for Jackie Lambie herself. Um, this is this is solid for her. This can probably help with the Senate re-election campaign. Um, and realistically, in the event, and I don't think it'll necessarily happen. In the event we have a double disillusion 
next election, um, we're talking about the fact Lambie could retain both their Senate seats. Of course, they've got two now. Yeah, look, um, I said just before that the JL, that the Liberals need the JLN to get at least three seats. Uh, they've just called two, and we're potentially looking at getting one in Bass still. So that gives us Bass, Lyons, and Brandon. Uh, I believe, unless I'm getting the fit, there goes um, electorate's wrong. So that gives them the three that they need. And the success of having these three means that, yes, they will now have the numbers to support potentially two senators uh, at, a, at, a, at a federal level. It does show a, a renewed confidence in the JLN that they hadn't seen before. Being able to w- run at a local level and win uh, in... In, in in state level seats is definitely big for, for JLN and it does show them that they are now a viable force. They not, At this point, they're not going to be too far behind the Greens. And this is only their first time running. So next time they have an election, which at this point could be whenever, who knows at this point, given this next month held so early. Yep. We, we, three elections in one year. Who, who you know, <laughs> let's go for it. Just every time you can't agree on something, just hold another election. It's fine. It's more, it's more, it's good for us. Uh, more election coverage. Yeah, that, that's um, all we get. We, need ha- we have to have more Tassie state elections because we don't get this lower house by elections. Although, although they have their legislative council elections in May, but uh, I digress. So yeah, but that does reinforce my point that you know they three seats, potentially three JLN seats, potentially four green seats, maybe five green seats, but JLN gaining three in their first run, it's like the it's like the um, legalized cannabis, which is. Uh, running in in New South Wales and and in, and in Queensland, you know they didn't win any seats in Queensland at least. Um, at a federal level, I'm talking about not the not the state level. That's not going to happen until later this year. But they they did have a strong performance, and that shows them that yes, they can run in the future. Uh, so based on this, that Jackie Lambie knows, okay, potentially we can run candidates at, a, at, at run more and more candidates at a local level. And they know which communities to focus on from these figures. So we could see more and more jail. Time lines. to endorse for local council, Lambie. I know you want to. Come on, do it. It'll be fun. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I, look, it, it is interesting. Again, just following these figures, and um, I'm just I'm just trying to frantically update them here, um, but. Clark is definitely, despite having 52% counted already, it is a bit slow at the moment, um, well over, about 62% counted in lines, which is nice and helpful. Um, but uh, Clark, I mean, really, Maggie, with these wild swings in terms of who's leading there, it's just impossible to make a call, apart from one green at least. Yeah, in uh, these areas a lot of chaos here, especially uh, Tasmania election with Hay Clark, as we've talked about, uh, multi-member electorates being that often. A lot of seats can't be decided until very, very late on. Mm. But we love it anyway. Um, maybe we should just keep this coverage going till every seat's called by the TEC. Um, no. God, no, I couldn't put just myself Just a few months. Oh, a few months. Oh, they're still doing coalition negotiations in... Um, the Netherlands, aren't they? You know, to give you Oh, energy. yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's been so. about six months. <laughs> Good. Wilders, what a name. Um, anyway, anyway. Um, um, I want to get back to Bass again, if we could, Leo. Please I'm do. Really, I'm really worried for Simon Wood there. Um, <laughs> his vote count at 930. Rob Fares at 2800. I don't see Simon keeping his seat. And that is very bad news. It's Bass and Simon Wood is out. To be fair, so, uh, I mean, in Bass, uh, they've got three seats for the Liberals. Uh, he's in third right now. He's only just ahead of Julie Sladden, who's very infamously known. Uh, she's been a very controversial Liberal candidate who might actually get elected to state parliament, maybe defect from the Liberals even. Uh, she's been very well known for being very conservative uh, on a lot of issues and there's been a few campaign flyers uh, calling for liberals to deselect her which obviously hasn't happened 
So are we saying Erica Betts controversial or like what's the scale here? No. Um, Julie Sladen has been a lot of calls to deselect her, so that's why I consider her a bit controversial. But even then you've got uh, Chris Gattenby and, and Sarah Quayle, 768, 786. So again, you know, Simon Wood is not too far ahead of his counterparts. And looking at, yeah, looking at the quota, there it is, 2.83. But even if Simon Wood keeps his seat, the fact remains that he's been over, he's effectively lost his... He'll, he might get his seat, but it'll be, it'll be sixth or seventh. Whereas Rob Fairs will get like third or fourth. Um, so it does still. <laughs> Simon Wood is in a bad spot for cabinet points at picking at this point because he's not going to do very well. <laughs> a, new, a new defector for all we know. No. Nah. <laughs> um, but, but. Oh, please. Remains, so... Unless they ban him. Remember, the Liberals are trying to ban him. I don't think it'll pass. Um, but they do talk about trying to ban defections. Um, but uh, yeah. And of course, he's gone from councillor to to um, lower house. So potentially, uh, definitely, definitely promotion there. But he's it's now looking like he is at risk. Um, I, I believe, wasn't he? Didn't he replace the um, Peter Gutwein? I no, think I, so. Right. So potentially, he got the premier's replacement. Is at risk, uh, which definitely isn't good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, ha- again, that. again, that exit poll from seven, which we mentioned at the very start of this broadcast, was showing a collapse in bass. Um, again, they called it the Gutwin effect, and that uh, that seems to to be what it is. I just want, I just want to check those figures, seeing what the, what the swing is like from uh, last time, from twenty twenty one, which I'm an expert on apparently. Uh, looking at the figures from last time of first preferences, sixty percent down to thirty five percent. So that's getting close to halved. That's not good. Mm. Or it's it's it. Or talk about okay, more five eighths. Um, but that's still that's still like that's more than a third gone. That is not good news for the Liberal Party. JLN is running about an eight percent there. Uh, they were looking higher originally. The the Greens are sitting at thirteen percent. So the Greens will get one. Uh, probably we should be probably be Cecil Cecily Rosal again another candidate who has a really high score compared to everyone else. Uh, what is it? It's a sports game, a very high percent, uh, very high uh, tally compared to everyone else. Uh, JLN probably going to get a seat there as well. The fact remains that <laughs> there we go. Shooters, Michael Friedrich is outperforming Simon Wood. Even if, even if S- Simon Wood keeps his seat. On primaries, he's been outperformed by shooters. That's not looking very good for him. There we go. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, <laughs> Hang on, here's one for you. Um, do you know who who Greg uh, Quinn is? Because I, off the top of my head, I do not. Ah, uh, because he's uh, he's out, he's ungrouped. Right. He's okay. About, seems about to hit pretty 1, not important then. He's about to hit one thousand votes. Hmm. Well, must be somebody. Um, Maggie, do you have anything for us? Just quickly, something you wanted to get in there. Uh, about second green seat in Clark. Uh, it's looking pretty likely for them, but I wouldn't call it yet. So that could get looking... that would get him up to five, given we've just called another. Yeah. So. They're looking at upwards of six, but they're probably going to end up on about five. Uh, it really depends whether they can win that second seat in Franklin and that second seat in Clark, where right. and, and we vote has yeah. started to be common. Yeah, we will, we will keep them at four for now, um, but uh, we will have to wait and see there. So four for now um, cannot make a, uh, a, a another call from there yet. Um, but there you see the statewide figures. I'll read them out now. You've got... Uh, Almost 13% against the Liberals, slightly up for Labor, up about two for the Greens, 6.7, of course, New Lambie, uh, the Independents, 2.9, and anyone else, that Shooters, Fishers, Local Network, and the AJP, up 0.3.
Uh, approaching the top of the hour, so we'll take a break in a couple minutes. But just as we continue um, the latest here, let us know your thoughts in the comments section as well. We would, of course, uh, love to hear uh, your thoughts on all of this. Uh, give us, use the hashtag 6NewsAU for your thoughts on uh, who you think will win. Well, unless you're disagreeing with our wonderful call, which is it will be a hung parliament and there will have no uh, party with a majority. Um, and so that could mean anything, really. It depends on who these extra crossbenchers are and how far ahead um, or how close to 18, because they won't get to 18, but how close to 18 um, the Liberals and Labor could get. Um, you reckon, Stuart? I, I'm not trying to disagree with Maggie because I do agree with her, but how, how close do you reckon Labor's going to get here to where the Liberals are? Because Liberals will not win a majority. They'll have a plurality. But where do we think Labor's going to kind of end up here, roughly? Well, I'm looking at potentially at a Liberal... <coughs> liberals, maybe I'm looking at maybe 16 is their top for them. Uh, so they need 18, so it's JLN, so that's a majority. Um, that's going to be easier than working with the independents. And it's definitely good news for JLN. Um, unless, it's gonna, unless it will harm them federally. That's a question there, whether it will harm them federally. But in the short term, at least, um, it'll, be, it's, it'll be good for them... I don't see Labor getting more than twelve. How many? How many? How many are predicting right now? Well, they got thirteen Ten. now, but oh, they could go Labor. up. Oh, Libs at ten. I don't see them getting more than twelve or thirteen. Probably not more than twelve. Um, and that's that the green side. Sixteen. Right? Sorry, you said Libs. I presume you mean Labor. No, I, I said Labor. Labor. Libs. I'm Sweet saying settled. Libs will be six. Libs will be liberals will be sixteen. Labor won't be more than thirteen. Probably twelve. Yeah, uh, Mag, um, Maggie, your thoughts on uh, on on who's going to I guess end up closest? Because again, with Labor obviously having the help of the Greens here, you know you'd think Liberals need to come in close, and I guess they they they've got to get really close to this eighteen mark, even if it doesn't seem like they're going to actually get it. Yeah, the closer they get, the more likely they form government, obviously, but it also matters how many seats uh, Labor gets. Currently, they've got 10 seats. They could, their highest uh, result they could get is 13, but it's pretty unlikely they'd have to win a third seat in Bass, in Lyons, and in Clark, which uh, they're currently not leading in any of those. So 10 or 11 seems pretty likely. Right. <laughs> right. Um, sorry. Um, um, something else has got to be happening. How many minutes do we have to play out here? Um, yeah, there you see again those figures there. Um, for the Liberals, Stuart, I mean, I guess this goes to show how good their vote has been in 14, 18, 21, that they've got a 12% swing against them, and there's still a pretty good chance of uh, of everything here. And a lot of that speaking against them is coming from Bass as well, um, where Jalen's performing very well. So you've got to keep that in mind, that the swing against them is coming from Bass mostly, which is like, what did, we call, what did I say it was? Like, close to half? Um, so that's probably where a lot of the swing against them is coming from. I'm just going to run the figures. I wanna, I'll just run through the margins with you, or the, the swings for you, for for all of the uh, current electorates, the figures we have right now at almost 10 p.m., uh, Tasmanian time. I just want to run through all first preferences we have uh, this time compared to last time. Uh, looking at, we'll start with Franklin. Um, I was going to say we'll start. Uh, we're going to do um, <laughs> it, it by by name, but now that's screwed. Uh, let's not do that. Looking at first preferences for Franklin to start with. Uh, for the for the, I'm just focusing on the Liberals here. The Liberals last time were at 42.26%. Uh, they're currently sitting at 32.9%. That is the seat where Erica Betts is running, and he's got the highest. Uh, he's sitting at 3,879, so he's basically guaranteed to win that seat um, on, on his own without worrying about preferences. Uh, then we go to Lyons as our next one. Lyons was sitting at... Uh, that was sitting at 51.19% last time. It's now 37.97%. Uh, if we move to Bass, which I've already covered, and let's do Braddon. And it's it's probably not looking the same in, in, in Braddon for them. Uh, last time around, they were sitting 
and that's hitting 45.31%, so that's only a swing against them of 12. And the final, the final so, uh, and, and finally looking at the Clark is is the last one, and I think that's where a lot of the um, advantage for them is coming, because Clark's swing is only 4%, 31.83% to 27.64%, so they're falling in Bass, which was a previously safe for them, they're not falling switching Clark, and Clark is one where they're guaranteed two, and Clark, again, is they're competing against the Greens and Lee were there in a three-horse race. All right. Uh, just, I just realised um, we are about to head to the break now, but stay with us here on 6 News. We'll have more coverage of the Tasmanian State election as results continue to come in. You're watching 6 News. Roman McKinnon's just joined us as well. Stay with us. You're watching Tasmania Decides, Election 2024. It's an interview you do not want to miss. And most people, even Labor voters, agree that things have got a hell of a lot worse. And the second part of that is who's got the right priorities for Queensland's future. Coming up just months away from the state election, we speak with the state opposition leader, David Chris Foley, about his plans for the LNP. I want Queenslanders to vote for change. And in order to do that, they have to vote for the LNP. And we ask the questions you want answered. Uh, do, you, do you support the Gabba coming down or upgrades to it? Uh, your approval rating is on par with Stephen Miles. Compared to Anastasia Palaszczuk, why do you think that is? Uncensored. Streaming now on the 6 News YouTube channel and our website, 6newsau.com. From the moment you get up, 6 News has you covered. We'll keep you informed with what's happened overnight, both here at home and overseas, and let you know what to expect right throughout the day. Extraordinary scenes overnight. It's going to be a big day. The news starts here every morning on 6 News. On 6 News, we do politics differently. Welcome to Uncensored. Thanks for having me on your wonderful program. Are you confident that you can de defeat David Chris Foley? From long-form unedited interviews to taking a deep dive into Australian law and government. Sure. Mate, I, I'm so not going to be that's when you're a candidate. The respect for Indigenous Australians, why ask them? Well, it's certainly heating up outside here in Brisbane and it will be heating up inside Parliament right now. Six News understands talks about removing Palaszczuk have been ongoing. The Health Australia Party has warned they may shut down. Do you stand by that claim you've never lied in public office? Well, that's why you will always see the facts first on Six News. On 6 News, this is Tasmania Decides with Leonardo Puglisi and the 6 News team across Australia. And you are watching 6 News Live as our coverage of the Tasmanian state election continues right here all night. I'm Leo Puglisi with us, of course, Roman McKinnon, political editor, Maggie Perry, election reporter, and Stuart Jeffrey, GovCheck editor. Uh, the Tasmanian Premier, Jeremy Rockliffe, is speaking now. We're going to cut to that in just a moment. But, of course, the Liberal Party is leading. We project they'll win a plurality of seats, but not a majority. No party will win a majority in their Tasmanian House of Assembly, and there will be a hung parliament. Um, Jeremy Rockliffe, of course... Um, has been uh, has, has been premier since the resignation of Peter Gutwin. Uh, this obviously is a big test for him. He may not be premier in a few days or a couple of weeks, depending on how long these negotiations take. But uh, yeah, we are set to hear from him now. We'll just see if we can cut to that. Um, but he is speaking at the moment. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. Just very quickly, Stuart. Um, do you think he'll stay on as as Liberal leader if he doesn't end up? 
getting to form government. He's only been in for obviously um, less than a full term, and his popularity against Rebecca White wasn't that poor, just very quickly. And no sound. I'm saying he comes. I'm saying he comes in probably. He probably stays in. I'd say. I'd say he probably. He's the best performing uh, liberal candidate with that, that's in there. Thirteen thousand votes. Uh, and that's that's pretty decent. That's, that's the highest performing candidate of all the candidates. Ungrouped independent party. No matter which way you split it, he's the most popular candidate that's running. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we're able to get to uh, Jeremy Rockley for now, the Tasmanian Premier. He's speaking live. Let's have a watch. But as I said before, but as I've said at the beginning of this campaign, from day one, we will now work with the parliament that Tasmanians voted for today. And I will seek a new government to form a new government to give Tasmanians the, the certainty and the stability that they deserve and to deliver our 2030 strong plan for Tasmania's future. <laughs> Finally, uh, can I say uh, to all here tonight, in fact, uh, every uh, Tasmanian, it is incumbent upon the new parliament to work together, to put aside our differences, to ensure that we work day in, day out for Tasmanians right across this beautiful state. This is the best place, not only in Australia but indeed around the world, to live, uh, to work and to raise a family. And I couldn't be prouder of Tasmania and Tasmanians. And my message is very clear. I love this place. I was born here. I'll always live right here in Tasmania. And I thank each and every Tasmanian for standing up to be counted today. And I look forward to the next four years. And I'm only going to get started. I'm only getting started right now, ladies and gentlemen. I love this job. Thank you all. I very much appreciate your time tonight. And thank you, each and every Tasmanian. Thank you very much. saying that uh, he sees... And, uh, and you are still with us here on Six News. You just heard from Jeremy Rockliffe there. He's saying that uh, they will work with the parliament. Um, obviously, the Liberals not getting a majority from what we are uh, hearing there, but it didn't exactly sound like a concession speech um, by any measure, Stuart. Um, what do you think are the most likely paths? We've run through them before, but for a Liberal majority here in terms of, let's say, Lambie gets three seats and there's a couple independents as well. Can I just say that I love that we were running a uh, Dunstan ALP game the whole time we had the speech from Rockliffe. That was it's more um, important. <laughs> it's it's yeah. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> you're not wrong. Oh, sorry, Tasmania. I'm not sorry. Um, yeah, look for 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 the the Liberals here. I I think he's he's not fully confident, which I guess makes sense again. We're looking at Jalen, which we'll get to in a second from from Maggie there. Um, but looking at the things we have right now, it is going to be a busy a busy while. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to be the next fortnight's going to be crazy. Um, that's what I'm trying to say. Jalen definitely uh, he's going to work with them. He he he's promised basically he's promised to stay on. He said the next four years. So presumably that means he's not going to step down. That would require. Um, a motion of, of no confidence between his uh, b between the other Liberal MPs, and given these figures, given his popularity again, as I've mentioned, he's thirteen thousand uh, votes there for him already, probably coming in the highest. I'm just going to check whether or not she's whether or not he's actually beating Rebecca White, because uh, that would be interesting to see there. But I'm pretty sure he has a higher uh, a f higher vote than 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 White does. Um, I'm just going to check that now because I, I I think that given that 
yes, we've had his popularity figures, which aren't the best for him. But I think the figures we have from the from at least from his electorate. Um, well, yeah, he, he, was uh, up is, on, he was up on white in most of the polls I saw. Yeah, but not, not as much as I think he'd like to be. Um, record white, there we go, 11,000 uh, votes. So he's definitely got the popularity within his own electorate. That's higher. Um, so he's got that going for him. And I, I don't see him stepping down. Given this, he, it's still going to be a likely liberal, min- uh, liberal minority government, but a government nonetheless. I don't see him stepping down. He's only been in office for what, a couple of years. Um, well, of course, Dom Perrottet stepped down as Liberal leader, though, of course, mind you, he didn't he didn't mention minority. He he didn't he didn't get a result. Um, but uh, still, yeah, he he he's got his name out there. He's got his own personal vote in his electorate, um, and certainly he's not an unpopular premier. As of right now, he's the only Liberal leader to bring his party to an election and come out looking good. <laughs> Tough call for the Liberals, but uh, yeah, this of course is their last last hope. Uh, Maggie, what did you make of that? He he seems confident that they'll be able to win a majority, or sorry, to to form government. They're not going to win a majority, but it seems confident they'll be able to get back. It's definitely uh, a bit interesting that he's so confident about that. Uh, I mean, I don't think I would put it aside that Lamy maybe tries to work with Labor, or maybe a new election happens as happens with a lot of these hung parliaments, especially in Europe. We don't really have much experience with this type of parliament. Anyways, it is, uh, it might indicate that he has done some sort of maybe deal with Jackie Lampy Network behind closed doors, although I definitely wouldn't be certain about that. But it is interesting that he's so confident. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I want to bring in Roman McKinnon now as well, political editor. Roman, um, it obviously is important that we bring in, of course, how, how significant this is nationwide. This could be the last Liberal government gone. Um, what kind of implications would that have for the Liberal Party, at least in the short term, noting, of course, they have more than a good shot in Queensland in a few months? Yeah, absolutely crucial uh, for the Liberal Party to um, not lose, it, it wouldn't be a win, but to not lose in Tasmania. And judging by the polls so far, they have done that. Uh, they have been successful in not losing. I just wanted to read out uh, some of what uh, Tasmanian Premier Jeremy Rockcliffe had had to say. He said, quote, it's a day of milestones. He, he also said, quote, I've represented Braddon for 22 years and I've been proud to do so. I wouldn't be here without the Braddon electorate and I look forward to representing them for at least another four years as well. He also said that, quote, Tasmanians have delivered a, a clear message he also said quote i'm only getting started so judging by it it looks like a hung parliament well we know it will be a hung parliament but really interesting to see how confident um jeremy rockcliffe was in his uh speech just moments ago yeah and uh and you wonder where they're going to go from here um obviously you know labor labor's nationwide in a great position here um but Rebecca White, you know, for her, this is the third time she's she's run as leader at the election. This is the would be the first time she'd won if she wins, and that's a big if, right? Mm. Um, and so, you know, the Liberal Party, even if it's only short term, and you, you can pretty much say it would be embarrassment to have no governments nationwide for their biggest government, biggest control to be Brisbane City Council would be pretty embarrassing for them in the short term. Um, and so I guess that that shows just how important this is. Maybe not necessarily for Rockcliffe himself, but for those, the, the, the party believers, right, the true party believers, you'd imagine they're the ones who, who have been, I guess, a bit nervous going into this, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, as you said, embarrassing. It'd be really embarrassing uh, if Peter Dutton was looking at this and the Liberals did lose tonight. Um, I've, he'd be thinking, oh no, next year the federal election. It only felt like yesterday, the 2022 federal election. Mm. Um, but Peter Dutton would not be very happy if uh, the Liberals lo- lost uh, tonight. But I think he would be okay 
with this result. Obviously, a Liberal majority would be the best result for his party nationwide, but um, it's not the worst thing that could happen, given that uh, the worst thing would be that every single state and territory, or every single state would be Labour. So, especially coming into October as well, what happens there in Queensland but definitely Peter Dunn wouldn't be too mad about this result tonight. Absolutely. We'll have to wait and see, of course, for those minority negotiations. Uh, Maggie, you've got some more seats to call for us. Uh, yes, I have two seats that I am very sure about. Firstly, uh, in Braddon, I believe that the Liberals have gained a fourth seat. Craig Garland will not be re-elected. He's only got, sorry, elected. Uh, he's only got 5% of a vote. Uh, and any would-be preferences that might come from Lambie or the shooters simply won't uh, occur because Lambie Network are just about on a quota. Uh, I also have the seat of Bass, where Jackie Lambie Network will win the seat. So that brings them up to three and brings the Liberals up to 14. Right, there we go. Um, you see that on screen now there. 18, of course, I remind you, is the magic number. Parliament expanded from 25 to 35. So, uh, yeah, we will we will have to wait and see, you know, what, what kind of happens there. Um, we'll keep this coverage going, by the way, until we hear from uh, Rebecca White, obviously. Um, that will be soon, we think and hope, especially now that Jeremy Rockliffe has spoken. I'm sure our team behind the scenes will be keeping an eye out um, for that, Stuart. Uh, again, though, just on what I was talking to uh, to Roman about, maybe not for Rockliffe himself, but those party loyals, the, the the party loyalists, they are the ones who are really wanting and hoping that they can just save themselves the embarrassment of the next few months being without any Liberal control outside of Brisbane City Council. Yeah, look, again, I, I, I stand by my claim that he's going to stay in. He's going to stay in. There's there's no chance that he goes. Again, he's the only... Are we counting? Brisbane Council is, you know, it's Brisbane Council. As a, as a Queenslander, um, and I, I still don't... Brisbane Council is like in between a local council and a state government. It's, it's a weird hybrid. Um, but at least at a state level... It's got less power than a territory, so I wouldn't canning it there. I would bother canning it there anyway. But definitely, again, I, I'm I'm not so sure about Northern Territory later this year. But ACT that will go towards uh, that Liberals won't win that obviously. So this is definitely the the, uh, the first win in a while for the Liberal Party, and they're going to cherish this if they can get Northern Territory later this year. And if they even flip Queens, then they got they got the hat trick, and that puts the Liberal Party back. Uh, on the map in, in, in Australia. And so keeping Tasmania blue is going to be a highlight for them. And I don't, th I, I would give his, his government, Rockliffe's government at least two years before they try and challenge that, given that this is a, a, a landmark thing for the Liberal government, for the Liberal Party being able to retain a government when every single other state has gone, and territory has gone red. I think yeah. this is a big thing for the Liberals. All right, as we continue to uh, wait for um, Rebecca White, the Tasmanian opposition leader, let's have a he listen to a bit more of what uh, Jeremy Rockliffe had to say, the Tasmanian Premier. Wow. What a day. A day of milestones. And on that note, uh, happy birthday to my beautiful mum, Jerry. Well done. <laughs> birthday, and today also looks like a fourth consecutive win for the Liberal Party. And firstly, of course, uh, I would not be standing here uh, today if it wasn't for uh, my wonderful electorate of Braddon, the beautiful North West Coast, King Island and West Coast. Thank you, my Braddon. I've represented Braddon for 22 years and been proud to do so. I wouldn't be here without uh, the Braddon electorate and I look forward to representing them for at least another four years as well. And can I thank uh, my family, 
my beautiful family, uh, Sandy, Ruby, Lucy, and Holly behind me here today. Thank you for your love and support, everyone. And to all my parliamentary colleagues, uh, both old and new in terms of current and new, I should say, shouldn't I? Current and new. Thank you for uh, your support. Uh, thank you to the Deputy Premier Michael Ferguson, a very loyal deputy. Thank you, Michael, for your support over the course of the last few years. We're a great team and I appreciate each and every one of my parliamentary colleagues and indeed fantastic candidates. We truly have had uh, the team of the decade. I could not be prouder of the 34 people that stood uh, beside and along with me as we travelled our electorates uh, right across this beautiful state of Tasmania, listening, uh, learning and appreciating uh, Tasmanians and their concerns and also their aspirations as well. And also I want to thank, of course, every single uh, candidate that stood for election over the course of the last number of weeks. It's a tough gig and every candidate, irrespective of uh, colour, indeed political parties or indeed independents, you have my absolute admiration for your courage uh, to stand up and be counted and to represent your community and make such a positive difference to the state of Tasmania. Thank you very much to everyone that stood the election. And can also thank, of course, uh, my incredible campaign team. Uh, they worked day in, day out, early mornings and late nights as well. Thank you to the campaign team. There are so many uh, to mention. I would like to uh, pay particular tribute to our State Director of the Liberal Party, Mr Peter Coulson, and indeed our State President, Michael McKenna. Thank you, Michael. Fantastic effort by the both of you. And there is still clearly uh, much counting uh, to do and to go as we move forward over the course of the next uh, week or more. But two things are very clear uh, tonight. First, an historic fourth consecutive win for the Liberal Party of Tasmania. This has never happened before in the great state of Tasmania. Congratulations, team. And let's be clear, the Liberal team has clearly gained the most votes this election and the most seats by a large margin. So well done and thank you. And secondly, Tasmanians have delivered a very clear message and I want to assure each and every Tasmanian that we've heard it and I thank you for it. But Tasmanians have not voted for a change of government. Make no mistake, this has been a very poor result for the Labor Party of Tasmania. It looks like their lowest vote, primary vote ever. Labor hasn't got enough seats to form a cabinet, let alone a government. But as I said before, but as I've said at the beginning of this campaign, from day one, we will now work with the parliament that Tasmanians voted for today. And I will seek a new government to form a new government to give Tasmanians the, the certainty and the stability that they deserve and to deliver our 2030 strong plan for Tasmania's future. And you just heard there uh, from the Tasmanian Premier, Jeremy Rockliffe, kind of declaring victory there, but obviously uh, he will not win a majority. No party will win a majority. Labor, uh, excuse me, the Liberals should get a plural plurality and we're expecting to hear from the Tasmanian Labor leader, Rebecca White, shortly. Um, Stuart, what do you think we're going to be hearing from White here? Obviously, she's not won a majority by any sense, um, 
But she seemed to be in a pretty decent position to form a, uh, a minority. Muted. No, no, it's not the mic. You actually muted this time. I love this. <laughs> so two separate go. mute buttons. Um, and I keep getting which one is which. Uh, I've got manual and I've got this one. Okay. Um, yeah, look, I wouldn't expect um, her to concede at this point. It's it's too early for her to concede. Uh, I, I would expect something along the lines of, you know, we've, 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 we've gone this far. We can still win. Yeah, yeah I, w- I, w- I wouldn't say that she'll concede at this point. It's it's too early to tell, and if she can see to this point, and then ends up forming government with the Greens and Independents, it's going to look very badly for her. So I don't expect they can see just yet. Yeah, no one, no one's going to con- concede here, um, but uh, uh, you know, never, nevertheless, um, it 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 just it. It's too close. Maggie, um, what do you think we're going to hear from Rebecca White in terms of uh, the language she's going to use? Because obviously the party's had a slight swing against and the Liberals have had a swing away, and I imagine that's where she'll really focus. Uh, I think it'll probably be largely the same as uh, Rockless speech talked about going into government. Uh, right now, it's looking like if she does into government, she'll have to work with the Greens and Labour Democrats. Right. Um, we should be hearing from Rebecca White in just a moment. Uh, you're seeing there Thank on you. screen now. Um, she's addressing, of course, Labor supporters. Let's listen in. On the lands we stand tonight, I want to recognise the Palawa people of Lutruwita and pay my respect to Elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge any Aboriginal people who are in the room with us this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot that's unclear about tonight, but it is clear that Tasmanians have voted to reject the Liberals. It's going to be a long night and likely a long few weeks until we know the exact makeup of the next parliament. Thank you to the people of Tasmania who have chosen to give their support to Labor candidates this election. I'm proud to see so many Labor candidates across the state have been supported by their communities to be elected to represent them, and on their behalf I say thank you. I'm really proud of the campaign that Labor ran. I'm really proud of our candidates, I'm really proud of our volunteers, and I'm really proud of the plan that we laid out for the Tasmanian community this election a plan that is grounded in putting Tasmanians first. There are still votes to be counted, but what is clear is the Liberal Party will not be getting a majority. (laughs) Tasmanians. Tasmanians have humbled a Premier who called an early election expecting to be returned in majority. Tasmanians have clearly voted for change. And when the Liberals called this early election, the second in three years, they called it, not because they wanted to address the cost of living, not because they wanted to start turning around our health system, not because they wanted to give young people hope that they might one day own their own home, but because they couldn't even work with people from their own party. Which means, which means that dealing with a crossbench the size of Tasmanian community looks to have returned in this election will be a very difficult task for them to manage with respect. Because respect requires an honest appreciation that the voters cannot be sent back to do it again, and that each member of the crossbench represents a constituency that has to be listened to. Humble people don't speak of a coalition of chaos whenever they don't get their own way, or claim a victory when the results aren't clear. They pick up the phone. They pick up the phone and they talk to people. Strong but humble leaders accept the responsibility of making the parliament that the Tasmanian people have chosen work for all 
of our communities and for all of our regions. The final makeup of this parliament will not be known for some time, but it is clear that Jeremy Rockcliffe will not be in a position to do so without the support of at least four members of the crossbench. Whether he can ultimately remain as Premier will be up to the members who are ultimately elected. I want to recognise that tonight will be a difficult one for him, having called an early election demanding stability and instead the Liberal Party have seen a massive drop in their primary vote. After 22 years in the Parliament and 10 as the Deputy Premier and as the Premier, Jeremy has given an enormous amount to this state and I want to acknowledge that tonight and also uh, thank him and his family for their contribution because there would have been a lot of sacrifices given over those years. <laughs> However, this election has been decisive in its message that there needs to be change. I'm proud of the fact that Labor has laid out a plan to take urgent action on the cost of living, to ensure that Tasmanians pay a Tasmanian price for Tasmanian power, to build more affordable childcare and provide free school lunches. We've laid out a plan to build more houses for people who need them, to make life easier for renters and to ensure the dream of home ownership is put back within the reach of Tasmanians who've lost hope. We've set out a plan to start repairing our health system, to train more nurses, more doctors, more paramedics, and to provide them with the infrastructure and support that they need to care for Tasmanians. And I acknowledge that on tonight's results, Labor will need the support of the parliament to implement these plans. And I've said that we won't be entering into any coalitions and there will only be Labor ministers in a government that I lead. And these things and our plans are not up for, renego are not up for negotiation. But whether we get the chance to implement our agenda will depend on how things play out over the next few weeks. But tonight it is clear that the Tasmanian community has rejected the past and wants change. It is over conflict for conflict's sake. This election outcome requires us to respect those who differ in their political colour and Tasmanians have told us loudly through this result that they want a government and a parliament that works for them. Tonight I would also like to convey my deep thanks to every single person who supported me personally and the Labor Party as we've campaigned throughout this election. Firstly, I want to thank my family and my friends for their unwavering support. Thank you so much for always standing beside me and holding me up at times when it's been necessary. Thank you to my deputy, uh, Anita Dow, who's been a rock. Anita is a marvellous, hard-working person who has put her heart and soul into this campaign and I'm incredibly proud to call her a friend. Thank you to my team and in particular to my Chief of Staff, Marcus Atkinson. Thank you for your hard work and your dedication, which has been such a strength to me and all of us as you've led from the front. To the Acting State Secretary, Jared Moore, and to the former State Secretary, Stuart Benson. Thank you. Thank you for your commitment to our movement, for the many, many, many hours that you put in and the effort you gave to make sure that our campaign was as strong as it was. It is a privilege to do this job with some of the best and most genuine people I have ever worked with. To our candidates, and I can see some of your faces in the room tonight, whether you've been successful tonight and whether it's still to be decided or whether you haven't quite made it. I want to thank you for putting yourself forward. Our democracy depends on people like you. And by putting your hand up, you've done a genuine act of public service and you've done our party proud. I want to thank the hundreds of Labor volunteers who've worked so hard across the state, talking to people, door knocking, letterboxing. You are a symptomatic of how our movement works at a grassroots level to grow support, and I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Throughout the campaign, we've elevated the stories of Tasmanians who are demanding a better future. We stood in their lounge rooms, we stood in their businesses, we sat around their kitchen tables. We helped share the story of Tasmania as it is and as it could be. And we asked for their support to help change the government so that we could deliver a better future for our state. Can I finish by saying just one last thing? Tonight's result demonstrates that there's been a significant shift in the way politics operates in Tasmania. 
and we can expect to see this happen again and again. It is very likely that Tasmania will continue to elect minority governments, particularly with a 35-seat parliament. It is, also clear, it is also clear that people voted for change election. We'll wait to see how the dust settles and for the final results to be determined. And Labor will be ready to work with the parliament to implement our agenda and our plan for a better future for Tasmania if that is the will of the people. Thank you. You're watching Tasmania Decides, Election 2024. Opposition leader Rebecca White not declaring victory, but definitely feeling confident, talking about working with the crossbench. And uh, look, clearly, clearly a, um, a decent night for Labor at the very minimum. I know there were some who were not too happy about it, um, but there's a path for them to form government here. Um, also interesting, she said there, and I'll get your take on it, Stuart, Tasmanians have humbled Jeremy Rockliffe. What, what, what did you make of of that because she did speak there i think was important and and jeremy rockliffe did too but it was about working with the crossbench okay more important than that um she said they need four more seats that uh, they need to work with four crossbenchers now the abc has called 12 we've called 14 they need four more i think she's watching our coverage because the abc has called 12. yeah we've called well, 14. let's say they are let, let, let's say for the sake of it. But no, that's, that, that's out of the way. Um, yes, they have humbled the Liberal Party, but they've also humbled Labor. She's, both of them have made this... <laughs> neither party recognises that they've you know, ultimately lost this, um, which isn't surprising, but it's... Yeah. Um, yes, yes, the, the, the Liberal government hasn't been elected, uh, re-elected as a majority, but at the same time, Labor... Probably isn't even even isn't probably isn't even in the in the, in the contest for it. They've suffered more than than the Liberals had in terms of you know, the Liberals get at least get they probably keep a government of some sort. Um, so to so both sides, seem to be be arguing along the lines of of unsurprisingly, uh, placing the, the the victory on themselves and the blaming of the party. Not surprising, but it's just that this is a theme that both sides have said is that they have rejected the other side. Uh, when in reality, the figures seem to suggest that both parties have had a drop, both parties have been rejected, and that the independents, or more likely minor parties, have had the gain here. And I think both leaders need to take away from this that a a actually, as <laughs> as you got right, Tasmanians seem to be putting a lot more faith in those minor parties and in the crossbench. And that's something that I think both leaders need to take away from this and, and, and realise that if they want to have anything, if they want to get anything passed, they must work with the crossbench. Dare, as, dare as I say it'll be end to the, it'll make an end to the whole, um, we will govern in majority or not in all stuff. Cause we didn't hear that as explicitly this campaign than 2021. Although at least at the end of it, um, she did, she did recognize that, that it's, you know, she said she wouldn't negotiate. Um, and she mentioned respect as well. I think she said something along the lines of liberals aren't going to respect the crossbench. Respect is key to the negotiation, something along those lines. Yeah, but but but, but the takeaway the takeaway for me from this for the two leaders is that you need to recognise that the crossbench has more power than ever before in Tasmania, and both sides need to recognise that that is now the status quo after this election. Yeah, um, Maggie, um, any any more results we should be following? Obviously, as um, as as. Um, things change here obviously polling is going to slow down really next 25 minutes is probably the last bit we'll have um but anything else again we're sticking with that three for jlm by the way our abc is calling none at the moment but i'm happy to stick with it as are you but what are we seeing in terms of these um results seat by seat uh well currently we can say that brad and bass and lines uh, we've completely called in brad and bats four liberals two labor one lambie in Bass, that's three Liberal, two Labor, one Green, and one Lambie. And in Lyons, three Liberal, two Labor, one Green, and one Lambie. In Franklin, we've currently got two seats for Liberals, two seats for Labor, and one for the Greens. The last two seats are a three-way contest between independent uh, former Labor, David O'Brien, 
the, the second green and the third liberal candidate. And Clark, we're seeing uh, two Labour, two Liberal, and one Green. Uh, two seats not declared. Once again, a free wave race between the second Green, the third Labour, and one for Christy Johnson. Right, so we'll see how that goes with the um, the crossbench uh, there. Um, that'll be the tight one to follow. Um, Stuart, what's the ABC just saying? Again, it's not our call, but I believe they've made their first JLN call. Yeah, well, but to start, um, we discussed this earlier. They've called uh, Rob Fares, who was soundly beating, I think it was being um, Simon Wood from earlier, uh, which, I, which I mentioned earlier, and they've also called Erica Betts and Pets Rumor. So those two were managed. I'm just going to try and find the actual should if you be two seconds. I believe that was Bass um, that we were talking about there. Yes, Rob Rob Fares in Bass has been elected as, as a new candidate. Erica Betts also in. Uh, and chances are that, yeah, Erica Betts is, this is uh, Franklin now. Erica Betts in. Jackie Pets Rumor out. Uh, sorry, also in. Uh, Street and Young possibly out. So we're looking at two new Liberals in Franklin. The ABC has not called uh, Nick Stred or Den Young as being out, but chances are they are. Looking at the looking at the quotas, it's two point six four. Uh, it's likely that we will uh, one of them will lose their seat, which will be uh, Dean Young. Nick Stred currently sitting at, at twenty eight hundred, so he could still be in. But at least one Liberal MP ousted, potentially three if you count Nick Street and also Simon Wood. Uh, so that's definitely a blow. But again, those seats are mostly being replaced by other Liberals. Um, the ABC has called 14 Liberals. After we called 14 Liberals, they copied us. They've called 10 Labor. They've called 5 Green, 2 JLN, and 1 Independent. Uh, presumably that's... Uh, shouldn't have had that be, actually. Would that be uh, Christy Anderson, was it? Uh, I, presume, I, I presume they've called her. Uh, I think it's... Uh... Chrissy Johnson, that's called. Yeah, the, the, the incumbent, the only independent actually elected last time as an independent. David O'Byrne is the only other independent with a chance. He, of course, was elected as Labor last time. So they have called it for, and that's that's, that's another another clerk called. Um, can we comfortably say that it's all the seat, all the clerk seats kind of called? How far away are we no, with clerk? Because clerk's, clerk's one of the big ones because there's no jail in there. Uh, we've got two seats not called in Clark. Uh, it's very tight between Chrissy Johnson, the second Green, and the third Labour candidate, but it looks like Chrissy Johnson and the Green are ahead. So that means Liquid Network, Shooters, and AJP are all out. I mean, AJP's out across the board. I think they've been out before by Shooters yeah, every I time think, they're, they're I think we side can by safely, side. We can safely project the AJP, Shooters, Fishers, and the local network will win absolutely nothing um the local network especially i don't i don't see this party going on for that much longer and it is a party by the way even if they call their candidates independence um i'm just looking at this vote total right um they didn't run in most seats they have a total of 0.3 percent of the statewide vote Stuart. i mean parties have gone on for they, longer they, but why why would they have managed to get i think two percent in one seat last time and three four percent in, in one seat as well they Again, make that, I, that just, I also should just mention as well, right, they abandoned their federal registration to focus on TAS State. And so if this and is admittedly, the probably part of the issue is Jackie Olympia Network versus Local Network. Uh, that's, probably part of the, that's probably part of the problem for them. Um, but looking at the figures for the clock, I just want to refresh mine so we can get the current figures for JLN. Yep, 231 votes. They're basically... Finished 231 votes in Clark. I think it was the only seat they ran in. 0.72%. No, they ran in two seats. They don't know what the other seat is. But yeah, they're basically... Uh, the party is probably going to be disbanded after this. Shooters have had a couple of, of strong uh, performances, at least. Shooters and AJP um, will obviously not be disbanded. It goes without saying. No. Well, they both... I think... Is this the first time the AJP ran as well? I'm not sure if... No, I don't think it's the first time, but they've never won here. Um, I just want to quickly interrupt as well, just because we've got details on who those new members um, will be. And, of course, Erica Betts is the big name here. The former senator of many years will be elected in Franklin. We can safely um, say that these will be some of the new members coming into the Tasmanian House of Assembly. 
Um, but Erica Betts, that is a uh, a uh, a huge a huge thing there. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of how things have obviously changed and evolved, and uh, and how he's managed to get back in less than uh, less than two years after losing his Senate spot to the Jackie Lambie Network. Um, yeah. Um, by the way, we'll obviously wrap up our coverage just as we hit the top of the hour, since that's when we expect results to actually stop coming in. Um, but stay with us now as we continue our analysis. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Use the hashtag 6NewsAU. Um, Stuart, Erica Betts, what kind of role do you think he'll play? I don't expect him, no one really expects him to be voted in as leader, but he's not exactly a... um quiet guy even if he, he he he's always been a party power broker in parliament or not who is the uh, Mac, you can correct me if i'm wrong who's the other um independent uh, other liberal controversial figure that you had mentioned earlier i forgot that i forgot who that was uh julie Sladen in mass well back yes that i i i get the feeling that neither of them are going to be very popular uh, well, julie Sladen might not even get in but erica betts very popular in his seat. Not surprising. He is a prominent liberal leader. Again, did lose to JLN, but clearly he's beaten JLN here. Um, but I, as I said at the start, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying it again. Sorry, they, sorry to interrupt, Stuart. Um, I believe the Greens are now speaking on this. So uh, if we can, let's uh, just listen in. Obviously, looks like they have doubled their seats. They had two last time. Um, don't forget, by the way, all these events are at the same place, which is nice and convenient. Um, anyway, let's listen in now. How fantastic to see you all here. I want to acknowledge that we're standing here tonight on the land of Tasmania's first people, the Palawa Pakana. They've shaped this island's landscape for tens of thousands of years. And the Greens recognise that this is stolen land that was never ceded. And we're committed to returning lands, to truth-telling, to treaty and justice. I want to also acknowledge... <laughs> I want to acknowledge the work of the people on this campaign and start with Jeremy Rockcliffe and Rebecca White. As leaders, they have both done a huge job of work. And, um, you know, elections are tough for everybody, but also democracy is a wonderful thing. And on behalf of the Greens, I salute everybody who has had the courage to stand, uh, party leaders, but also the candidates and the independents, uh, people who had no notice that this election was going to be called. And that in itself uh, was, you know, less than perfect from a democratic point of view. People have gone hard and they've given it their best. Well, what an election and what an exciting opportunity to fight for real change. And that is exactly how the Greens approached this election from day one. On behalf of the Greens, I want to thank everyone, all those Tasmanians who stood with us during this campaign and publicly shared their stories. Stella, who lost her mother on the ramp at the LGH. Glenn, a victim survivor of conversion practices who travelled two whole days to come back to Tasmania to share his painful story. Chris, with his experience of homelessness. And Kelly and Eve, just 16 and 20, who also spoke about their housing struggles and why we desperately need youth homelessness services. Teresa Sainty, who shared the stories of Palawa people's lives in the remote southwest wilderness heritage area. The unions, the unions who fight every day. They have been at the forefront of desperate underfunding for a decade, and they, they feel the brunt every single day of the critical services that aren't provided and the stories of Tasmanians who suffer real moral injury because they are forced to work under intolerable circumstances that they know are insa unsafe 
and inadequate for the work that they're employed to do. So HACSU, the CPSU, the ANMF and all the other unions, good on you for the work you do. And of course, who was there loudest and strongest? The incredible conservation movement of Tasmania, who stood in defence of the Liberal and Labor Party's attacks on our forests, relentless attacks on nature and the marine environment. The thousands of Tasmanians who joined us on the streets to march to end native forest logging and burning. So collectively, all of these Tasmanian stories tell us why there's a problem and our message from them that for this campaign that we have relayed is that we need change and change is possible. It's been a momentous campaign and we've deliberately focused on raising the issues that we want to fight for and staying out of the negative politics and negative campaigning. And through our work, we've made sure that critical issues were on the election agenda. Free public transport, renters' rights, regulating short stay, stronger environment laws. We put them there. The Greens did that on behalf of Tasmanians. We were the only party to put forward a comprehensive plan to tackle ambulance ramping, to remove, yes. It's not easy, and that's why it's a 50-point plan and not a three-word slogan. <laughs> We were the only party to talk about how we can and we must remove fish farms from Macquarie Harbour and transition the strong workforce. The West Coast community deserves a better future, sustainable jobs for the long term. Also, we talked about future-focused jobs and nature tourism. And so this next term of parliament, the Greens are going to push the next government to act on the Commission of Inquiry's recommendation and close Ashley Youth Detention Centre. <laughs> to legislate for the protection of Aboriginal heritage. To give the EPA some real fangs. <laughs> and to properly ban harmful conversion practices. I'm a I am a proud foundation member of the Tasmania Devils, like I'm sure so many other people in this room are. And I'm committed to defending our team and our colours. And the Greens will hold firm in standing up to the whimsies of the AFL. We know. Having a love of football doesn't equal, have to equal support for a stadium. This generation of Tasmanians needs a parliament of leaders working to tackle the health, housing and unfolding climate crisis. They don't need a billion dollar stadium when we have a perfectly good one at York Park. And that's where the heart of AFL and AFL football should remain permanently. So as we suspected uh, before tonight, things aren't cut and dried right now at the moment, but they are sure looking good for the Greens. In Bass, it's looking strong for the compassionate and incredible Cecily Russell, she is an incredible member of her community and she has such a kind, caring heart. In Lyons, the tenacious Tabitha Badger. <laughs> also looking strong for us in Lyons and she will be a, a, continue to be an incredible advocate for the environment. In Clark and Franklin, amazing results. And we're in the mix for second seats. And in Braddon, we've also recorded a good swing so far too. But I know some of the results haven't been as good as we hoped. 
And we know the team in Braddon tonight uh, you know, recognise that it's not as good as it is in other parts in the state. And I want to especially thank them and the fantastic leadership of Dr Darren Briggs, an amazing candidate. This relentless campaigning has not gone unnoticed and we know it's just the beginning of the campaign for the Greens to win back a seat in Braddon. So the Greens don't take money from big corporations and we've run a truly grassroots campaign across the island and I wanted to thank the hundreds of people who are involved. We've letterboxed uh, and put up posters and knocked on thousands of doors, much more than in any election before. I want to especially thank all of the 35 candidates because we put up seven candidates in each electorate. I want to thank the wisdom, the energy and the critical honesty of the past leaders. Christine, I think I can see you here at the moment. Bob Brown, Christine Milne, Peg Putt, Nick McKim and Cassie O'Connor sitting in front of me. They are rocks of strength for us and this movement. I especially want to thank the inspirational, positive and passionate young people who've campaigned to fight on the great issues of today and into the future and the thousands of Tasmanians who've engaged with us. I want to thank the Greens campaign team, our terrific campaign manager Rachel, volunteer coordinators the duo Nina and Emma, media advisor Eddie. They gave everything possible to our incredible lead candidates, my own and Vicar Bailey's parliamentary staff, Dan, Alex, Sophie, Tom, Steve and Alice. You've worked tirelessly for six weeks and you've been keeping the wheels on. And I want to thank my family who are with me tonight, Polly, May, Tilda, and not present here, but Ziggy, here in spirit, our dog, campaign dog. Whatever the final outcome of the next few weeks, the Greens will return to Parliament further empowered to fight for Tasmanians who need a hospital bed and a secure home. We'll continue to defend our democracy against self-interest and the corrupting influence of big corporates and ideology. And we'll always be a voice for nature unlike Labor and Liberal parties who deny the climate emergency, the Greens are with the majority of Tasmanians who want to protect our carbon-rich forests and extraordinary wildlife and end native forest logging for good. So our message, our message this election was that change is needed and change is possible and we're fully committed to stepping into the next parliament with this in mind. Thank you. And there you go, that was the Tasmanian Greens leader just speaking there, and of course, uh, a pretty big night for her party, Rosalie Woodruff. Um, they are doubling their seats, we project, from two to four from the last parliament, and uh, tracking pretty well, could get up to five. Very interesting there. Um, look, we're going to wrap up our coverage in just a moment, but I want to get some final thoughts. Um, Stuart, what do you make of how tonight's playing out? And just again, quickly, um, how you think these coalition and uh, minority government negotiations will go? Um, it, 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 you're exactly right. Four or five seats for the Greens. That gives them potentially one seat in every electorate. Which means, which means they're in a Senate situation where they can be guaranteed to elect one person per seat per per election, which is the same way the Greens operate uh, with the Senate. They're guaranteed to, like, a, one of six Senate seats in every state, every Senate election. So the Greens should be very happy with this result, too, to maybe five seats. That's more than doubled. And JLN going from zero to maybe three seats. Both parties should be very, very impressed with that result. Greens gain three and, Jack and JLN gained three. Liberal Party will likely form the government with the, well, but as a minority. But the fact remains that the Greens and the JLN have proven that, especially with the hair clock system, that minor parties can be viable on the crossbench in in a state like Tasmania or in any state with controlling potentially eight seats. Yeah, absolutely. Plus a couple of, of independents. The first time we've really seen a 
you know, for Hayek Clark with these four parties really viable, which is always always interesting to see. Maggie, um, as well, your your final thoughts on, on how this is all playing out in the, um, just very quickly, we've got about a minute, um, but the results that you think we, we're going to start to to see unfold in, in these plenty of uncalled races? Uh, well, currently, I believe that uh, Anthony Green is saying that uh, the second seat in Clark and Franklin are likely for the Greens, but not called at the moment. Uh, it's looking like a very good night for the crossbench. I think the Greens and Labour Network are probably celebrating at their parties. Uh, Liberals, Labour, not so much. But Labour has seen a bit of a gain in vote share, which is good for them. But I think they were expecting maybe a few percentage points better. All right. Um, look, thank you very much, Maggie Perry, Stuart Jeffrey, our election reporter and GovCheck editor, who have been fantastic for us tonight as well. Roman McKinnon is not here right now, political editor. Um, we will wrap up our coverage now. Thank you, of course, as well to the fantastic Austin Pollock, always doing a great job behind the scenes and on air tonight for us as well. You, of course, have been watching live coverage of the Tasmanian state election right here on Six News and the Dunstan by election, which Labor have won. We will continue our coverage tomorrow and right throughout the next couple of days as results continue to come in. We won't stop till all those results are in. I'm Leonardo Puglisi in Six News headquarters. Have a great night. You're watching Tasmania Decides Election 2024. This has been a 6 News special presentation. It's an interview you do not want to miss. And most people, even Labor voters, agree that things have got a hell of a lot worse. And the second part of that is who's got the right priorities for Queensland's future. Coming up just months away from the state election, we speak with the state opposition leader, David Christofuli, about his plans for the LNP. I want Queenslanders to vote.